Okay, Gypsy, if you had your druthers, what would your name be? Stalker Chin. Stalker Chin. Oh, what? Oops. Oh. Looks like we're back on, everybody. Hey. Wow. Oh, Check it out. Hey. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. We're just talking about if we had our chance, what would our favorite new name be? Uh, Crow? My name is Jose Jimenez. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Servo, what do you want? Oh. 15 seconds oh. to commercial sign. I've, I've always, always liked the name Magic, Magic Voice. Voice. Oh, I oh, could I see, see that. Huh? huh? Anyway, Tom Servo? Well, personally, I've always been partial to Sugar Magnolia. Oh, sugar Magnolia. <laughs> commercial sign in five, four, three, two. two. Commercial, commercial sign now. And from now on, I'll be known as Chuck Woolery. We'll be back in two minutes and two seconds. Open. Uh, Joel? Yeah, cool, Joel? buddy. W would it be okay if I changed my name to Alan Parsons Project? They call me Mr. Tibbs. This is Richard Benson. <laughs> this is Richard Benson. Now on, I'll be known as Vivian Benson. That's <laughs> it. That's it. From now on, all bets are off. From now on, we go back to the old names for the rest of the experiments the Mads are calling. You know, Clay, when you come right down to it, I think I'd like to be known as just Frank. Why is that, Frank? Because if you can't find peace within... Oh, shut up! Any I went along with you long enough. This Mike Douglas furniture was a terrible idea. Don't I get to be your co-host for the week? No, and you don't get to sing The Man in My Little Girl's Life, either. Oh, hello, booby. How did you fare going through the asteroid belt? Jeepers, don't remind me. Ouch. <sighs> well, my invention exchange this week is... Wait for it. Wait for it. Daddy, there's a boy outside. His name Shut is Tom. Shut up! Now! Everybody knows smoking kills, but it's cool. Uh. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Everybody loves tar, sure, who doesn't? But scientists have known for well over a year that it's bad for you. So, when you go into a restaurant and they ask you for smoking or non-smoking, do what I do. <laughs> hey, it's a smoking jacket. Ah, Get cool. it? Cool. Like father, like son, think about it, won't you? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, here it is, Dimples, the latest craze, robotic arm wrestling. This week, Joel, is a bit of a break for you. Uh, it's, uh, I haven't seen the whole thing, but it's uh, kind of a buddy picture. I've, I've seen the opening credits, and it looks to be like a modern-day Defiant Ones. Uh, isn't that right, Frank? I think you're gonna like it. It's a little thing we like to call 
cave dwellers. Frank! Enjoy it while it lasts, Astro Boy Toy. Too tight. Uh, oh, 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 I don't okay. know, Joel. I don't think this is for me. Oops, I lost it. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? You look great. fantastic. I could eat you up. Oh, and I could bite that big toe. Ooh. Hey, now quit clowning. You know, what we're going to do is a little more lucid version of those really bad uh, openings we saw, the credits, oh, you the know? Credits, yeah. hey, that is if Cambot will man the wall of keyboards. What do you say? Okay. Hey, right, and will you give great. us that half screen uh, posterization effect too, Cambot? No, uh, there Joel, we go. Uh, what are we supposed to do again? That's cool. Well, all you do is we play the characters we talked about earlier. And we mm -hmm. run around and stuff. All yeah. right, got it. Frolic, cavort, parade, get about the ship, that sort yeah. of thing. Uh, Joel? Yeah? Isn't this kind of fruity? Gee, I never really thought about it that much. Joel, it is. Yep. Well, no matter. Anyway, uh, let's do it again. You ready, Cambot? Music. There we go. Say, Joel, I have a oh, question. Yeah? yeah, ask away, my red friend. <laughs> well, why is it these guys in the film give such fancy pants names to everything, hmm? Yeah, like they call a regular old shield the glimmering charm shield. It's like so stupid, guy. Indeed. Well, it's obvious that this movie has a really low budget, especially for mm -hmm. props, and yeah. so by adding really neat names to ordinary things, you can kind of dress it up. Like, it was kind of mm -hmm. obvious her breastplate that she, the woman was wearing was actually an off-the-rack auto part from Napa. Yeah, but you can't yeah. very well say, uh, hither yon, there goes the uh, hubcap of the Plymouth Somerset, right? All right, but what you could say is, she has donned the maiden shield of Valley Seven. Exactly, oh, yeah. now you're getting it. Uh, I, I get it, I see. Um, if I had a box of ordinary paper clips, uh, I could say, um, here is a box of incredibly bent pieces of wire used to hold the pressed wood pulp planes in security. Right, now awesome. you're getting yeah. it. That's exactly right. It's just adding extraordinary names to ordinary things. It makes it fun. Yeah, yeah, you find the fun and snap the jobs game. <laughs> Thank you, Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, spit spot, you two. Oh, I love to laugh, long and loud and clear. <laughs> All right, get on with it. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I digress. Um, well, anyway, you know, they give cool names to TV shows like that, too, like uh, White Shadow. Could have been called uh, Haloed Hoop Honky. Or uh, Jake and the Fat Man. You could have called that, um, well, uh, Jake, Jake and the, and the Fat Man. Yeah, pretty yeah, much, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. You know what occurs to me that when local TV stations talk about the Grand Marshals for their holiday parades, what they're really saying is Gavin McLeod. Exactly. Oh, I got one. A pre-recorded segment that's... Uh, it, that goes into a program is called a bumper, and yeah. actually, it's really just the movie song. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, say, Joel, mm -hmm. why is it when they punch each other in this movie, it doesn't sound anything like a punch? Hmm? Yeah, it sounds more like a bag full of sardines thrown against a pole barn. Well, you're not too far off, you <laughs> really? skipsters. You see, huh? sound effects artists use a technique called Foley to create those sounds. It's interesting, isn't mm, it? No, not really. really. I don't think so, no. I think maybe you should humor me. Oh, okay, oh, okay sure. Oh, Foley, Very huh? Very interesting. Really yeah, cool. tell us. Well, I'm Please. glad you asked, boys. Foley artists use a lot of ordinary items found around the home or office to create convincing sound effects. Oh, like the sound of uh, fists slamming into jaws? Right. <laughs> well, let's get started with something simple. An easy way to make a horse trotting is to use a pair of coconuts. Oh. Coconuts? Right. Now listen. It's ah. the sound of a quarter horse gilding on a cobblestone courtyard. It's pretty convincing, isn't it? Yeah, but what if the horse is on grass, hmm? yeah. Oh, you add these handy sod mumps, okay? Wow. Whoa, all of a sudden we're at Aqueduct. <laughs> yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff, like uh, take punches. Oh, I'd rather not in the mouth. No, please, I, mean, no. <laughs> I mean the sound of punches, okay? Oh. Traditionally, a leather glove against a heavy metal or a heavy punching bag was used, heavy okay? Metal. Heavy metal punching bag. Ooh, like oh, Ooh, but whoa. the sound in this Ator movie is much, much cheesier. Yeah, right, I'm way ahead of you, body. You, you just use these uh, goggles here, yeah. okay, and use a pair of Hollywood meat slammers, okay? Uh, Add your own grunts. Real meat. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh, like that, that is see? absolutely perfect, but, but why the goggles? Eye protection. Now, I want you to name me a sound, and I bet I can foley it. I got it, I got it. Uh, okay. do, uh, do the ocean. Okay, that's easy. Just add birdshot to a drum head. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, it's neat, huh? Okay, I got another one. Let's see. Uh, how about the sound of somebody's spine cracking? Oh, that's easy. You use celery. Make sure it's fresh. Okay. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Woo. That's too easy, guys. Give me a hard one. Oh, okay, I got it. A herd of buffalo. Oh, no problem. Box full of hamsters. <laughs> Poor guys. Uh, did I say buffalo? I meant water buffalo. Oh, well, that's <laughs> simple. You just add some milk. Uh-huh. Poor little Check guys. it out. Well, okay, now, I got a tough one. A yeah. rubber Wellington boot stuck in the mud. Oh, that's easy. You just fill a pair of pantyhose with some jello, uh -huh. like that. Wow. Oh, yeah. See, it's April. neat. Cool. All right, right uh, do a scream. Yeah, that's a good oh, one. well, a there's a lot of ways to do that. But okay. I'll show you this way. Just take an, uh, for a man's voice, you just take an Ohio blue tip match, uh -huh. strike it against somebody. Ow! Oh. Ow. Ah! Yeah, yeah, it's simple. Okay, now and, how about a woman scream, Joel? Oh, well, then for a woman, you set fire to TV's madam. Oh, that's easy enough. Oh, not like my hat. Oh, no. See, it's oh, simple. Help me. There she help goes. Me, buddy. I'm flaming. Oh, get that's me to a great a scream. Oh, huh? cool. Mildred, oh, help me. We'll be help right me. back. What? 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 Do you want? Come on, what? It wasn't that bad, was it? Come on. I liked it. <laughs> Look, Booby, when we send you a film, they're supposed to be bad. What do you want from us? I mean, we, we have it worse than them. We, we have to watch you watching the film. Okay, look, it's bad enough that this was clearly the worst film you have ever sent us, but it was also right. filled with continuity problems to boot. Yep. My colleague Crow will elucidate. Uh, a what? You'll show him. Oh, right, right, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, frame 12247. Cambot, bring that up. A pan of a field, yet seen clearly in the back. Somebody's been four-wheeling. Okay, next frame, please. Uh, 216 Thank you, Cambot, for giving the fact that Ator is flying a hang glider He's doing it over a modern city! <sighs> okay, now, the piece of resistance. Cambot, 202043. Okay, during the raping and pillaging, a prehistoric caveman is clearly seen wearing a pair of Ray-Bans. Who's that behind the Foster Grants? It's Og! Yeah, and what about Scarecrow's brain? Huh? What, what do, you do you want, want from, from us? us? We're, We're evil! 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 Yep, I guess you could say we're cut from a different cloth. Exactly, Frank. Push guess the you could say we're more evil in a $3 bill. Push the button, Frank. Guess you could say the factory's still open, but we're making different stuff now. Would you just push the button? Push the button. <laughs> guess you could say we're buying it wholesale and passing the savings on to you.
in through the mouth and out through the nose or its equivalent. Good, good. All right, now we'll loosen the lips on a P. Good, good, good. Now let's loosen up that jaw after me. Pumpernickel, 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 pumpernickel. Pumper Very good. Pumper and now for the epiglottis, the wire is wound around the wheel. The wire is wound around the wheel. Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite Love. Tom Servo's just teaching us the importance of the proper exercise to warm us up before we go into the experiment. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. No, no, pronounce every word. Make a nice round O with the lips. Commercial sign. Commercial sign. Commercial sign. Commercial sign. All right. Good, 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 good. We actually have commercial sign. But, Joel, commercial sign. Commercial sign. Commercial sign. Don't push it, okay? Oh. Is it time to touch pelvises? We got commercial sign. I slipped the sheet, the sheet, sheet I, I slipped. Slip. And five, and six, and seven, and good. Okay, shake it loose, everybody. Shake it out. Very good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love again. Uh, while Tom and Crow finish their stretching exercise, I'm going to enjoy a delicious salad. Well, you know it's what all might part be of the... nice at this point? How about a nice back rub, everybody? Hmm? Everybody rub each other's back? Hmm? Uh, I have an idea. Oh, you do? Yeah. Uh, let's do that trust exercise you taught us. You know, where oh, you lean see, back great. and I catch you? Okay, okay, me first. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, now, when you, you feel it, just... I'm feeling just it. Trust. I'm letting go. All right, I'm and letting so go. am I. Oh, <laughs> you little toe monster, toe monster. Ah. Woo! Well, anyway, I thought I'd enjoy a delicious salad. You know, the problem, this is also my invention exchange, the problem with takeout endless salad bars is once you leave the endless salad bar with your takeout container, it ceases to be an endless salad bar and starts being a salad bar with really strict rules. So I designed this special takeout container. It's got baffles and air channels. It takes a scientist to explain it. And I'm from the humanities, but all I know is when you take out the salad, it's like there's really a whole bunch of salad in there like that. See, whoops, spilled a little there. What do you think, sirs? Oh, we uh, think it's lovely, don't we, Frank? Yes, very. <laughs> well, we have uh, nothing big and flashy to show you this week. You caught us in the middle of our home activities. Uh, Frank, why don't you show them that birdcage thing you're working on? Now here's something I think you'll really like. Now, everybody loves pets, right? I sure do. But the only problem with pets is they're kind of unsanitary, you know? It's hard to clean up after them. So what I've done is I've invented this vacuum cleaner for cleaning up bird cages. Let me just turn this on here. Now it cleans up newspapers and bird seeds and any dirt. Well, back to planet Earth. Your experiment this week, Joel, is the first in the famous Gamera turtle movies. It's a love story about a giant turtle in downtown Tokyo. Uh, Frank, be a trash and send that up, won't you? <laughs> oh, crime in the alto. What I got to do everything around here. <laughs> More fish flakes, sweet friend. Oh, Tibby, my Tibby, my heart is a mess. I don't have a protective shell over my chest. So people can hurt me with the cruel things they do. Yet somehow, sweet Tibby, I know you hurt too. Oh, Tibby, my Tibby, reality's hard. So, Tibby, let's play in the yard. Oh, Tibby, oh, Tibby, he runs like the wind. A couple of inches, <laughs> and then back again, Lord of all. Uh, may I take a bird? Well, if you feel it, Crow. Oh, I do. <clears throat> well, Crow, then by all means, join me, won't you? Five, six, seven, eight. Tippy! It's Tippy! Uh, oh, Tippy! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I love you, my fine little fella. 
Even though you gave the whole family salmonella. No, no, it's not their <laughs> fault. It isn't their fault. Crow, you take everything good and you rip my heart out. Jeez, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Come on, Crow, let him finish his song. <laughs> oh, okay. Go it's ahead, just a Tom. stupid old turtle. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you, Cambots. Tibby, my Tibby, your blood may be cold. But I know that your heart burns as hot as a coal. It burns with the love only turtles can feel. Tibby, is our love real? My Tibby, I'll never let the dog nose around your bowl, but you know that, don't you? I can see it in your beady little eyes. If you high center on your rock, Tibby, I'll be there to help you down. The toilet's not your fate, friend. You'll always run free. Tibby, long as you have me. Do you realize a robot just sang a love song to a turtle? That was really good, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. We got commercial singing. <laughs> Your boy, eat it. I've been waiting to do this the whole movie. <laughs> That's it, bro. Do do that voodoo that you do so well. Watch me, servo. Watch me dance. What are you guys doing? Okay. Oh, uh, we're just uh, singing a Cole Porter medley, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's it. No, you're not. You're unleashing a bunch of negative energy on Kenny via my Jim Varney doll. That's um, what you're doing. Well, I wouldn't exactly call it negative energy, Joel. Uh, yeah, we just hate him, that's all. Yeah. How many times have I told you guys, in the face of all these terrible movies we gotta watch, you gotta keep a positive attitude. Have oh. compassion. Jeez. Oh, I guess so. Gosh, Davey, I never thought of it that way. That's right, <laughs> Elias. Well, anyway, now what I want you to do is visualize Kenny in a good light. Come on. Oh. Come on. Do the. Do, oh. That's right. Come on. Do the exercise. Okay. Oh. Now bring Kenny into your heart. You see that little Japanese oh. guy in there? He's waving back at you. Okay. Now remember the Tommy oh. James and the Shondell song, Crystal Blue Persuasion, oh. Peace and Good Brotherhood, Crystal Blue Persuasion. Now shoot that Crystal Blue. Persuasion. I hate him. I hate him. I hate him. Kill him. Kill him. You're going to die. Kill him. <laughs> Okay, all right. Well, what is it that you hate so much about Kenny? No, he's a child of privilege, and the whole world revolves around him and stuff, and he can walk into a restricted maximum security military situation, and they treat him like an adult just because he befriended a stupid old turtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he never gets into trouble, even though his friendship with Gamera is causing the death of millions. And he skips school whenever he wants to, and he never so much as gets sent to his room. Yeah, and he can walk into any book with his pony pal Pokey, too. Uh -huh. Oh, Christ. I think you're thinking of Gumby. Hmm. Oh. Well, well, what about his voice? Have you ever heard anything so annoying? Yeah, what did you do with my rock? Tibby, Tibby, Gamma has a good heart. Now, come on, as you guys get older, you realize that people don't mean to be obnoxious. It's just that they're all screwed up inside. Oh, in other words, as the great French film director Jean Renoir said, every man has his reasons. Exactly. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Gee, I'm starting to see things differently. Now when I visualize Kenny, I want to go up to him and I give him a big snuggly huggly. That's good. And then squeeze him, mm -hmm. and squeeze him, yeah. and squeeze, and squeeze, and squeeze, All right, and All right. you got a uh, timeout coming, young man. Let's oh, get out of here. Come on, you're coming with me. And hey, come <clears throat> What do you, the viewers at home, think? You're what's not my the, real father. Shh, what's the deal with Kenny? Is he a confused, precocious kid who's fallen in with the wrong species? I hate you. Is he a starry-eyed dreamer looking for his long-lost mother? Is he a juvenile delinquent who should have the book thrown at him before millions more heedlessly perish? Send your thoughts to Kenny, What Gives? Care of Mystery Science Theater 3000, Post Office Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Stop it! And while we're at it, What's all this about Jim Varney? I hate him too! And what about Scarecrow's brain? Oh, God, I hate and him! And Kim Cattrall! No, and what? Hey, movie you. size! We gotta go! Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Cuticles, I wish I could stay so thin. What? Oh, oh. Oh, boy, this magazine kills me. Look at this. Help for your hips. Cucumber poultice, you can make it home. <laughs> yeah, right. What? 
Huh? I, I said cucumber poultice. Can you believe it? Oh, oh what? Uh, oh, Gypsy, turn this thing off. Uh, yeah. Oh, man, my head itches. Gee, I hope I don't get a rash on my neck. Oh, will you look at the time? I gotta get to the store yet, and then I gotta grab the kids by three, because, you know, Wilbur's got... Whoa, forget the kids, Crow. We got a visitor. Cambot, let's check out rocket number nine. Hey, turn on that view screen. <gasps> it's Gamera! By golly, it is Gamera. Oh, great. The visit of the century and me and rollers. Oh. Hey, big turtle guy. <laughs> Hi, boys. I was just finishing up some of my laundry here. You know, uh, great thing about being a turtle is... Uh, you don't have to separate your wash because it's all green. <laughs> anyway, I, I stopped in. Uh, can I borrow a uh, cling free? You got one laying around? Uh, well, uh, sure. Uh, if you wouldn't mind answering a couple of questions about life as a six-story turtle. No, no, no problem. Go ahead. Okay, well, why do you go about stomping on cities and stuff? Well, it, it's not my fault. Listen, I'm big-boned, right? And let's face it, city planners discriminate against us big-boned types, right? The other day, I went into a library turnstile, got stuck. Bear grease, jaws of life, fire department came, the whole mess. And uh, I was in a lot of pain, let me tell you. Of course, you'd know about pain. You've, you've seen Spalding Gray. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Well, so what's the deal with that boy, Kenny? You guys seem to be such chumps. Kenny, 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 Kenny. Little, sweet Kenny. The deal with Kenny is he's a good kid, good-hearted, don't get me wrong, but uh, I'm using him, you know? Because, let's face it, he softens up my image, you know, right? Kenny? Uh -huh. Well, I, uh... Well, look, I can smash a huge city, take out thousands of people, right? Say a suburb of Osaki, kill 10 million. And then, uh, you know, with Kenny at my side, I look like Jimmy Stewart and Mr. Smith goes to Washington. It's great. <laughs> Let me tell you something about that unconditional love, children. It feels really good. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, I gotta take this. <clears throat> Hello. Godzilla, how are you, buddy? Yeah, yeah, read the script, love it. Uh, I got a title suggestion for you. See how this grabs you by the popo. Uh, how about Gamera versus Godzilla? Yeah, all right, right, right. Yeah, no, we can change it. Call my agent. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, bye. Well, listen, I gotta get going. Got a few more things to do, but uh, it's been nice talking to you. And remember, remember what this turtle told you. Keep your shell in the sun and always keep reaching for the stars. <laughs> see you Bye. Later, boys. Bye. You see Timmy tell her I said, oh, huh, huh, neat. You know, I kind of like that turtle. Seems like such a nice guy. Yeah, so noble, so proud, so mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you think I look fat? No, not at all. Oh, I think I do. You know, folks, a quality cast deserves a second look. Cambots? No Japanese monster movie would be complete without this guy, the Japanese Foster Brooks, our own Tad Hirokuma. Watch for him on the CBS special, The Friars Roast, Akira Kurosawa. Here's Hideo Fontaine, established character actor, who tragically died during the making of this film. Here's light rock sensations Harry and Carrie. Carrie's gone on to be an assistant slash snake handler for Las Vegas magician Senor Ray, while Harry has subsisted on nothing but Glade Mist deodorant for the last three years to prove his love for Coy Carey. And there's so many more. There's General Curly and Eskimo Pete, the Karnak knockoff, Martha Graham, Colonel Sanderson, Mr. Eddie's father, Max, and Trouser the Arctic Pooch. And let's not forget Kenny and Gamera, who will be appearing in the Broadway revival of Bob Clampett's immortal Beanie and Cecil 91. This is Tom Servo announcing. You did a really good job there, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, you really put that one to bed, Servo. Well, I really owe it all to Gary Owen and his radio clinic for big-voiced men. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, oh, oh. Hey, okay, smart. anyway, we got some letters to read from cool. people that have been sent up here by the <laughs> Via the Mads. Oh, and this hmm. one is comes with a photo. Uh, it says, Dear Joel, Tom Servo, Crow and Gypsy. <laughs> I first saw MST3K about a year ago and have loved it ever since. Uh, I showed it to my cousins and he loves it too. Crow is my favorite, especially his impersonations. Do you know which one that one is? The Lloyd Bridges he's got here? By this time, my lungs were, and you know how it goes. Yeah, right. Yeah, yep. and uh, please send membership card information and a photo of Crow with his autograph. 
But uh, this guy went and made a model of Tom Servo. Oh, hey, look at that. Let me that see that. Okay. Say, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Looks like a raster drawing of Yeah, me. anyway, we'll just put that up on Still Star. Looks like it's made out of Legos mm. over there. Legos. Pretty well, neat. Oscar that's Chipsy. it, sirs. What'd you think? And, and thanks for not sending such a bad movie this time. Yeah. What do you mean, thanks? Oh, here, file this and give Joel a shock to the chamois. Only live to serve you, my lord. Shock to the shammy Reese! IBM, CBS, RCA, the CIA, the FBI, the NBA, ANP, NBC, ABC, Arkham, and CPO Sharky, you see, they're all the same. And what do I think? I think if life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Good night. I make all blessed. Hey, that was great. Hey, hey that I didn't know you guys were there. Oh, oh, thank, thank you. Thank, well, it's it's a work in progress. It's part of my one-man show called Robot on the Run. Oh, it's, hey, look, we're on, everybody. Hi. Ugh. Hey, welcome to the Satellite of Love. We're having our art Chautauqua today. Cool. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Anyway, Tom, you want to do yours? Here? Let's do it. <clears throat> I was born the son of a poor Filipino merchant. I remember I would sit on the stoop of my tenement brownstone on the Lower East Side. I was... Uh, uh, I was... Uh, Tom, your, your line is, is I was crying. crying. Oh, thank commercial you. sign in, in five, five, four, three, two. two. Commercial, commercial sign now. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mayo, I'm going to make a recommendation that you be dropped from the program. Don't you do it! Don't you do it! I've got nowhere else to go! I've got nothing! Hey, pretty yeah, good. Pretty good. Yeah. Okay, anyway, I think it's time to uh, do the invention exchange here. What I've got isn't really a new invention but it's a new kind of guitar chord. Sure. What you do, it's for the dynamic endings of your rock show. This is oh. the Mel Bay uh, wow. chart right there. It's an A minor augmented with an Eddie Van Halen bolt action on the bottom. Ooh, cool. And so when you get to the big jams at the end of the concert, you can play it. Now, it takes two hands to play this chord, so at oh. that point, you have your dynamic frontman. I guess Crow ah, okay. will do it. We'll strum it, okay? On the okay. count of three. Okay. One, okay. two, three. What do you think, sirs? Oh, great. Get Foghat on the phone. Well, our experiment this week, Joel, is going to be sweeping the country by storm. Isn't that right, Frank? That's right. You know all the fads with the young people today? You know the kids today with their loud music, hula hoops, fax machines. But the biggest fad these days, karaoke. What we've done is we've invented a karaoke machine that exclusively plays public domain songs. That's right. That means you can sing into your karaoke machine, have as much fun as you want, and not pay one cent in artist royalties. That's right, Frank. Now, what happens when you go into your favorite karaoke bar and you want to hear, I want to know what love is by Foreigner? People vomit? No. Lou Graham, songwriter and Chess King spokesmodel, gets a big fat royalty check, and that means lots of money. So, Joel, we've loaded our machine only with public domain songs. All free of copyright, all owned by you, the people. That's right. You want to hit the roll there, Jerry? You get the Battle Hymn of the Republic. The immortal Baba Black Sheep. The turgid and bittersweet Gregorian chant number five. The impish twinkle twinkle little star. Mozart's The Magic Flute. And there's so much more. But your experiment this week, Joel, is called Pod People. It has nothing to do with pods. It has nothing to do with people. It has everything to do with herding. And we're going to sing you into it with our new public domain karaoke machine. Hit it, Frank. Ave Maria. I have all right, all right, let's do it again. You come in late, girls, again, you're out, all right? All right, from the top. With a pickle mind, we kick the nipple beer. Steady as a goat, we're flying over trout. Ghetto down the highway at the speed of light. All I want to feel now is the wind in my eyes. Sack of monkeys in my pocket. 
my sister's ready to go. Hear the engines roll now. Idiot control now. Hideous control now. Mini on the road now. Mini in control. Wheels on fire. Burning rubber tires. He's pretty good. Good. He's the best. Leary Jelly rolls now. Hitty Leslie go now. Nitty inches bow down. Pity in a poor boy. Pity inches roll. Bees on pie. Burning rubber ties. Oh, great. Pretty good. What do you think? It stinks. Oh, hi, Crow. Oh, hi. What you doing? Oh, we were just inspired by the cool new age music of this movie, so we decided to uh, use the wall of keyboards to make our own great new new age music. You want to help? Sure. Uh, what can I do? Well, I could teach you how to play the keyboards. Will it take long? No, of course not. Come on over here. Here, check this out. Okay, put your hand. Come on, put your hand over here. Okay. Put your finger down. See? Like that? Yeah. See? Oh, yeah, cool. you got a, you're playing a new age chord now, okay? Hey. Just like Yanni. All right, now, put another finger down there. Uh, okay. See? Now you're playing a Yanni. Like, now hold it down for an hour. Yeah. Now hold it down till you get a record contract from Wyndham Hill. Oh, hey, See? cool. Servo, check it out. It's my new new age Yanni lick. Uh, Joel, hold down my new new okay. age Yanni lick. I got to put my sandwich okay, down. Okay, got it. This music's kind of dull, isn't it? Yeah, but it's a good way to make a lot of money without a big initial investment. <clears throat> okay. And now, music from some guys in space. Tonight on Music from Some Guys in Space, more fine, new, new age music and sounds from super progressive Bay Area new age keyboardist, Joel Robinson. Joel will be accompanied on the wall of keyboards by veteran minimalist, Crow T. Robots. We invite you to sit back and enjoy more repetitive new age music as we cruise the spaceways. Come along, fellow travelers, and enjoy music from some guys in space. Hey, we got movie sign, you guys. It's movie sign. Next time on Emergency 911. Tom, a duck you're with an arrow through its neck. Mode. Come on, oh, man, oh, snap oh, out of oh, it. Oh, Crow, wake, wake up, up. movie sign. Right, we got go. movie sign. You are magic, aren't you, Trumpy? <laughs> Trumpy, you come down! <laughs> Well, guys, looks like it's time to pack it all in again. Yeah, we are the stuff dreams are made of. Oh, that's beautiful, Crow. Shakespeare? Uh, no, Burma Shave. Oh, well, I can... <laughs> huh? You know, guys, it always hurts Ow. to close it all up, yeah. strike the set, Ow. wipe off the grease paint, yeah. uh, napkin up the blood and no. entrails, Ouch. and yeah. move on to another town. Uh-oh, I smell a song. Tell me, where does all the magic go? When the curtain falls to end the show, do the clowns always cry when they pack up the paper sky? When the champagne is being poured and the lock is on the old stage door. Will there still be a clown in the sky 
for me. Oh, no. Don't worry, buddy. There'll be other experiments. You really think so, mister? Yeah, take a verse. It'll cheer you out. Okay. When the Harlequin is on the pad And the whiskey hay surrounds his head William Holden's coming over Tom And Servo, he's going to flip the tooth If you don't cloud. stop doing your Anthony Newley, I'm going to throw you against the wall. You'll do it, too. Will there still be a clown in the sky? Help us out, Crow. Well, still be a clown in, in the, the sky. sky. Take it home, Joel. Tell me where is that clown in the sky for me? Oh. <laughs> I love you, Tom Servo. I love you, Joel. <laughs> I love you, Crow. You're not my real father. What do you think, sirs? It stinks. <laughs> Uh, CD slash WP51 return. Oh, crime any stupid clones. I really miss my Mac. Hey, Crow, what's this mean? Too many parameters hyphen WP51. What? Oh, uh, come, look. Oh, uh, you used a forward slash instead of a backslash. A what? Oh, oh, okay. CD backslash WP51 return. 30 seconds to commercial sign. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Satellite of Love. Tom Servo and Crow are in the middle of another user interface war. Let's watch. Oh, this is rich. Bad mm. command or file name. Why well, they expect you to be a machine to operate this machine? Uh, and I suppose you'd prefer a little animated clown who would juggle over to the little file cabinet and then wink at you and point to the right drawer. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. At least I don't have to have a photographic memory to get my Mac to work. Both user interfaces work perfectly well. It's really just a matter of the individual's personal preference. We think the joke will be on Tom Servo and Crow. Now here, the problem with IBM's incompatibles is that they lack the elegance and intuitive nature of the Mac. Mac products are reliable, proven, and they always work. Oh yeah? What about System 7? It's coming! It's coming, okay? There were a few bugs in it, okay? Boy. You can have a lot of fun with people hopelessly mired in computer nuance. Watch this. Hey, has anybody seen the mouse for my Amiga? <laughs> Amiga? <laughs> Amiga? Oh, come on. There's a machine for you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, has anyone seen my fast Angus drive? Five, <laughs> four, three, two, commercial sign now. Oh, this is really, really neat. Unrecoverable application error. This is really cute, Crow. I suppose we'll have to re-enter the entire spreadsheet now, hmm? That's no, uh -huh. no, no, no. Just rewrite the auto-exec bad file and stick in a memory manager. Uh, that's all. Just take a minute. Don't worry. Yeah, while uh, Tom Servo's rebooting the computer, uh, I thought it'd be a good time to show this week's invention exchange. And uh, what I've got here, let me turn it on a second, is a uh, new tool to help expand people's consciousness. You know, Joel, there's some things that people shouldn't be conscious about. Like what? Well, like the fact that their tongues are just sitting in the bottom of their mouths all day, all night, even when they sleep. Yeah. Uh, uh, ch chatter, but would you let me finish? Uh, I'm oh, talking sorry. about expanding people's consciousness about the recycling cause. That's why I built this audio animatronic pop can. Here, Enough see? magic for many evenings. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh, what I thought we could do is use it as a spokesperson for, like, recycling commercials when we get back to Earth. Here's yeah. a baffler worth twice the price. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, Crow, let's do yeah. that thing where I make him work and I'll manipulate the can. You do the voice, okay? okay? Right, okay. Young magicians <laughs> love this one. <laughs> yeah. Hello, folks. Remember, I recycle. Good night. No skill required. Oh, this is rich. Stands rigid inspection, a quality product. That one stung small and easy to... <laughs> What do you think, sirs? I think you've got a kooky screw loose, is what I think. <laughs> oh, we have fun. Oh, quit your clowning, itchy mango, and go and get your harness on. All of it. This goes back, frog bait, and so am I. And so is this new disco cumber bubble bun. Enter Frank. That's it, baby. Work that body. Make it burn. There you go. There's a good one. Oh, another good one, Frank. Yes. Come on. You can make a bubble. You just put your knees together and squeeze. Yes. I have seen the future of hip-hop, Joel, and it is Frank. 
As for your experiment this week, it's another in a long line of Gamera giant flying turtle movies. This one's featuring Baragon, who's sort of a giant lizard dog with itchy scalp. Take this film and shove it, Joel. But you see, you could press it back down again, Crow, because he's a rock'em, sock'em robot. Oh, oh we got a movie And we'll be right back right after this. Kids, here's the greatest and neatest, the latest thing. 5,000 piece fighting men and monster sets, some pieces not included. Astonish and baffle your friends and foes while you pulverize Japan. Here's what you get 500 Japanese light infantry body parts may not be missing. 36 helpless officials, 20 tanks, 15 recoilless rifles not in the set. 24 bazooka gum runners, 18 ambulance chasers, 12 jet fighters, sick not included. 16 helicopter parts, 200 shooting crouchers, 19 fighting clowns, 8 deserters, 6 Kisalayan, 24 Mohawk Indians, and much, 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 much more. Act now and receive at half the extra value of the mystifying monster action. Pack. Flame on with camera. Torso sold separately. He spits real fire and causes real pain. Solid rubber bear gun comes complete with optional ram tongue action. Not responsible for nerve damage. And amuse your friends with Topol, Meep Song, and Bart the Batlin Belgian and Dive. Some parts may not exist. Act now, act often, and snap on the entire Tokyo metropolitan area complete with buildings, bridges, and the breakaway Monty Nuko Dam. Smaller than shown. Trample the ad on hapless citizen playset. Then abhor the action with the fabulous anti war protest pack. Senator Wollstone not included. But that's not all. Relive your favorite Japanese movie carnage with the lights. Camera action series. There's the gift, the goon, the shame-filled brother, the hapless Keisha, and the pull apart voodoo Kenny. Pose in the nude with the frisky kitten review, then watch the action from high atop Tokyo Tower as the twisted world you create explodes in rivers of blood and endless pain. Order today. Offer limited. Not available in Utah. Puerto Rico prices subject to win. Please wear rubber underwear and some parts. Baby made of chicken. Neck now. Buy bonds. A dog. Mommy. 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 Okay, okay. breathe, boy. Breathe. Oh, mommy. That was a good one. Let's not mommy. do that again. Mommy. Here's something we think you'll really like. Mommy. <laughs> That's okay. You have to beer in a bump sometimes. Oh, but I never really drink anything. You know oh, that. Yeah, uh, I'll have the occasional light beer and Merle likes his scotch, you know. But oh, anyway, uh, you never believe what Margaret told me about the Stewart boy. Well, oh, I am dying. Just tell me about okay, what he's into. Okay, how was everything, ladies? Oh, oh yeah. you really did a number on this Mexiquita fajita super bel grande treat, didn't you? Let oh, it was good you. and so filling. Oh, yes, everything's just wonderful. I'm really full. Ooh. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to be heading back to get this dessert tray. Oh, and uh, do you want anything? Coffee, tea, shot of tequila, huh? Oh, <laughs> no, we're fine right okay, now. Okay, I'll be right back, excuse oh, me. Oh, he is super neat and so creative. Oh, honey, they all are. This is my favorite place to come. Oh, not every day, but, you know, oh. a special treat sometimes. Oh, you heaven. see all the antiques on the wall oh, here? I love them. Oh, they do it up so colorful. Mm -hmm. You got to get down here on Halloween I've sometime. Heard, I've heard, They all dress up in costumes, and it's super colorful and so much fun. Okay, and here we are, girls. Oh, my. Here it oh, is. We're in okay. trouble now, honey. Now, oh. over here... We've got TGI Tokyo's biggest seller. Here it is, the Chocolate Towering Inferno, and it is decadent, but uh, you probably don't like chocolate, do you? Oh, no, I love it. chocolate. Yes. I'm kidding, of course, everyone loves chocolate. Uh, this one here, you probably wouldn't be interested in. I'm just kidding, it's a little rich, you know. But this is our Apple Double mur Murder Suicide Tort. It's kind of spicy and has a little rum in it, so I'm going to have to see your IDs, girl. Oh, you are so I'm... sweet. That's okay. so sweet. Anyway, oh. this last one over here is a too dense for me to even pick up. This is our vanilla cross-country killing spree with fudge sauce. One bite of this and you uh, lock tongues with Loki, evil god of strife and discord on the seventh platform of hell. I'm just kidding. It's a little rich. Can I get you one? <laughs> Should, honey, that's the one I'm going to have there. Oh, uh, nothing for me. Please. Oh, and a okay. Diet Pepsi, please. Another. All right, that's good. Uh, one of those and a Diet Pepsi. I'll get you a fork just in case you want to try it. Okay? He knows me he so sure well. Does. Oh, oh yeah. he's such a cute boy. Oh, so well, waiter. Uh, waiter. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Uh, could we have separate checks, please? Uh, I'm sorry, ladies. We don't do that here at TGI. Yeah, what TGI. a jerk. Oh, no kidding. Uh, ladies, uh, yes? we have a movie song. Oh, hey, Crow, any more brewskis in the cooler over there? Uh, no. Uh, how about a frozen daiquiri confection? Oh, sure. That sounds great. Boy, it sure is a nice day today, hmm? Yeah, like a warm summer night back home. Yeah. You know, back on Earth, we used to hang out at the beach all the time, or else we'd uh, go to the drive-in, which was really fun. The drive-in? Oh, yeah. We'd all pile into the car and head out to the old Lucky Twin back in uh, Buffalo on Route 5. Oh, Joel, tell us about the movies again, hmm? 
Well, my little cinematic sidekicks, you know, in those days we had real stars. We didn't need dialogue, we had faces. Ah, kind of like this camera film, huh, Joe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this that's... film certainly had a lot of faces, I'll give you that for free, but these films never seem to have any big name stars. Well, that's where you and I split the dog, my little red pal. Uh, this film is packed with celluloid heroes and they never feel any pain. Huh. It was a magic time in Hollywood. Stars jumped at the chance to appear in a Gamera film. Wow. Here, I'll show you. Cambot, do it like I like it. See, check it out. There's Edward G. Robinson, fresh from his role in Soylent Green. Yeah, now shut up and eat your Soylent Green, eh? Soylent Green is made from people. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Here's Elvis Costello making his screen debut. I don't know, it looks more like Marshall Crenshaw to me. Or Arnold Stang. Oh, yeah, look, here's Peter Ustinov. Hey, it looks just enough like him to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and here we have Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, right, sure, Hey, Joel, let me finish. Cute. Next we have Steve Allen, Claude Akins and Harrison Ford, Odd Job and William Defoe. Robert Blake and William Defoe. Uh, Joel, are you okay? Hey, shut up. Hank Williams Jr., Jerry Lewis, and William Defoe. Uh, Joel, when you went to the drive-in, did you spend a lot of time in the trunk? Did I mention Jerry to you, Bots? You guys probably don't know him from hardly working or cracking up. But, oh, lady, mister, he may need a home and what in the hay? Oh, please help me. Oh, ham, uh, lady, folks, pretty we'll be lady. right back. Oh, Sorry Dean. you had to see this. Oh, Dean. Aw, oh, gee, Joel, that wasn't much of a Gamera movie. Yeah, I mean, Gamera was hardly in the movie at all, yet he gets top billing. Why is that, hmm? Well, you see, uh, in this film, Gamera, Gamera wanted to spend a lot more time behind the camera. See, yeah, and that's how it all worked out. You see, in Hollywood, Gamera is considered a triple threat, a performer, director, and monster. Oh, kind of like Barbara Streisand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you'll read about the whole story of Gamera versus Varagon in this new book, You'll Never Eat This Town for Lunch Again. See, it's all in there. Yeah. That's really interesting. You know, when it comes to behind-the-scenes stories about monster movies, I'd like to read more about it. Exactly, Tom. <laughs> Reading opens up a wonderful world of whimsy and enchantment, grades three to five. Oh, I want to read that one. Hey, Hollywood Baragon, the seamy side of monster movies. Oh, that's really neat. Now, the next one looks good, too. The best places to eat Japanese. <laughs> oh, how about that? How to destroy a city without really trying. Yeah, next one, the oldest living Japanese mutants tells all. Move your hand. And this one's great for kid, the fabulous Where's Baragon. Too. Oh, it's delightful, too. You know, there's a lot of great, uh, also, books, books on, on tape. tape? I was just monsters. about to ask yeah. about those. <laughs> this one's The Velveteen Turtle, read by Meryl Streep. Let's listen to that one, Kamba. And so, the Velveteen Turtle said to the little toy soldier, You're not like the other toys, are you? You're different. That is why I am going to kill you. Why? Because you are going to die. Yeah, and also, that's yeah, delightful. That one up. And touching. then there's this Sharp Tongue, a memoir, is read by Baragon. Let's hear that one, Kamba. Hey, what are these books, Joel? Less Than Zero, I Am Not Spock, Tech on? Wars by William Shatner. Oh, these An actor are... publishes a novel tonight on Emergency. These are just <laughs> mine over there. Why don't we uh, read a letter, guys? Oh, why huh? not? Hey. Okay, this one looks pretty neat. Uh, let's put that on still store there. Anyway, this is from Joel Carnes of Naperville, Illinois. Joel uh, writes, Dear Joel and gang on MST, I really like your show. My favorite people are Crow, Tom Servo, Gypsy Cambot, and you. Well, that's just about all of us, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I don't like your bosses too much. Oh, we don't either. Frank is kind of a crybaby, and Dr. Forrester yells at Frank too much. I'm 12 years old and watch your show all the time. I love the Invention Exchange. You all make terrific inventions. Hope to see more of your show. Let's put that up on the screen. Tell them where they can write, Tom. They can write to the Mystery Science Theater Information Club, Post Office Center, Finance, and Defend, Hopkins, and Southern Center. Do it today. What do you think, sirs? Mm -hmm. Funny you should mention books, Booby. I asked Frank to pick me up a book to read at the beach this weekend. Uh, what did you get, Frank? Oh, you're going to love it. This is great. It's The Stand by Stephen King. This is the new uncut version, which contains all the passages that were cut from the restored version. It's really great. You're going to really oh, enjoy it. Frank. Yeah. Push the button, Frank. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Satellite of Love. My name is Joel, and I've fashioned my two robot friends, Tom and Crow, into an at-home shooting gallery. It does get boring up here. Stop talking and start talking. 
As you could probably tell from the opening the Mads made, I'm marooned up here in space without much chance of ever really getting home. Something is wrong on Saturn 3. Anyway, they monitor our responses to watching really bad movies, and then they sell the results to cable TV. Five seconds to commercial sign. Say, partner, that's some mighty fancy shooting. Bang, 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 yo. Commercial sign in five, four, three, two, commercial sign now. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, I look, I changed the robots to Apple Dumpling Gang mode. Draw, Tim Conway. Uh, er, uh, jeepers, uh, uh, sorry about getting the uh, ketchup on your scarf, Mr. Mr. Black Bart. Can I, can I call you Bart? Is that okay with you? Uh, gee, I'll, I'll get some soda water and clean that right up. There. Ow, 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 ow. Now your turn, Don Knotts. I'll have you know these hands have to be registered as lethal weapons with the Mount Pilot Police Department. And when in Los Angeles, visit Universal Studios. Oh, you guys, wake up. The Mads are calling. Come on, get up. Oh, oh, oh. Hi. Hello, Hi. evil over under overlords. Oh, shut your mouth, Pollyanna prod, and show us your invention exchange. And don't dawdle, Amaryllis. You mean me? No, him, beefaroni. Well, sirs, today's invention exchange is based on the old premise of this age-old gag, the bang gun. Oh, it's not that great. Not really that much fun. So I took that premise and based it on this new bang Uzi. You see, you can point it directly at someone. And if you do it right... Real arcade action. Give me to you. Well? Kaboom. Uh, very funny. We can do better than that. In fact, we've come up with this harpoon gun with appropriate noise. Start running, Frank. Oh, I hate this one. Funny, huh? Well, hey, sirs, here's a knife adapted to the same purpose. Slink? Well, balls in your court. Balls in our court. I'll show you balls. Frank uh, has got some nunchucks using the same tired premise. Hey, Kiba! Days of Dunbar! Well, here's a stick of dynamite. Just light the fuse. Oh, I can't hold my ears. And. Oh. Ka chow Ka chow Ka chow What is Don Martin working with you guys now? Frank, get the plunger ready. Well, your experiment this week, Joel, is a TV movie called Stranded in Space. It's a real stinker, and I'm sorry, but if I don't do it, someone else will. Finish him off, Frank. Boingy banga kabonga! No, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm afraid so. Oh, I'm afraid not. You're high. Oh, you're high. I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, baby, what am I? Hey, 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 come on. What are you two little metal monsters bickering about now? It's all Crow's fault. We were playing with our Topper's TV trading cards, and I wanted to maybe trade him my complete Love Boat set, which is worth a ton, for his half-finished Columbo villains and his crummy name of the game season two. And now he tells me my Love Boat collection is incomplete, because I got to have a card for each time a star appeared, and I say he's high. Oh, who's high? You know how much this name of the game pack is worth? I'm talking James Ferrentino, Tony Franciosa. Hey, hold on, hold on now. I think I can give us a little insight into this problem. Tom, you only want his Columbo villain set because you've got Cameron Mitchell and his value just went up because he's in today's movie. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, and Crow, you're not much better trying to oh. scam Tom's complete Love Boat season one set. The I'm set's sure. not complete. Oh, it is too. Listen, yeah. I helped him uh, tape it together. Look at his arms are inoperable. I gotta do it. See, all the cards go together to form ship's doctor, Bernie Coppell. See? Yeah. Oh, dickweed. Hey, hey Crow, come on, what's wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm just trying to play hardball with you, Servo. Come on, no hard feelings, pal. Okay, I guess not. Okay, I tell you what, you can have the whole love boat set and I'll forget about the other stuff if you help me finish my Sweat Hogs collection. Well, you can have Gabe Kaplan for free. Oh, yuck, I don't even want him. Yeah, I'm no. after Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. Hey, well, listen, I've got something that'll really make your mouths water. The complete yeah, sure. 
new Kids in Court collection. That's right. Every major child star who's been arrested, convicted, or has litigation pending. Check it out. Hey, cool. Hey, Servo, look, there's stats on the back. Charges, trial status, even lawsuits. Yeah, look, there's Adam Rich from Eight is Enough. Hey, the whole different strokes gang. Wow. Dana Plato for holding up a video star with a pellet gun. <laughs> Allegedly, Crow. Uh, oh, no, right, that's right, right. Oh, there's Gary Coleman for suing his parents. Hey, wait a minute. Todd Bridges was acquitted. That card's worthless. Hey, I know, but listen, I've got the complete set now that I've got Danny Bonaducci, who was arrested for beating up a transvestite. Oh, See? wow. You got Bonaducci? And hey, where'd you get all this anyway? Well, I got him from Gypsy. Gypsy? She said all she had were rabbi cards. No, yeah. I just traded her this Richard Basehart from Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and she gave me the complete set. What? Oh, Gypsy, wow. you come here. <laughs> Trading is easy. Once you... Know the secret. I'm Marshall Brodeen. Now, ladle in a heaping bag full of delicious Nestle Toll House morsel. And with... Hi, Hi. Bro. Oh, man. I had a nightmare. Huh? I, I dreamt Bro was taking me on a father-son fishing trip, and Mom made us sandwiches and stuff, and, mm -hmm. and cake, and we had just finished loading up the station wagon with minnows and stuff, and I noticed Joe was wearing nothing but a Christian Dior bra and panty apron, and the really weird part was he had a little bellhop costume for me, and then the really weird thing was then... He started screaming, no, Joel, I don't have the legs for that. And I screamed, and he said, oh, yes, you do. And then I, I said, no, I don't. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. He started chasing me around the stage ring, and a mom came out with a clown suit. Oh. And, and then I woke up. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I'm making a delicious taste treat, Crow. Four dozen fresh Toll House cookies. Mm. Mm, let me help. Can I help? I want to help. Okay, okay. You can grease those cookie sheets. And don't use the butter. It'll burn. Okay. Hey, you know, Crow... Your little fishing dream reminds me of Ward E from today's film, except my vision of Ward E is kind of like that headache you get when you eat something really cold really fast, you know, like a popsicle. Oh, yeah, neat. You know, but I was huh? thinking what Bor uh, Ward E would be to me. It's like coming home to find your answering machine light flashing like huh? mad, only to find out the message is, uh, if you'd like to make a call, please hang up and dial again. Yes, that's good. But you know, to me, Wardy is all about that nauseating feeling you get on the ride home from church from the Sunday paper that's been sitting in the sun too long. You know, that inky, oh, stick yeah, yeah. smell? <laughs> yeah, but no, 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 no. Wardy is that gross feeling you get when you push down the garbage and something wet and unknown squirts on you. Good, Ugh. fine, yes. But how about when you're having a salad and that bacon bit seems a little too hard to be a bacon bit? And so you take it out and it looks just a little too much Ugh. like a Toenail. Oh, oh, rich, creamy. Oh, Wardy cool. is like sitting in a public bathroom and someone turns a light out. Boom, boom. Oh, well, how about when you make a sandwich and you're this close to taking a bite when you notice the bread's got green fur all over the bottom? Oh, oh, yeah. boom, boom. How about when you find yourself absentmindedly fingering a wad of gum on the bottom of a theater chair? Oh, hardened or wet? Oh, oh, yeah, I can't oh, believe you guys person. started without me. Huh? Whoa! Ah, ah, <laughs> get him away from me! Oh! What's uh, wrong with him? I don't know. Hey, say, Joel, you ever had to dig through the hamper for a pair of underwear? Oh, ish. Oh, 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 we got movies already! <laughs> so, once again, Mr. Rockford has escaped our grasp. Tibby and I are very displeased, aren't we, Tibby? Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, boss. boss. Next time, no mistakes. I want him out of our way. Permanently. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, boss. Yes. <laughs> now, as for you, Quincy's been nosing around a little too much. I think he's on to us. I want that meddler out of our way. I'll see that he takes a long vacation. <laughs> uh, that means you're going to kill him, right? Uh, yeah, sure. Right, okay. <laughs> uh, now, as for you... I want Hooker dealt with. Hooker's a good cop. I know he's a good cop. Had we been on the same team, I think we might have been friends. He's a good cop, but he'll make an even better corpse. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what was I supposed to do with that? Kill Hooker! Oh, right. Kill Hooker. Kill Hooker. Okay. Now, <clears throat> Christy Love has been sticking her pert, pretty little nose in our business long enough, and I want it out. Our business? What do you mean by our business? Well, uh, you know, the things we do, like illegal things and things that people of a depraved nature do. Why didn't you just say that? For crying well, out. it's implied. Now I want Christy Love to take a deep, deep rest. She needs her beauty rest, yes. 
Uh, yeah. uh, excuse me, boss. Uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, I, I was supposed to permanently eliminate Matt Houston and send Mrs. Columbo on a long vacation, so I, I flew to Houston, and uh, are we supposed to kill any of these people? Yeah, that's the whole point. You're, you're supposed to kill them all, I, th I think. Oh, all right. Kill them all. Okay. Uh, say, boss, yeah. uh, why, was I supposed to have a long talk with Petrocelli, or was it Banachek, the Polish guy? And I didn't know whether to take care of Toma or Beretta. Oh, uh, sir, well, that's the same guy. Oh, no, 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 no. Wasn't Toma Tony Bizante? Well, yeah, until they moved the show out to L.A. and put Robert Blake in the role. Oh. Epilogue in oh. ten seconds. Well, you see, my little friends, it works like this. Epilogue in five, four, three, two, epilogue now. So you see, Rockford is out of our way. Quincy is on permanent vacation, and Christy Love has taken a deep, deep sleep. Well, my friends, it's time to watch a film. After this. <laughs> Looking forward to lunch at the Polo. Yours truly, Tommy Soivo, executive in charge of production, satellite love studios, etc., etc. Hey, read that back to me, honey. Will you, magic voice, baby? Here, Mr. You just don't know how to take no for an answer, do you? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Servo, mm -hmm. there's a Joel Robinson yep. and a Crow here to see you. Oh, oh, send them in. We'll go over that letter, lady. Okay, what do you two pixies got for me? It better be hot. It better be good. Uh, did you see the movie, sir? Did you yeah. see Stranded in Space? Yeah. Yeah, what'd you think? Dynamite, huh? Yeah. And what a series it'll make. A series? Oh, come on. Look, kid, I was thinking it was an okay pilot, but I just don't see it as a series. Please. Are you kidding? It's got all the ingredients. It's The Fugitive meets oh. Logan's Run with Please Don't Eat the Daisy sprinkled in. It can't miss. Oh, come on. Look, look. It's stranded in Space becomes a series. That lead has got to go. I was thinking of maybe uh, <sighs> David Jensen. Yeah. But uh, David Jensen's dead. Yeah. Oh, and that actor there was alive? Give me a break. Come on. Excuse me, Mr. Servo. Yeah. Just called, and I'm sorry, there are no tables available tonight. Oh, heck, I guess I'll just have to use the drive through then. Okay, David Geffen on line three? Geffen? Oh, I'm gonna take that call. Hey, look, Joel, press that button for me, will you? My arms are inoperative, babe. Here, yeah, thank you. Say, Geffen! Hey, look, I'm very upset. Listen, I'm very upset. You assure me that Kevin Costner and Julie Roberts are all set to sign. Now you tell me they've been replaced by Bill Bixby and Joanne Wally? I'm gonna plot right here, you listen to me? I consider this a personal betrayal. I'm gonna bury you, man. Do you hear me? Bury you. Get out of my face. Um, you know, I, Mr. Servo, I think yeah. we should read this letter. Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay. Uh, dear MST3K, my husband is a big fan of this program. Mm -hmm. He is 52 years old, mm -hmm. and he's an aircraft mechanic. He never misses it. His name is Bob. It's from D. Moore. Oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I love it. I can see Gil Gerard as Bob, the aircraft mechanic. Lindsay Wagner as D, his long-suffering wife. Oh, boy, it's beautiful. It's got legs. It's got heat. It's got everything. Sign him up. What did you think, sirs? Hmm? Ah, show business and mad science. Two very fickle, very unstable professions. You know, Frank, I may be forced out of my position one day, and a replacement will have to be found. Really? Yes, uh, an assistant, perhaps. Someone next in line? Well, what, did we put an ad in the paper or something like that? Frank, you just don't get it. In all likelihood, it would be someone from right here at Gizmonic Institute. Someone who's worked very closely with me. <laughs> and then I have to train him in, right? <laughs> Oh, Frank, Frank, I, I offer you the world, and all you see is middle management. Push the button. Hey, is this suit coming out of my salary? <sighs> hey, hey, ho, welcome to the Satellite of Love. Uh, I'm Joel, these are my robots, and, uh, you know, it's baseball season up here on the Satellite of Love, and in space, that means one thing. Milwaukee. Huh? I mean, T-ball. Oh. Okay. Sign in 15 seconds. All right, Crow, I want you to go along. Come on, buddy. Okay. Way right. out there, buddy. Hey, Way Joel, out Joel. there. Is this going to hurt? Are you sure it's not going to hurt? Quit being such a panty hey, waste. Hey, okay, just hey, hold hey, still hey, and nothing will get hurt. Hey. Okay. Whoa! Gypsy, you uh, patched up the hole. Thanks a lot. I thought I told you kids not to play ball in the house. Oh, we're sorry. Oh, we're sorry. We won't do it again. Coast is clear. Crow, <laughs> go long, buddy. All right. All right, buddy. This one's 
coming out to you. Go, long, Joel. Long. go way long. Way I'm long. Way okay. Open, I'm open. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Yes. 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 All right. All right. Excellent. All right. The trial of the human spirits. Oh, 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 oh you hey, guys. I caught it. I knew that reading that George Will book would pay off. Hey, the Mad Steinbrenners are calling and you're oh. losing your glove. Oh. Yes, 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 Dr. Forrester, let's do the wave, woo! Stop playing around up there and get to the invention exchange, Van Lingo Mungo. Hey, hey, nice mug. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, sirs, oh. I can show you my invention exchange. This is my new invention. It's called the cellulite phone. It reminds people that they should stop dialing and start dieting. And Dig that's it. not all. The cellulite phone features a speed dialing system that puts you directly in touch with Richard Simmons. You know, when you were carrying around all that weight and the kids used to show movies on your shirt and you were so unhappy and no, <laughs> you, you just deal a meal. And, <laughs> and the cellulite phone gently reminds you what could happen if you order out for the wrong kind of food. Ah, uh, hello, Domino's. Yeah, I'm here with a, a couple of friends, a group of friends, and we'd like to order your large pizza. Yeah, and I'd also like that extra with cheese. extra breakfast yeah. cereal and some fruit bats. No, Alex. And um, some A1 sauce on Six. top of that. And, and uh, for traveling, the cellulite phone can be stored in <clears throat> this special pink nylon stretch pants carrying case. What do you think, sirs? We don't have time for that kind of nonsense. Frank and I have started our own gizmonic daycare center here at... Uh, at the Deep 13, and Frank's developed a new baby formula that's going to be very lucrative for us. Isn't that right, Frank? Oh, that's right. I've just found this little fella here, something I like to call Miracle Baby Growth Wonder Formula. It helps build strong bodies in 12 ways. Oh, yes, you love me. That's right. Here, that's oh, okay. Never mind. Look, Booby, your experiment this week is called Time of the Apes, and it's uh, really immature. We asked all the kids here, and they said it... I did it! It worked better than I thought! I'm the god! I'm the god! <laughs> Tell me we can go to Rudy. Oh, 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 oh. Johnny, don't go. It's too dangerous. I don't care. Why doesn't Johnny care? A film by Bell Labs. Johnny likes to sit next to his girlfriend, Sally, here on the bus, but she's got other fish to fry. Strike one against Johnny. Hey, that building up ahead is Johnny's school, Tarkus Brain Lab 4, and here is Johnny's inner sanctum helpmate, Mrs. Reese. To Johnny, the halls of Tarkus Brain Lab 4 are filled with dark, shadowy figures. A few whispered words, the sting of a needle, and they're gone, gone, gone. No one stays too long in Johnny's world, would you? What looks like a normal playground to you or I takes on a hideous simian appearance in Johnny's mind. Images leap and dance like melting colored caramel candies. Johnny's hair, by the way, is a loan from the Bobby Goldsboro Institute, from the Snide Museum. Here in Johnny's fun lab, he can manipulate objects at will and no one dares to stop him. Johnny concentrates hard to make the herding stop. Here's Blue Director 4, Dr. Todd Ambrosius, Johnny's real dad. Uh-oh, time for a heart-to-heart, -heart, Johnny. You see, it's all because Johnny doesn't care. Do you care? Because a mind like Johnny's is a terrible thing to unleash. I'm Tom Servo, announcing for Bell Laboratories. Good night and commercial sign. Hello, this is our dramatized pageant of the Scopes Monkey Trial, a pivotal interpretation of law which has a very thin connection to today's film. I'm your host, F. Lee Bailey. Scene 1, 1925, Dayton, Tennessee. John Scopes taught the theory of evolution school. This was against ape law. Man is all from me. All right, you know, it is. Come with me. Tell it to the judge. Thank you very much. Scene 2, a sweltering courtroom somewhere in Tennessee. The question before the court. Did man evolve from ape, or did man come from the Bible? This is the plaintiff, William Jennings Bryant, played by our own Tommy Servo. Notice his resemblance to Frederick March. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, and... Uh, he's not here yet. Oh. Uh, representing the defense, Clarence Darrow, fictionally played by Spencer Tracy, recreated here by Crow T. Robot. Uh, uh, I object. Uh, not yet. Um, playing the part of... Honorable Judge Harry Morgan will be this cardboard cutout of Judge Wapner we got in the mail with the voice of me, F. Lee Bailey. Go. Now, what's all this horse hockey about man evolving from monkeys? Well, they did. Uh, the defense rests. That's it? Yeah. 
Well, that was a uh, very elegant, eloquent, almost Oscar-winning performance, Mr. Darrell. <clears throat> Your honor and esteemed colleagues Sorry. of the bar. Uh, Shut up, Colonel. Don't tell them to stop. Perhaps you ought to cut to the chase, Colonel. Hey, I want to be a Colonel, too. That sounds neat. Come on, you guys are getting mired in the boring subplot. It's just oh. Joel, Joel, where's the defendant? Uh, she's still changing. Oh, for crying out. Oh, there she is. <clears throat> Yeah, but which man? Yeah, what about women? And what about Scarecrow's brain? Uh, let's snap this up, people. We're starting to lose them. I find the plaintiff, Mr. Scopes, you're guilty. The fine is a thousand, a hundred dollars. Have this stamped by the bursar. Shyster. Hey. <clears throat> and so the trial ends in confusion. Neat, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, and William James Bryant succumbed to the mortal strain and died five days later. <clears throat> Clarence Darrow went on to greater things like his role in Pat and Mike and yep. the stunning It's a Mad, 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 yeah, Mad World then died. Ah! <clears throat> if you want to read more about it, ask your librarian for the following books. Picture Book of Tennessee, Welcome to the Monkey House by Kurt Vonnegut Jr., the comic book version of Planet of the Apes, and Curious George Rides a Bicycle. We have movies. Oh! And the outlook for Friday, more of the same. Rain, 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 rain. <laughs> so uh, it's a good idea that we keep our uh, scuba gear for the next couple of days. <laughs> Over to you, Joel. <laughs> Thanks, Tom Servo. Anyway, uh, up next is our fashion editor, Crow T. Robot with the Fashion Minute Crow. Thank you, Joel. Hello, hello, hello! This spring's ape is dashing, daring, and absolutely shameless in paramilitary garb as the House of Primates unveiled its Tarzan collection to the dazzled designers assembled in Milan. And, oh, lucky me, I have the footage. Uh, roll that footage, Cambot. Here comes Ennui, patrolling the byways of fashion in a breezy street-length heavy wool dress, smartly accented by an orange ascot with white shoulder bag and matching belt. Coco's a classic in this Chanel. Shoulder pads, leggings, and jaunty gold buttons put all eyes on this soldier. Tan hut. Colors scream for attention in these fun, fun, fun one-piece action jumpsuits by Dicker and Dicker. Although they can fly solo, just add a brooch, white lacquer skull cap, and jack boots, and you'll sort a new fashion height. Back on the home front, you'll wait for your King Kong with this indigo print kerchief by Dr. Zaya. But hold on to it. This little number's red hot and looks great on any species. Paul, who goes there? Why, it's Jacques in the timeless Colonel Sanders top coat. Note the raised brass button and velvet collar. This ensemble makes any ape king of his jungle. Off duty? Then bivouac in this. Oh, so soft, rich, velour dinner jacket from the Cornelius collection. Just add a riding crop, blue taffeta ascot, and you'll be the Cinderella of any liberty. Attention all personnel, incoming fashions. <laughs> Our military parade ends with a salute to the medical corps. These gauzy white linen surgical masks breathe life into any wardrobe. One of this year's most versatile accessories, the surgical mask doubles as a red butt cover. Well, this is one reporter who is ready to enlist in any guerrilla war that looks this great. So this year, Uncle Cornelius wants you. Back to you, Joel. This is Crow. Bye-bye for now. Around the Earth in 30 minutes, this is Commercial Sign. Buddy, let's do the Sandy Frank song. Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, he's the source of all our pain. Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, gets up at the house all day. <laughs> Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, thinks that people come from trees. <laughs> Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, gets hard movies from Japan. <laughs> Sandy Frank. Sandy Frank, films are always poorly done. <laughs> Sandy Frank, Sandy Frank, Spielberg will return his calls. <laughs> Sir, uh, better check this out there. Gadding about again. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, we don't have time for this kind of nonsense. Don't you have a letter to read? And quit camping it up up there. Babies are sleeping. 
Oh, yeah, we could read the letter. I don't see sure. anything wrong with Why that. Either. Well, okay. Sure. okay. Well, this letter we picked out is uh, from a guy. Well, I'll just read it to you. Uh, okay. Let's put that on still store cambot. It says, Dear Joe Crow and Tom Servo, my name is Vladimir Lopez. I'm 15 years old and a devoted fan of MST 3000. It is my absolute numero uno A1 favorite show. I live in Tijuana, Mexico and never miss a show. Nice. I just love everything about it, especially the songs and plays you come up with during the breaks. However, there's one part I hate, uh -oh. and that is when the mad scientist pushed the button. I yeah. wish it would go yeah. on longer. We too. And then he added a really cool... Oh, now drive. that's cool. Let's that's that really there, outstanding. Okay, okay let's, work, tell them about, let's tell them about the MST Information Club, Tom Servo. All right. Send your letters or anything else you can fit in a mailbox to MST 3K Information Club. Post Office Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota 55343. Do it today. I don't think you should have said that thing about the mailbox. Sorry. But, uh, what do you think, sir? Uh, I'd better... Push the button, sir. You better change him. Uh, I'll tell you what, Frank. I changed him last time. I'll push the button. You change him. Well, I always push the button. I What's... know, and I, I, you shouldn't have to. I'll, I'll push no, the button I, this time. It's fine. Your... I'll do it. Don't worry about it. You go ahead and change him. I'll push the button. No, I think so... you should have this experience. You should no, change him sir. so you'll know. Uh, I'll you... push the button. His first words. <laughs> Oh, I heard that the guys down at Aqua Brace are planning a cut and run on Conglomco Central Division. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, <laughs> oh fun. Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to Saddle Love Industries. My name is Joel Robinson. I think you know my associates, Tom Servo and the doing? Croaster. Hello. We're doing what any good marketing mad dog should first thing in the morning, hanging around the water cooler and telling <laughs> tales out of school. Hey, here comes the new girl. Oh, hi, Bill. Who was, Who was that? that? That's Gypsy. She works in financial. Well, I'm in love again, and I love, love, love it. <laughs> oh, darn it, Tom. You fall in love every Monday morning. Get a grip on yourself, man. Yeah, get a grip. And you're not much better. <laughs> Joel, I know, but it's the smell of copy machine toner and whiteout that makes my soul sore. I'm a man in love. Initial sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial sign now. Hey. That was my brother-in-law, and the whole family <coughs> is sick about it. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's, it's sick. Well, what do you think, Jr.? I yes. like it. <sighs> it's not funny in the least, but I like it. You know, there's not a single man in my organization that'll tell that kind of lousy joke. Yeah. Oh, the mads are coming. Okay. Here comes the steam shovel. Mmm. Chug, 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 chug. Open. Oh, go. Come. There you go. There you go. Who's a good boy? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, big steam shovel. Here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Little on there. There you go. There you go. There you go. Little bit more. Little. What is it? What do you see? What do you. Oh, Joel, it's you. Um. Why don't you go ahead with your invention exchange? I've got to put the little dickens down. Okay. Well, since you have a new addition to the family, I thought this would come in useful. It's an air freshener mobile. Mm. You see, mm -hmm. it's uh, got bright colored air fresheners that hang from strings. Mm. They stimulate baby's tiny brain, oh. while the movement of the mobile activates charcoal filters, <laughs> covering up the foul odor of baby's chechar, caca, popo, nimbus, BM and poopies. Nimbus? Chetcher? Nimbus. Uh-huh. Ah. Neat. <coughs> so. Who's a sleepy boo? Frank, come in here and look at the guy. He's, he's so cute when he sleeps. What is this hideous thing you've put on my baby? What have you done? What have you done? Frank, relax. It's my invention this week, Joel. It's the alien teething nook. To baby, it's a satisfying nipple. To onlookers, it's a terrifying alien face hugger. Why don't you tell Joel about the experiment this week, Frank? I like it. Well, Joel, Daddy-O is the movie OC, but first, 
Here's one for baby and me. <laughs> I'll get it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, we oh, got it! <laughs> hey, everybody, do the pants up song. That lad bearer, Levi's bugle boy, sends a bunch of chinos, hang a band roll on a power wrangler. Johnny Carson Huskies, no pants are higher than mine. Ha ho, look out, no touches. Ha, hike up your britches. Super high now, I'll cut off the circulation to your thighs now. Yank your trousers higher than Corey Ames. Oh wow. Cause it ain't hip till you're in total pain. Hike up your pants till you see your shins wearing eyes on shirt like a second skin. Make sure you wear your belt buckle to the side. Hike up your pants, take your butt cheeks for a ride. Hey! Hike, hike, hike up your chinos. Hike, hike, hike up your ferris. Hike, hike, hike up your haggis. Hike up your britches like my take it, Frank. Hike. Hike, hike, hike your pants up. Hike, hike, hike with the thing in the. Hike, hike, hike with the the football. Hike, hike. Take it, doctor. Hike, I'm not taking hike, anything, hike, Frank. Hike, Here, hike take these. Hike, 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 and you, hike, pants hike, weasel, hike, get on with it. Hike, hike, hike your pants up. Zip hike, it, Frank. Hike, hike, hike up your band rolls. Hike, hike, hike up your robots. Hike, hike, hike up your tuck skin. Hike up your britches like mine. Ha! Hike up your britches like mine. Ha! Hike up your britches like mine. Ha! Oh yeah, look out! Hike up my britches like mine. Jump back, kiss uh, myself. Joel, Hike up your britches sign. like mine. Joel, I can't Joel, come back. back. I Joel! Know. Joe, commercial sign, snap out of it, buddy! No, he's paper locked! Hit the button, Crow! Hit the button! I'll get it! Come on, Joel, hurry up! Okay. Do you know your way through, Janet? Blindfolded! You can cancel. Ask him! All right, Cambot, roll that race footage. On your marks! Get set! Go! Darn fool, kids. Oh! Okay, and now you both win a delicious pizza! Wait, where's Joel? Oh no, we've killed him. Joel Robinson, dead at 31. Oh no. I was just kidding you guys, you know. We gotta get him on his own! Okay, okay, now this next one is the classic Chinese fan, okay? okay. All I do is now I want to take a sip and I want one of you guys to say something surprising to me, okay? okay? I got it, I got it. All right. Joel, I'm pregnant with your child. Okay, this next one is called Old Faith right. or okay. Weiler's Geyser of Mirth, okay? <laughs> now what's going to happen? It's guaranteed to get a laugh, just like clockwork, every 20 minutes in a crowded room. Check it out. Okay, I, I, you're covered. I got this one. Do it. Hey, there's a ship coming in the rain. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, boy. oh, That was good. That was a dandy. No, no, there is a ship coming now, in the rain. Just let me get a glass of water before you do it again, okay? Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, there is a ship coming in the rain. Quick, Camba, give me rocket number nine, pronto. What in the heck? We better bring this up on the Hexfield view screen. See? Oh, no, no it's, not. it's yeah, that guy. Sorry about the fender bender, and now, uh, give me that key, fella. What are you talking about? Why are you here? Just go away. Really? Oh, oh, crying out loud. Anyway, what okay. a pain. Let's get back to the dribble oh, action. <laughs> this that should is be really a good cool. one here. <laughs> huh? Look, fella. Gym policy. Yeah, whatever. I gotta have that box. Yeah, yeah whatever. 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 Okay, so hey, we're okay, here. so Joe, why is the dribble take funny? <laughs> what? <laughs> why is it? It's only the pinnacle of the craft, man. I mean, sometimes huh? I care. Hey, look, guys, I'm gonna take off. All right. Well, just get, get out, out of here. Jim. Oh, Boy, Joel, you gotta get a lock for that thing. Yeah, I'm gonna need your gym key. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> anyway, this one's called the Juicy Lucy. It goes way back its origin. Just like, <laughs> this should be good. Ah, Ricky. Want some? 
I want an answer. Want some? I want an answer. Want some? I want an answer. Oh, wow, you know, no matter how many times I see that thing, I always learn something new. Okay, I'm ready, Crow. Let's try it. Hey, Joel. Want some? I want an answer. That worked pretty good. Okay, Tom, ready? Let's try it. Well, you know, I can't uh, use my hands to hold an apple, so I rigged up this Carmen Miranda getup. What do you think? You can't hold an apple, but you... Oh, forget it. Okay. All right. Some guys had brothers. I had Sonny. Okay. Um, uh... Uh, so you killed Sonny, admit it. Ah! Oh, whoa. Oh, okay. Uh, your name's Peter uh, get Plum. your clothes on. You're coming with me. Ah! Oh, no! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, your, your my name Plum. is Peter Plum. Ah! Oh, mm. uh, if you weren't a guy, uh, uh, I'd bust okay. you in the chops. If you weren't a guy, I'd bust you in the okay. chops. Ah! Okay, okay, ah! okay. Joel, Joel, Joel. Can the Stanislavski. This is Rush Bank! Can the Stanislavski, okay? Let's read some letters for crying right, out loud. I'm sorry, I got kind of crazy whoa. there. Okay, let's do that. Um, let's see, let's put this up on Still Store Canva. Right. Okay, this Bring one it. is from Christina's, and right. this is kind of a, I am seven years old, I am in the first grade sister. Oh, she's the first grade sister? Sisterhood is powerful. Ooh, okay, ooh. it says, shut up you guys, and Tom Servo says, I hate you too, and Crow says, I hate you. That's really oh, sweet. No, okay, we now don't. this yeah. one we comes from <laughs> the Xerox Full Integration Test Engineers. Let's cool. put that on mm. Still Store. And that says, dear Joel Cambot, Tom Servo, Crow, and Gypsy, we the Xerox Full Integration Test Engineers do solemnly swear to be faithful MST3K viewers until death, unreasonably high taxes, or show cancellation do uh -huh. us part. I wow. think that's full integration test humor. I yeah, think so. Doing. Anyway, <laughs> we have a fun, large group of people here at Xerox that are addicted to your incredibly funny show. We have a ritual now that Friday lunches are sh reserved strictly for MST3K viewing. Life here at Xerox has been enhanced by MST3K, and frankly, we feel that it would be virtually impossible to live without the satellite of love. Keep up the good work, people and bots. Okay, this is the last one. This one is, uh, we'll put that on still store there. And this says, Dear guys, I have always liked your show since the begin. I'm writing to you guys to ask a few questions. One, how long did it take to build Tom Servo, Crow, and Gypsy after you had the design? Built? Two. How do guys do before and after the experiments every week? It's an intelligent and question. What do guys do to relax? Questions, what? questions, questions. I oh. need ah. answers, answers, oh. answers. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Wait till I get you home, baby. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, sirs? Hmm? Push the button, Frank. Want some? Push the button, Frank. No, really, I insist. Push the button. Have one. Push the button, Frank. You're not getting enough to eat. Push the button, Frank. Oh, no, have some. Push the button. Want some? Yeah. Yeah. Push the button, Frank. <laughs> What the Sam Scratch is going on here? He's playing with the buttons. Oh. Isn't that cute? <laughs> here, here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Push the button, Frank. It's a good boy. Come on. There you go. Uh, oh, he's lucky. <laughs> It's on. I think so. Push the button, Frank. Uh, Dr. Forrester, <laughs> it's not working. Not working. Well, no wonder. Your baby's got string carrots all over the keyboard. Uh, you're just going to have to hold the key down, Frank. I've got to go change it. But he's going to want to change. Just hold the button down, Frank.
you've got the problem. I'm only paying you half price for that because it took you over 30 days to burrow here with that pizza. Frank! <laughs> Frank? Hmm? What are you doing? I was just getting a piece of water. A piece of water? I mean a glass of cake. Come here. I mean a, Come here. I mean, Come here. Let me show you something. I mean... I mean <laughs> oh! Remember this? Well, that's it, Frank. We're licked. Dr. Forrester, I've known you to be many things before, but I've never known you to be a quitter. Are you going to give up now? Don't quit. Live, damn it, live! Oh, I remember. Alt function seven. Ah, Ricky, Gary, get me a star. Hi everybody, welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson and it looks like Tom Servo and Crow are caught in some kind of rift hyper overdrive where they're over fascinated with the idea of Lucille Ball finally meeting up with Harvey, Harvey Firestein. Let's watch. Ah, uh, Mr. Mooney, I wanted to meet Robert Goulet. Uh, I know what you mean, honey. Love for sale. You see what I gotta Love live with? Sale. The only way I can get him to interact with me is take on the mannerisms of a other raspy voice celebrity. Uh, sirs, uh, this is Vendor, Brenda Vicaro here, sirs. Uh, Bridges Meredith on line one. Uh, I'm only taking calls from David Jansen. Uh, Brenda, darling, postpone my dinner with Kim Cotton. See what I mean? Ah, I've never met a real man. Ah, Gary, we need more cow guys. Hey, you guys, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, hold on. Gypsy's got an impression. She's been working real hard on it. Ah, Ricky, I want to be in the show, too. Come on, you guys, stop it. Hey, Cambo, put down the lights. Gypsy, you ready? Come on. You guys wow. get it? She's the opening to the NBC Sunday Night Mystery movie. Oh, oh the Mads are calling. Cool. McLeod! Ah. Oh, way to give them the razz, robot critters. Let's press on, shall we? Tall and proud. Our invention this week are these printers you wear on the front of your person. And tiny diodes are attached tiny, to... Tiny, itchy diodes, you mean. Tiny diodes are attached to the headbands, and they read your cranial cavity and reproduce your self-image on these ready-to-wear boards for all the world to see. Ready, Frank? Start thinking. I'll switch on your computer. Now, Frank, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, when I was in high school, I wasn't a freak or a jock or a brain or anything like that. I was basically one of those people who got along with everybody. I fit in with every group. I'm basically a good person with solid goals and a strong value system. If I run into someone on the street, sure, I'll give them the time of day. But if they cross me, they're off my list. I guess what I'm trying to say is, remember me as Frank, one of the good ones. How'd I do? Good, real good. Now I'll turn mine on. Walk quietly among other men, but know their power, for they are your enemies. Quietly crush them as you work diligently through the night. Pay attention to the man behind the curtain, for he is your ally. Drink deeply and lustfully from the foamy draught of evil. Uh, do it to the other guy before he does it to you, and be bad to the bone, won't you? Thank you. Sir, that color looks good on you. Oh, this old thing, I just threw it on. Well, it's your turn, Jolie Ole Infantry. Hey, sirs, that one's pretty neat. Um, I hope you like mine. I decided to combine two popular products, the Kleenex dispenser and the phone machine. When I used to live back down on Earth, when I worked at an office, everybody complained that the fax machine paper was just like tissue, and that gives me an idea. And I say, hey, why not combine the two so you got a fax machine Kleenex dispenser? Is it a Kleenex dispenser that thinks it's a fax machine? Or a fax machine that thinks it's a Kleenex dispenser? Hey, wait a minute! Well, thanks, Linus. Send it on up. I just talked to Dr. Linus Pauling, and he's sending up the cure for the common cold. Wow. Oh, you can hear it working. Breakthrough. Oh, 
It's in. <gasps> hey, the cure for the common cold is so... <laughs> Ugh. Sorry, sirs. Gesundheit, Snotlocker. Well, your pain will be complete after viewing today's experiment. Another in a series of mind-poppingly bad Gamera films. Today, Gamera's opponent is... Oh, like it matters. Chew each bite 32 times, booby. <laughs> hey, he's a peeker. Okay, I'm feeling really artsy craftsy today, kind of Captain Kangaroony and a little Ray Rainerish and Foxfire thrown in just for good measure. Anyway, I'm going to teach you today how to make today's star of the film, Gauss. And he's going to look just like this when we're finished. Uh, I guess but I'm what more of a Heck right? Ramsey yeah. fan, uh, no. but that's no. just me. And I, I know you're a big Snoop Sisters fan. Oh, no, actually, I've always loved Banachek. Yeah. Oh, call it a oh, guilty yeah, pleasure. But hey, <laughs> hey, do you guys mind? Oh, not at all, Joel. Toss in. No, but let me guess. You're a Macmillan and Wife fan, aren't yep. you? No, you guys are getting <laughs> in the way of my kind of my arts and crafts project. Oh, well, Joel, you just go on with your little craftsy, waftsy, holly hobby corner, and never mind us chickens. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, what you're going to need everyone is some scissors with the rounded edge use smaller ones also paste I'm using mucilage though today because I'm an adult and you're not and then we'll need an 8x8 eight eight, perfectly square piece of paper I'm using one that's a little bigger for clarity and right? you're also going to need some powdered rhino horn yeah and some blood that from the murders gibbet sweat right but uh, ask your mom first don't yeah. <laughs> uh, good one. anyway yeah. what you do is you just take the four corners and you fold them in just like that. It's simple. Good, yeah. Oh, okay. now while he's doing that, you might want to run down to the public library and cut out some interesting pictures from the encyclopedia to paste on your project. Yeah, and in case you're interested, mucilage tastes just like sweet honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys, mm. please do not, I repeat, do not go down to the public library and do not cut pictures out of the encyclopedia and do not drink mucilage for it does not taste like sweet honey from one who knows. Okay, then you take... The f you turn the whole thing over. See, I've turned it over. Well, if you, you get confused at home, just draw a little diagram on your bedroom wall and permanent marker. <laughs> do not, I repeat, do not draw on your bedroom wall. You put the four edges in like this. You, you whip doing? your fingers you in doing? there like this, you and you've got... You Gow, see? Check it out. They're and similar. if it doesn't look like that, you're a loser and a failure, and you'll never amount to anything, and you can't do a thing no. to change that. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> good, huh? yep. yeah, Tom, <laughs> Tom, can I tell you something? Huh? You got a time out coming, buddy. Oh, no, Come on, Joel, let's go. Please. You're coming with kidding. me. Let's go. Come on. Me, so I know better. I'm sorry. Uh oh, uh, commercial sign. Joel? Joel? Yeah. Uh, it's a uh, commercial sign. Should I get it? Yeah. Okay. Hey, kids. Uh, the word for today is booger. Yeah, that's right. Booger. Booger, 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 booger. Wow! Okay, yeah. now listen, Tom. Uh -huh. This is yeah. the Deus Ex Machina, uh -huh. which is the uh, God Machine, okay? okay? In case we can't think of anything way yeah. to end the play, yeah. I'm going to lower you down, okay? It's okay. kind of a big production ending, all Roger. right? Roger. No, all I right. can't get into this, Joel. Ich bin ein Monster? What's that supposed all to right. mean? All right, I just need you to fake it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, let's have those footlights, Cambot. Um, Welcome to our production, which is a combination of the Gotterdammerung and Gamera versus Gaos. We call it the Gamera Dammerung. Okay? Okay, Spuds, let's really get working now. Here we go. Mein, mein lieber Schatz, der Turtle! Oh, no, Up, boy, up. Come on, boy. Come on, up. That's through the hoop. Come on, boy, up. Yeah, his name used to be Lightning. That's <laughs> it. Come on, you miserable son of a... Come on. Well, uh, well, that's what it looks like after he jumps through the hoop. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Hey, Ed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's keep it going for Tom Servo and Gromit, the Wonder Dog. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to have them back really, really soon. A fine, fine performance by those two youngsters. And now, before we bring out our next guest, uh, I'd like to say hello to a very, very special lady here in the audience tonight. Where is she? Oh, there she is. 
Thank you, dear. Thank you. Thank you. Gypsy's in town this week taking over for Pat Carroll in Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein, Gertrude Stein. But now, right here in our satellite, a bright young juggler and magician, let's have a big round of applause for Gaius the Great. For the Thank youngsters, you. Thank you. we have to cut away now for the youngsters' commercial sign. You guys are worse than Ellen and Rossi. Thank you. Oh, boy, oh, man, Joel. That was about the lamest attempt to get rid of a monster I have ever seen. Yeah, come on. A fountain of blood and a turntable? Sheesh. Uh, well, you know what? You guys should uh, snap on your right side of your brains, come up with some ideas oh. for how to off gouge. Oh, 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 I got a good one. You could wait till he goes to the bank and then write, I have a gun, give me all your mm -hmm. money, on his deposit slip. Yeah, yeah or, mm -hmm. I know, okay, you uh -huh. ask him to come over, maybe for, uh, I don't know, tea or something, then you go Go into the refrigerator and get out an icicle and you off them. You stab them, then the evidence melts. Cool, cool. Oh, I got a great one. How oh, about? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I uh, know. Uh, you could um, uh, chop his head off. Uh huh. Well, where were we? Oh, 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 here we go. You could give him a cup of gasoline, tell him it's cider, of course. <laughs> then you make him eat a wintergreen lifesaver, because everybody knows when you bite them, they spark. Then the spark will set off the gasoline and they'll blow up. Yeah. Boom! Excellent. Okay. I got an idea. You invite Giles to vacation with you in the Bahamas, and after a leisurely um, lunch, mm -hmm. you invite him to come out deep sea fishing, and it's your treat because that scuba gear is uh, expensive. Scuba diving. And then yeah. you cut his hole. Ah, ah, pretend his head is a railroad spike and drive it into the ground. <laughs> Bam! With a big hammer. Yeah. Where were we? Oh, okay, okay, you could get him a job in a liquor store in a bad part of hey, town. Hey, you got a better idea? You could, uh, if you think so, send it to Ways to Snuff Gales, oh, oh, oh. care to of MST 3000 Alex. Information oh, Club, P.O. Box 5325, oh, Hopkins, right. Minnesota, 55343. Oh, and then you could beat him to death with a pork chop and feed it to the police. And that's oh. pretty good. Yeah. That's not half bad. And she's giving it back to you. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, sirs? Well, I, I think you could take a pair of needle-nose pliers and jam them up into his nose and twist his septum until... Uh, well, until next time, Jolera, um, push the button, Frank. I hope Joel picks mine. I've developed a plan using mucilage of sweet honey. Oh. <laughs> and I've also come up with a thing for 86 and you, Doctor. Oh, well, Frank, that shows great initiative, 86. Would you just push the button? <laughs> Come on, you two, quit clowning around. Get out here, it's time to do our chores. Never. We are not allowed to fraternize with the human. <laughs> oh, hi everybody, my name's Joe. Welcome to the Satellite of Love, and my two robots, Tom and Crow, are currently hiding out from me in their super secret chocolate fudgy cardboard bat cave. Oh. <laughs> you guys, uh, this is your creator speaking, and I would like you to come out and start cleaning the load pan bay, if that's not too much to ask. Ah, sorry. Mr. Crow and Mr. Servo are not in right now. Nope. I could get you a copy of their manifesto, which clearly states, no, be jumpsuited humans are allowed on the premises. I Thank happen you. to have a manifesto here, Crow, that states, you guys better get your little metal hinders out here, or uh, there's going to be some real trouble. Ooh, <laughs> so be it, Joel. But we'll have you know that we are Neo-Luddites who have abandoned the wicked ways of your filthy technology. Yeah, we even hate ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> anarchy, oh, anarchy, oh, anarchy. Oh, guys, you listen, you better get out of here by commercial sign, or there's just going to be real trouble. That's all I can say. Uh, commercial, commercial sign in, in five, four, four three, three, two. two. Oh, commercial oh, sign now. We'll be right back. Oh, 
No, 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 no. We can't come out, Joel, because this is a very controlled sensory deprivation experiment, and it'll ruin everything. I'm, uh, oh, I'm like John Travolta in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. I pick up every little virus that comes along. Yeah. There I go. Ooh. Ouch. Magic call. Those bots are wild. He should really discipline them more. I mean, they're cute and everything now, but once they get older, you won't be able to control them. <laughs> Sad, really. Frank? Yes, your kinchiness? Does it hurt much? Well, Gooper, as you discipline your little no-neck monsters, I'll be casually blowing you out of the water once again with this week's invention exchange. Everyone knows that plants love music, but no one has taken advantage of their vast knowledge of it. Frank? Oh, <laughs> yes, that's why we slave bleak horrible hours in our stifling lab, our naughty, gnarled hands doing black, unspeakable things, twisting God's work into our own hellish, slithering, mutatious thing. Until we came up with this. A plant that reviews music. Why don't you start the tape, Frank? I'll start the tape. Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata, number 21, opus 53, is a prime example of a musical genius at the top of his form and maturity. The strong, sonorous chords in the first movement, the swiftly changing modulations, speed fluidly towards an exhilaratingly powerful climax of restated theme. I thought it had no texture. Bugger off. Well, Joel. You know, uh, that one didn't seem very scary for you guys. Anyway, my invention exchange this week is based on the premise that tattoos are far too permanent. I'll set the stage for you. Let's see. Port of Call, Philippine Islands. You meet a really nice girl, and you have a couple of friendly shots, and you split the fire dog platter, but tomorrow morning, when you're on your way to Subic Bay, all you've got is a bellyache and a tattoo that says Mingo. Yeah, but with this new non-permanent tattoo, you just peel up the sheet and start your life over again the right way. You see, the problem is that people get tattoos when they're drunk, and they end up with irrational slogans. With this tattoo, you can erase those and write sensible things like grocery lists or your girlfriend's birthday. What do you think, sirs? Mm -hmm. Does what hurt? Your experiment today, Joel, is probably the only film about a giant mutated guy that doesn't star Ted Cassidy or Richard Keel. It's the amazing Colossal Man. Put the hurt on him, Frank. Live to serve you. Oh, Joel's getting ready to teach us one of those important lessons that's to be learned from today's, today's experiments. Hi, guys. Just, I, 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 oh, 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 hi. That jig's up. Hi. It's, hi. It's, it's, what do you want? What's the matter, you guys? You act like you don't want to hang out with me. I got a really great activity no. planned for you oh, today. Cool, great. You know, we yeah. kind of doubted that you did there. I understand. Mm. It sometimes happens. But you're really going to love this. I found a way to derive a really important lesson from today's film oh, and the experiment. No. So, right. check it out. Camba, let's roll this footage. You remember this sequence? Uh -huh. Brought him out yet? Huh. They don't hold much hope for him. It's quite a mess when they got to him. Couldn't even find the plane or the pilot he was trying to save. Yeah. Huh. Neat. So? Well, what? What? you see, we can see clearly that this is no way to act around the spouse of a horribly disfigured nuclear accident oh, victim. Right. Now, when okay. we get back to right. Earth, I don't want you guys making the same mistake. No. So, what are some nice things we could say to this man's spouse to make her feel better? Uh, I'd say uh, something caring and sensitive, like, uh, I understand his face looks like a hot dish at a Lutheran potluck dinner. No, <laughs> that's, 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 that. no, that's well, you know, not no, what no. I'm talking about. Uh, okay, Tom, well, go well, ahead. I'd comfort her by saying, Dear, you know, the scuttlebutt around the hospital is that now he's called the Amazing Jelly Man. <laughs> no, <laughs> really come on, this is a hospital, uh, you guys. Oh, of course. Right, it right, right. Uh, then I'd say something medical, like uh, seeing him up close and in person gives me a better understanding of how the muscle groups work. He'll sure come off the bone easy oh, now. Oh, great. Oh, oh, like that's ribs, it. You know? Okay, okay, okay. Mm, I'm sorry right. I brought it up. I thought maybe you guys could have an aptitude for this kind of thing, learning oh, human on. sensitivity, mean, and I'm no, sorry. No, I better just look, take look, this Joel, and go. Joel, 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 we're very sensitive to your yeah. feelings, and you're in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, think of it. You're stranded in space. You'll never see your family again. And yeah. when the orbit 
orbit on the satellite decays, you'll be burnt to a crisp. But yeah. you never hear us talking about that when you're around. Well, that's right. We're sensitive to the reality oh, of your situation sensitive. here. Yes. Now, for instance, we know your hair only looks like that because there's no barber on the ship, right? Yeah, mm. and even though your feet smell like cheese, we prefer to think they smell like good cheese. That's right, and we know that if you had breath mints, you'd use them. Yeah, it's not yeah. like you choose to leave a pheromone trail around when you walk and... So you see, Joel, buddy, we are sensitive. Very Aren't sensitive. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. You're very sensitive. Well, so are you. You're oh. equally sensitive to me. You cried earlier. Called. What was that about? What kind of sin could a man commit in a single lifetime to bring this upon himself? Ah! Oh. 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 No! Uh, Joel? Joel? Uh, won't you talk to us? Oh, go away. Ah, oh, I'm huge. Oh. We, we'd like to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Yeah. What do you mean, how do I feel? I feel huge. I'm a 50-foot man. Oh, oh no. Uh, uh, do you think you're having delusions of grandeur? Oh, he's a colossal man. Of course he's having delusions. Oh, ask uh, him another question. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 who's your favorite monkey? What? Oh, here, let me. Oh, um, sorry. How many fish can you name? Yeah, that's a good one. How many fish can I name? What kind of questions are these? I'm a 50 foot tall man. You don't care about me. Go away. Oh, that's oh, not true, Joel. Ooh, no. We're trying to do everything in our power to help you. Yeah. No, this isn't working. I don't think anything can save him. Nah, he's just being difficult because he's a freak. Yeah, let's try plan oh. B, okay? Oh, yeah, plan B. Okay. Uh, Joel, are you still there? Of course I'm still here. I'm immense. I'm huge. Oh, uh, uh, We have someone here who can help you. Go ahead. Um, honey, um, I'm, I'm really still love you, and I'm not going to leave you in this position. Huh, <laughs> condition. Ha, <laughs> Oh, someone's at the door. Uh, hello. Um, hi there, uh, honey. Um, how would you like to go out with a normal man tonight? <laughs> All right, come on. That's it. This is getting too weird, you guys. Forget hey, it. Servo, how'd you get your arm to work? Oh, that's I'll it. See. Every time I try to teach you guys a little something about human nature, you got to twist it around into a, one of your little jokes. Well, listen, uh -huh. you guys can just turn around and sashay those little mo robot metal butts of yours into the theater where you can learn a real something about isolation and loneliness. We're sorry, freak. Say, boys, how big do you think that old colossal man's gonna get, huh? Mm -hmm. Boy, 100 feet, 500 feet, who knows? Sky's the limit, that's what they say in these kind of situations. Yeah, sure would likes to know. Yep. What do you think you'd say to him if you finally got to meet the amazing Colossal Man anyway? Well, one thing's for sure. Wouldn't use any of those dumb old big guy cliches. Right. <laughs> oh, you mean like, uh, how's the weather up there? Right, or where do you get your pants? Right? Or, uh, any more at home like you? <laughs> or, uh, you going out for varsity basketball right. this fall? Yeah. Can you see my house from here? How many times have you heard <laughs> that? Uh -huh. yeah. No, not me, not nope, me. Nope, I'm different nope, nope, that nope. way. I think I'd probably ask him some real thoughtful questions, you know, like, what's your sign, or do you think B. Arthur's funny? Oh, I'd ask him, how do your chromosomes work when they're the size of stepladders? <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask him if it's true that Cher had some ribs removed. Oh, 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 hey, oh, 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 holy buckets, we hit something. Oh, Joe, you dropped your Barbie. Forget oh. Barbie. Give me rocket number nine, pronto. Ow. Damn, I hate that. Wow. Wow. Is, that, is that you, Glenn? No, it's Kate Smith. Who else do you know that could take a satellite in the gut? Jeez, sorry. Hey, what are you standing on, big fella? I don't know, some planet. It's supposed to be good for you. Earth, I think. Yeah, Baltimore. Um, uh, uh... Come on, come I, I, Well, geez, I had a whole bunch of things to ask you, but now that you're here, I'm kind of tongue-tied. I'm not. Hey, say, is it true that Cher had some ribs removed? Shut up, Curl. Mm. Say, what have you been doing since the movie, Glenn? Uh, you know, bit parts, Mr. Clean, Green Giant, that kind of thing. Excuse me for a second. No, I really thought that part in Time Bandits was going to kick it loose for me. I thought that was going to make me. But no. You know I can't even get back in Vegas anymore? Vegas! Blackball. Can't get in. Jeez. Well, you didn't exactly charm the pants off him last time you were in Las Vegas, Glenn. <laughs> mm. You think I'm a freak, don't you? 
Uh oh. Oh, way to go, Servo. Oh, so everybody, hold on to something. That's right, I'm a freak. I look like Peter Garrett, I dress like Cebu, for God's sake, and I eat livestock by the handfuls. I bet you just want to run home and tell all your buddies about the half-naked circus freak, don't you, Sergeant? That's right, everybody take a big, steamy gawk at the circus freak. <laughs> oh, my heart. I've got to go. Boy, safe again. I don't Boy, get it. All those aliens, we should be dead ten times over. Wow. Yeah, you know, I gotta remind myself to write down some questions next time. Man, oh man, that was uh, one humdinger of a doozy of a loser it was. Yeah. Oh. It's like if I was that immense, I'd at least have a little more fun with it. Uh, like, why couldn't the giant have picked up a city bus and used it like a harmonica or something? Right. Well, you know, you can grow to be 50 feet tall and still retain your sense of humor. Right. Others have. You know, personally, I would like to have seen him do more with the Vegas Strip. Well, I'm just blue skying right now, but wouldn't it have been nifty if he would have just put on that big shoe from the Silver uh. Slipper, done a little Elton John impression, maybe used the Landmark, Landmark Hotel as a Maraca, I don't know. Gypsy? Hmm? I would have taken my head and made a hat. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah. Uh, so, a hat. Well, yeah. Um, well, he could have become really good friends with Claus Oldenburg or something like that. Oh, or he could have used the St. Louis Arch as sort of a makeshift chin-up bar. Or use the 50-foot woman as a girlfriend. How about using the Mitchell Corn Palace as a munchy, crunchy treat? Or use an Alice Chalmer thrashing machine as an epilady. Or he could fashion the Houston Astrodome into a chapeau and stage a hat party with his being the grandest of all. <laughs> I think we're getting a little too silly. Oh, oh I know. He could uh, use the Transamerica building as a good place to fill his insurance needs. Oh, what a little kiss-up. Am not. R2. Okay. You guys, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. We got some letters here to read, okay? This first one's real neat. It says, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Let's put this up on the still store there, Canva. Okay, but this says, Mystery Science Theater 3000 is the greatest show ever. Oh, that's an excellent start. Yep. I am a devoted fan, and I watch you every weekend. My only problem is that as each show nears its close, I feel the tears began to well in my eyes. Couldn't you maybe make the show longer? I think we could do that, guys. Sure. You want to try it? Okay. <clears throat> there. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. And the really cool drawing. Put that. You see that? Isn't that neat, you guys? Hey, wow. We look like we're in a Curious George book. Cool. Uh -huh. Oh, shall we put the, the address up on the screen, Joel? Yep, please do that. Send That'd be your great. to the Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club, Post Office Box 305325, Hopkins, Minnesota 55343. Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> Give it a shot. Um, what do you think, sirs? Look, if I want my opinion, I'll beat it out of me. I'll push the button, Frank. I've got a tennis game later with the Chirping Hill Beast. You know, I think if I were the Amazing Colossal Man, I'd throw a pyramid party with mine being the... Don't even think about it, Frank. No! 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 Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. You've caught us in the middle of one of Joel's uh, life simulation exercises. Joel's pretending to be a dairy farmer from southern Wisconsin. Help us! Whoa. Whoa, what happened to you? Well, anyway, hi there, folks. You know, I'd been having trouble with Velvet Leaf, uh, Cutworm, and uh, Foxtail, and, well, that's when the representative from Monsanto came out to my farm. He recommended a pre-emergent Inferal mixture of Lors band with atrazine in a tank mix, and I told him to get off my land. Here, chicken, chicken. Have your choice done by commercial schedule, which is in 15 seconds. Yes, sir. Oh, yep. Real life simulation? Call this what you may. The fact is, Joel's dressing up robots as farm animals. Come on, it's milking time. Come on. Four, Come three, on. two. Come on. Three, yep, just as I thought. These hens just aren't producing. I'm going to have to spray y'all with insecticide. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah, it really works. You can cut off a chicken's head and it'll still run all over the place. Another fun thing to do on the farm is cow tipping. <laughs> Gee, there's a lot of time to kill on a farm, isn't there? Yeah. yeah would you mind reuniting my head with my body, please, Joel Bob? 
who said that? Old Joel Robinson had a farm? Yeah, I don't think so. Well, never before has the term booby been more appropriate. Why don't you tell him about the invention exchange, Frank? Well, when you're an on-the-go kind of a guy like myself, sometimes you need ear drops, sometimes you need eye drops, sometimes you need nose drops, sometimes you need throat drops. Sometimes when you touch, the honesty is too much. I want oh, to hold you shut till I cry up, till we Frank. Leave. Look, carrying all those medications around, granted, is an inconvenience. That's why I say, combine them. That's why we invented the Orbital Auto Rhino Laryngological Dropper. Very conveniently combines all the ear, nose, and throat medications you need into a convenient package. What do you think, farm boy? Well, this is perfect because after your invention makes people feel better, they can enjoy their good health by going to the park and enjoying this new invention. It's called the musical chair. Cool. Right. You get it? Okay. Oh. Ah. Scrappy. Yeah, what better way to sit in with your favorite musicians? <laughs> hey, sit in with the, because it's a chair. And, uh, what do you think, to... sir? Uh, I thought it had no texture. Say, what's the ladder for? Well, Frank, we've got a very special guest today to tell Joel and the boss about today's experiment. It's someone we all know and love. I think you're going to be excited. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jack Perkins. Jack Perkins, wow! Hello. Today's experiment is called Fugitive Alien, a wonderful film from Japan, not to be confused with The Fugitive, the classic television series which can be seen weekdays right here on A&E. This is actually a strung together series of Japanese shows which when put together in this way make for what I think is some of the best TV has to offer. Thanks, Jack. Now then we... Joyce Carol Oates will be out to read from her wondrous new work of fiction, her first novel in well over a month. Then. Peter, Paul, and Mary will be out to give us a wondrous rendition from one of their songs off their scintillating new album. Then Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy will be out to tell us some poignant stories of the joys and sorrows of being really, really horribly old. And then Topol will be out. Oh, we got movie side! Who's Jack Perkins? <laughs> What are you two yard monkeys doing now? Uh, well, uh, seeing the uh, stupid Wolf Raider hair helmets in the experiment reminded me of all this stuff from the last hat party we had. Hey, put that one on. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't want I'd feel silly. I remember that one. That one was the grandest of all. Yeah, yeah, I, I thought we could take some of these and have fun with them and maybe make up even more stupider hats, you know, for the next party. Oh, say, put that one on me. I got okay. an idea here. Okay. Now, you see, this is a helmet for astronauts who are losing their hair, you see, with the ball and combing it over. Uh, yeah. Okay, all, all right, I'm into it now. Look at this one. Okay, this ah. goes back to 1981. I'm a punk from space, get it? Ooh. I am a nanarchist. Get it? Oh, that's cool. Hey, this big one over here, put this one on okay. me, Joel. No, I got, I got it, I got it. This is what Patty LaBelle would look like on the space shuttle. Wow! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Oh, oh, try wow. the other one there. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, oh, way down oh, there. Oh, oh, watch the hand. Sorry, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. wow, look at it. It's the Ted Koppel satellite of hair. Or, 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 or you can you can pull down that curl in front and it would look just like Frank's hair helmet. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I think those things are wonderful. Oh. <laughs> Push the button, Frank. Ah, <laughs> burn. Dr. F, you better come have a look at this. Joel and the bots are making fun of my hair. My hair! Now, Frank, let them have their little fun. The experiment's not quite over, and they'll soon live to regret it. <laughs> no, oh, rich. Oh, wait, hey, guys, look at this one, hey. Huh? Ah, no. oh, uh, this one looks like Dr. Forrester if his head got sucked into the vacuum of space through a keyhole. No. <laughs> now, you cut that out. Remember what I said about hat parties. You get your little hinders back into that theater, and, and you watch the film. I'm not amused by your antics in the least. I thought it was a sheer delight. I think that's about as grand as a hat party can get. Ah, that was about as painful as a tattle prod to the shoulder could get. Send them commercial, Frank. I'll send them commercial sign. But later on in the program, Linda Ellerby will be out. Okay, now Crow, I want yeah. you to be Ken, and okay. Tom, I want you to be Ken. Joel, I feel ridiculous. I'm dressed like Evil Knievel, only not so tasteful. Yeah, Joel, I, I don't want to cast aspersions on your little play-acting idea. I, 
I don't want to be the dead squirrel under the floorboard of your hunting shack, but this is the stupidest thing you've ever had us do yet. Come on. Yeah, Joel, you've been nipping at the tester's glue or yeah. what here? Come on, Crying I just on. thought it would be fun to play the handsome captain of a spaceship, okay? It's a lark, a spree. Run with me on this one. I promise I'll never make you do it again. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I'll give it a week. I'll have a six foot foam scorpion stinger hanging off my butt. Come on. Yeah, look, let's just get this over with, okay? Just come on, you guys. It'll be a guess. Okay, Cambot, help me out on this one. Okay. Neutral drive off. Engines to full. All right, Ken. No. Cigar, Ken? Yeah. You know, no sense in me returning back home. Uh -huh. What with my wife and child gone. Oh, that's right. They took a laser bolt, didn't they? Too bad. You know, Cigar, Ken? You know, a young fellow, I could use a few of them on my ship. A young fella could do a lot worse than throwing with a lot of back as three. We might even become friends. I don't understand. What did I do to deserve this? We don't deserve half the things we get. <laughs> He's stuck here! Gee, Joel, don't vapor lock on us. It's just a little skit for crying out loud. Well, so I uh, brought the engines to neutral. Yeah, you do exactly as I say, and maybe you'll find out what it means to be a real man rather than just a wolf raider. Yeah, right, and you've got a good chance to end up at the Francis Farmer Motel. Oh, jeez, oh, oh. Joe, get a hold of Nobody yourself. Nobody hits one of my officers. Oh. 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 Joel, doggone it, this film has me bamboozled. Yeah, think about it. We've got this guy who used to wear a wig but doesn't anymore, who's joined up with Captain Gerbil in the Leatherette Squad, and everybody's having more flashbacks than Bruce Dern in the trip. Yeah, so. and now he's held captive by Don Ho and the kid who drinks Tranya, and who's fighting who and why? And why are all these alien transvestites attacking Earth anyway? And what about this Japanese preoccupation with the name Ken? Okay, okay, you guys, take it easy. I knew you were going to have a problem with this movie, but that's what I'm here for, okay? okay. The real problem with this film is it's not really a movie at all. It's just a bunch of Japanese TV shows strung together to look like a movie. So that's what's going on. So it's here. like Bergman's Scenes from a Marriage, then. Exa huh? Yeah. Oh, or uh, Schwartz's uh, Very Brady Christmas. Now just yeah, listen up, you two. You just might learn something. Oh, this, this is the screenplay model developed by Sid Field in his runaway bestseller book, Screenplay. Oh. Here's how it works. Cambot, help me out here. The first act establishes setting and the major characters will get to know. And then the first plot point comes along and sends it all up zigging everywhere and into another direction. So can anybody give me an example of what that would be in today's movie? Uh, oh, um, uh, the credits. No, Crow, come on. Oh, 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 I know, I know. It's when Mephisto and the blonde chick with the, 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 the oh, I'm just grabbing at straws here, Joel. No, everybody, it's when Ken joins Star Force and goes up against his old allies. Uh, which Ken? Oh, the one with the wig, right? Oh. Right. Yeah. Now in Act okay. 2, we reveal the conflict in the film. Does anybody know what that is? Take a leap, Crow. Oh, uh, let's see. It's either the credits or... Uh, 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 well, it's uh, when Ken, in the wig, fights his own inner struggle, uh, which is punctuated with his conflict with the other crew members and his shaky alliance with Captain Cheeky, who drinks a lot, uh, by the way, and oh, that's the subplot. That's <laughs> very good, Crow. Okay, that's Act Two. Okay. Now, given these pieces of the puzzle, does anybody know how Plot Point Two will turn out? Oh, 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 that's easy. Scout sees Atticus Finn shoot the dog in the street, which shows that he has the capacity. Oh no, that's to kill a mockingbird. All I'm right. confused. I'll jump in here. Okay. okay, let's just imagine that the blonde assassin comes in, and and shows her love for Ken, her undying love for Ken, and instead uh -huh. of uh, serving two masters. Yeah. They uh, die in a Harry Carey love pack. What do you think? Now, come on, Joel. This is Sandy Frank, not Kurosawa. Oh, well, out. my guess is that it goes on like the mess it is with uh, no resolution, and we're all left feeling empty and unfulfilled like uh, Fast Binder's tragic heroine, uh, Berlin Alexander Plot. You, my yeah. friend, get a ram chip. Ah. Love you. All right. What do you think, sirs? Uh, well, uh, William Gold, Joel, we, we have a theory. Uh, you know, Toni Morrison best known for her literary tour de force beloved, may well be one of the fastest writers. Ugh. Time up, Frank. Well, this one over here dispatches uh -huh. a special aquatic version of Greenpeace's Rainbow Warriors to go out Ooh. and do battle against the man. Heavy. Rave on, Joel. Hype it up, buddy. Whoa. Right. Well, this one over here, well, heaven forbid the robot that may try to touch this button or even brush against it 
for that robot would become my personal slave. No already. robot can venture too far out of the ship, especially if such a robot were to disguise its true identity from me in the form of feather and where? Well, heaven help Where? that poor robot Where? that may try that. Really? Uh, let me try. Get a whack, <clears throat> okay, girl. here we go. No, no, that would be an abomination oh. to all robots everywhere. Well, what's that other one do? This is, is portion control. Uh, Next question. Oh, okay, how about that one? This no, does any one. number of phantasmagorical and wondrous things, the most benign being that Tommy Jeffries, who lives in Belize and dad works on an oil derrick, gets a tasty pudding snack. What, what a rush. rush. That Joel Robinson is one bad Shut mouth. your mouth. I was talking about Joel. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> anyway, we got a letter here from David A.D. Cordoba. Way to go, kid. Thanks, Mr. Crow. And he <laughs> writes in to answer to the question of what is the cool thing that we oh, did a while yeah. back. Oh. And he writes, let's put this up on Still Store. He writes, Dear Gentlemen and Gypsy, concerning the cool thing, uh, my guess is that you saw a time portal floating in space, taking into account that overall the crew is against imperialism, jingoism, church state is one, fascism, exploitation, racism, in short, all those ideals You're held cool. dear by our world leaders here on Earth, I'd venture to say this time portal showed mankind living in peace. Well, we're sorry, David A. D. Cordoba from Seattle, Washington, but this was the cool thing. Mexican stoplight candy. Oh, what a burn. What do you think, sirs? Now this to me is good TV, being genetically altered on cable television. Ann Dillard will be out to discuss her new book, and then Later on, Topol, that robust star of Fiddler on the Roof, will be out. Frank, why well, are we off the air? Uh, I thought it was time to push the button. Besides, don't you want to get started uh, genetically altering Jack Perkins? Look, we don't go off until I say we go off. Now, run down to the storeroom and get that spare head. I've got a mad posh to give Jack Perkins the head of Vivian Vance. Sorry, Sarge. Ah, uh, Vivian Vance. Ah, 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 ah! And next up in the comedy competition, W.J. Wiedelhofer and Peanut. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, actually, I'm Joel Robinson on the Satellite of Love, but I was just thinking that if I ever get down to Earth, one thing I want to do is go on Star Search and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 10-time comedy winner Geechee Guy. But the only way I can win is by doing some ventriloquism. So I'd like to introduce you to my robot. He's a woozle, and his name is Peanut. Now, say hi to the nice audience, Peanut. Hello to the nice audience, Peanut! Now, come on, quit your clowning. Hey, come on, can't you say any? Look at the nice audience, how well-mannered and nicely dressed they are. Well, I want to go out and get me some chicks! Wow! Oh, come on, I abhor you, please. Don't do that. Cut your clowning. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Uh, can't you say anything friendly to the audience, to this nice audience? Yeah, it certainly is nice to get out of that stinky suitcase. Oh, Doc, come on, Joel. I can't go through with this. It's ridiculous. I feel like Waylon Flowers and Madam. Jeez. Come on, you promise. No. Commercial sign in five seconds. Judge Paloma Picasso gives you a one. From Michael J. Pollard, a one. Gil Gerard gives you a one. And from John Sebastian, a four. Overall score, 1.75. Commercial sign now. And we'll be right back. <laughs> If we would have stuck with it, we could have won. Yeah, well, you try sitting still through that. Well, maybe next time I will. Yeah, and that's pretty good, isn't and it? And she's giving it back to you. Yeah, I'm giving it back to you. Yeah. Right, yeah. Back to you. <laughs> Hello, this is my little buddy, TJ Stinky Muffin. <laughs> but I call him Stinky. <laughs> uh, say hello to the folks, Stinky. Hello, folks. <laughs> That's good. Um, uh, why don't you tell the people what you did today, Stinky? Oh, can it, Sparky? Uh, give me a beer. <laughs> That's well, it. Uh, That's it. Hey. Party's over. Forget uh, it. Forget oh, it. See, you can dish it out, but you can't take yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, the juvenile dance competition. <laughs> I gotta get me a good seat for that one. <laughs> yeah, Eisner twins are calling. You just watch it, T.J. Cinnamon. We're not running a ventriloquist camp around here. That's telling them your putridness. We're just... Tell him about the invention exchange, Frank. 
Well, say, aren't we going to do a short scene for Mannequin first, Your Wretchedness? No, we are not going to do a short... What is with the names, Frank? It's Dr. Forrester. Just oh. Dr. Forrester. Oh, just trying to spice up our sagging relationship, oh, vile one. Could we talk about this later, Frank? Sure, Your Stinkiness. My invention exchange this week, Joel, are these easy-to-make, ready-to-wear Halloween costumes. Just take a piece of stiffened rope, slip it around your neck, and voila! Dead guys. It's perfect for your next necktie party. What do you think, H.R. Finkelhofer? Joel, Joel, come on, Joel. What's Joel, wrong with buddy? Joel, oh, Joel, oh, on, I'm sorry. On. Hi, everybody. This is my invention exchange this week. It's for people who like listening to the sounds of the ocean. You know, sometimes you can get sick of tapes. And this is a portable way. You can hear the ocean wherever you go. What it's got is padded headphones and a line that goes down to this conch shell. I call it the Sony Seaman. Neat. And you know, if you get tired of the sea, you can plug in Handel's water music. Yeah, <laughs> or, or play the old soundtrack from Baywatch episodes. Or Surfside 6. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think, sirs? Well, I think it's almost as lame as ours, skin puppy. Now, Joel, your experiment this week is a film which is probably Roger Corman's finest to date. It's a film called It Conquered the World, and it's really, really, really quite bad. But... First, we're going to start you off with a light-covered romp through hell with a little something called Snow Thrills. Send him the movie, Frank. I'll do it when I get to it. <laughs> what, are your arms broken or something? <laughs> I'll push the button. Oh, no, Frank's dead. Joel is all zoned, and we've got movie side. Joel, oh, Joel, Joel come on, come on. Let's go, we got movie side. Come on, Joel, Joel, come on. It's Hey Ho and a frosty hello from Tom Servo on the go on the snowy set along with the winter sports cavalcade. Jack Frost is on the lamb and hellbent for leather in flaccid Lake Placid as these wily speedsters try to best each other in a festive combination of speed skating and kickboxing. The folks up north call it splating. Watch out for number 13. He's got a roll of quarters in that hockey glove. And uh-oh, down goes another icy splicer. Better luck next time, Junior. Now we skag it up the Skagway for the frozen frolics of the Tundra set where summer fun of oil slick management has given way to frisky ice fishing. But hang on to your mucklucks. These plucky knuckleheads go for the real thing. Yes, tray after tray of the crystalline stuff is yanked from the belly of the muskeg and cracked into highballs for the fashionable Alaskan schnapp-tossing competition. And it's so long to the midnight sun and hi-ho Kokomo as Hoosiers cool their heels with a rousing game of hockey ball. These snowy prairie dogs do it in style. Watch out for that hip check, Roger. Down goes another one. Now up to Minnesota for a game these square hits call. Standing around on a frozen lake till your blood begins to flow like Mr. Misty through your veins. Quickly now off to the Yodlin Alps for the Austrian chill blane. And by the way, Kurt Waldheim is not a Nazi festival. Austrians everywhere enjoy the sport of sheing, as they call it. But we know it better as playing ping pong or badminton with a Barbie doll frozen in a block of ice. Our frigid little Fräulein never looked better in her frozen frock as our men Schultz paddles her fanny with ball after ball, hoping for that elusive double clamor frons with a hey-ho, whoop we go, Heidi, hike up your knickers in a forehand smash. Now it's spit spat to the Kattegat, where dangerous Danes camp it up with wacky cat snapping. That's right, folks, tease them, freeze them, and snap them in half. Take these freezy pop felines down to absolute zero, and they crack like Turkish taffy. Then melt them in your mouth till the nuts pop through. And what's a day in Copenhagen without a bowl of blonde and a traditional whack at the traditional crow beating? Yes, these daffy Danes. Oh, well, Joe, you're really not supposed to hit him. It's just, you know, it's a long uh, uh, script there. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, well, uh, finally, it's a short, long boat spin up to the Gulf of Bothnia, where frisky Finns and savvy Suomi take on the dangerous sport of frozen pole Frenching. Kids, do not try this at home. There, yes, there's a sick sort of thrill you get from watching Lars and his limber liquor race against the clock for a new endurance record, and watch the fun as three inches of taste buds peel off like a zipper skin miniola. Join us now as we wave a tearful goodbye to the plucky men and robots of the Satellite of Love Winter Cavalcade of Fun. I'm Lowell George. So long for now. Mm, mm. You know, that pie was delicious. Did you bake it yourself? Oh, no, it's just a recipe my grandmother stole from the bakery. Hey, want some more? Only half a gallon. What are you so smug about? You look like a man who just inherited Texas. Well, it may not be too far off. Oh, you know, this coffee tastes like it came out of an oil derrick. What, did you strain it through a mummy? Yeah, the coffee tastes like mud. 
Roger, Mud. No, and the coffee wasn't half as bad as the dinner. Well, I only burn it when you come home drunk. Yeah, so you burn it every night. Oh, don't bring that up again. I have to bring it up. If I hold it in, I'll die. Die! That's what this coffee tastes like. Die! Did you two get enough? You hardly touched your steak. I didn't want to touch it. It scared me. Yeah, talk about steak being tough. I thought they retired man or a stud. Oh, what would you know about being a stud? Well, the meat was better if you put that fuzzy gravy on it. Oh, was that gravy? I thought the dog had been sick. Yeah, I've never seen Spam serve so many ways, especially in the Jell-O. <coughs> You know, halfway through the dinner, my filet got up and beat the hell out of my coffee, and the coffee was too weak to defend itself. Oh, well, it looked like you enjoyed the marinade, or were you just being a pig? Hey, the only thing that's marinated around here is Tom. Oh, next time, why don't you just skip dinner and go straight to passing out on the table? Okay, keep it down, you two. I don't think I can keep anything down if I have to keep looking at that dessert. Yeah, you know, on second thought, forget about the pie. I'd just rather eat the recipe. Oh, why can't we just have a meal like a family just once we got movie stars? <laughs> Jiminy, Joel, I had no idea that Peter Graves is James Arnesis' brother. I mean, just think, for years, James was the biggest cowboy star on TV, while Peter eked out a meager living in cheap B-movies like this one. Ooh. For me, Peter Graves, the 50s were a time of self-loathing, resentment, and bitter recrimination. Cool. We'll explore those years tonight on Any Biography. Uh, wow, being in the same mis business must have been tough for these two Graves brothers. Yeah. I, I mean, the Arnest siblings. I mean, uh, wait a minute. Something is wrong on Saturn 3. Yeah, how can they be brothers? that they don't even have the same last name. Oh, wow. you guys, that <laughs> happened quite often. I mean, it's pretty well uh, known that uh, a lot of famous fi uh, family siblings from Hollywood would uh, take different names. It's uh, kind of a Hollywood tradition. Uh, like who? Well, like Dear Abby and Ann Landers, there's Warren mm. Beatty and mm. Shirley MacLaine, mm. uh, Liza Minnelli and Lorna Loft, and then like Charlie Sheen and Emilio Estevez. Right. Like hey, that. let's not forget uh, Rafferty and the Gold Dust Twins, Freebie yeah. and the Bean, and Choo Choo and the Philly Flash. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. With, you know. Actually, another interesting side note is that a lot of famous Hollywood brothers and sisters went on to take the same name. There's like the Landers oh, Joe, Joe, sisters. Joe, wait a minute. The whole point of this discussion was supposed to be celebrity siblings with different last names. Yeah. Now, there's nothing inherently interesting about brothers and sisters with the same <laughs> last name, for crying out loud. Well, uh, uh, actually, the film's kind of short today, and we need to pad out the experiment. So, oh. you know, right. <laughs> Say, Joel, tell us more about these celebrity siblings yeah. with the same last names. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked, uh, oh. Mr. Tom Servo. Thank you. Please cue up the music, Camba. Music? Oh. And oh, the band played on. There's Jerry, Jerry Lee, and Emmanuel Lewis. Hey. If you don't like it, you can sue us. Wait a minute. There's Susan Morris and Doris Day. Hey, this is a fun game even robots could play. Right. That's right. Well, you can name three, and I can name four. Totally Ditty Roger and Mary Tyler Moore. Betty and Barry White. Yeah, Marvin, cool. Herb, Albert tempo, are tempo, out tempo, of sight. Tempo, tempo. Sonny Bono and Bono Bono are really fun. Julia and Eric Roberts say, hey, Charlie, took my thumb. <laughs> Dame Edith and Linda Evans, either one's a vixen. And don't forget about Mojo and Richard Nixon. No. I told you guys that naming <laughs> celebrity siblings was going to be a gas. <laughs> yeah, Rafferty and the Goldust twin, Freebie and the Bean and Choo Choo and the Philly Flash. Did it again, Joel. Ruined everything. Uh, oh. with, you know, with the thing and the Why song must you take the... everything that is honest, <sighs> pure, sweet, and wholesome and turn it into some vague Alan Arkin film reference. Why, why, why? The Sorry. Channel 9 Sunday afternoon movie will be back with the Doberman Gang. We learned almost too late that man is a feeling creature. And because of it, the greatest in the universe. And he learned too late for himself that Men have to find their own way to make their own mistakes. There can't be any gift of perfection from outside themselves. And when men seek such perfection, they find only death, fire, loss, disillusion. In the end of everything that's gone forward, men have always sought an end to toil and misery. It can't be given, it has to be achieved. There is hope, but it has to come from inside.
Mm -hmm. The man himself. Anyway, well, we got some letters. Who wants to? Who wants to do what? Oh, here's one. Okay. Well, that's Crow. It's Crow's this is Crow. Oh, Let's can put I read that, that up one? on Still Story. Yep. Okay. This um, one here. I'll hold it. Uh, okay. Um, on behalf of Total Credit Management Inc., I would like to thank you and all your crew of MST3K for helping my company to increase its work output, Why? thus increasing our prof. Prop Profitability. Bit, uh, thing, okay. Oh. Then uh, it goes, uh, every Friday morning we tape MST 3000 from Comedy Central, and then in the afternoon we close down shop a bit early and gather the employees into the ca cafeteria. Cafeteria. Uh, cafeteria. 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 For an afternoon viewing. Cool. Hey. Right. So they really like the show. Well, they shut down their business. Glad oh. we could be a capitalist wow. tool. Thank you. And, and, the car and that's for uh, at viewing. the car carpeteria? Uh, that's a good, reputable uh, company. I think so. Okay, oh, cool. and now Tom has this set. Let's put this up on oh, still Oh, I saw this. Now, this here. is a picture. Of, you know, there's a, a drawing and a letter for each one of us. Yeah. Okay, oh. the first one says, Dear Joel, if Crow teases you, you can switch him on and off until he apologizes, or you can take him apart. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I, no, well, no, oh. it doesn't work that oh, way. I like this. I like your comments. You look very sleepy when you talk. Now, why is that, Joel? Hmm? I don't know, because I don't know, because uh, oh, no, it's my no, nature. Put up that picture okay. of Crow. Let's see that picture of Crow. Isn't that a Crow? Hey, pretty good, good huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here that is. That okay, uh, dear Crow, you make the funniest jokes. I wish you would, hey, I wish you would quit teasing Tom Servo. Well, no. I'm with you right there. <laughs> yeah, Did you get the name me. Crow from your beak? Ooh, what a burn. Ooh. Ouch. Ooh. Ooh. That's uh, Evan Anderson. You want to do the next one? This one's Tom. Evan? Yeah, these are all from Evan, as a matter yeah. of fact. Hey, oh, that's go, a Ev. good picture of me, isn't it? Yep. Oh, I like this. Dear Tom Servo, I think your jokes are funny. Thank you, so do I. Wow. I like it when you dance. Teach me some of those steps because I need them. <laughs> your friend Evan Anderson. Okay. How about nice. just a little dink, a dink a do? How's that, Evan? Okay, try that out on your mom. And uh, <coughs> and you can only do Tom Servo's steps if you have a hover skirt like he That's does. True. So you miss out if you don't. Oh, and look this a, is gypsy a gypsy there. there. Hey, and let's girl. Oh. Okay. Now, likeness. It says, Evan says, Sir Gypsy, dear Gypsy, why don't you spend more time with Crow, Tom Servo, and Joel so you can get to know them better? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was funny when you ate the demon dog. Yeah, wow, that's a long time ago. That's nostalgic, well, isn't it? Well, we have to explain why Gypsy's off and gone is because she runs the higher functions of the ship, and that's why she's only around sometimes at the end when it's an easier time to run everything. But this one is for Gypsy to read. Oh. This is this from Albert good. Chang. <laughs> hey, let's go play some chess while she's around. Put still store, Eat and some. here's the letter. And here you go, Gypsy. You can read this one, okay? Can you see that? This would be good. Joel, Crow, and Tom Servo. Sir Tom Servo. Servo. <clears throat> I really lick your funny show. Like, like. No, it, says, like. it actually oh. says lick there. I think what? that's uh, Albert made a t typo there. Oh, okay. I'm embarrassed. Sorry, Gypsy. I'm sorry. sorry. I really lick your funny show. Hey, but he does, too. But those evil... Poseidon. Poseidon. Scientist. Scientist. No, that's the way it's spelled. Poseidon. Poseidon. Oh, crying out loud. Scare me so. <laughs> I wish they'd go to. I know. No. <laughs> that <laughs> kid needs a little phonetic trouble, man. Oh, oh, yes, yes. My favorite robot is the beautiful and glamorous Gypsy. Oh, Yay! Oh, that really hey, that's that's great. Great. Good job. Hey, how was it, sir? What do you think? Because of it, the greatest in the universe. He learned too late for himself. Men have to find their own way and make their own mistakes. There can't be any gift of perfection from outside ourselves. And when men seek such perfection, they find only death, fire, loss, disillusionment. In the end of everything that's gone forward, Men have always sought an end of toil and misery. If it can't be given, it has to be achieved. There is hope. But it has to come from inside. The man himself. Almost 
too late that man is a feeling creature. And because of it, the greatest in the universe. And he learned too late for himself that men have to find their own way to make their own mistakes. There can't be any gift of perfection from outside ourselves. And when men seek such perfection, they find only death, fire, loss, disillusionment, and the end of everything that's gone forward. Men have always sought an end of toil and misery. And it can't be given, it has to be achieved. There is hope, but it has to come from inside, from man himself. Cheese, it blocks me up like you would. Oh, <clears throat> uh, hi there. Uh, Crow T Robot here with uh, Tom Servo on the hi. Satellite of Love. And we're about to enjoy our lunches our moms or dads made for us. Joe's mm -hmm. down in the galley because Gypsy's on the hot lunch program, so he's making her a sloppy Joe and tater tots. Mm. Commercial sign in 30 seconds. Recess is at 1 o'clock. And Servo's trying to palm off his crummy bologna and cheese on white bread for my chicken leg. Nothing doing, Tommy. Okay, forget the sandwich. What else you got in there? Uh, let's see. Uh, peanut butter and gamey force meat. Uh, oh. Half an apple. Bag of barbecue ram chips. And, uh, oh, one of those jock shakes. Hey, whole stick of butter in every can. Oh, no, 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 I can't have that. My dad says I'm too husky, so I've got one of those, uh, ugh, one of those fat-free, creamy snack loads. Yuck. Yeah. It tastes like a chocolate-covered urinal cake. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Hey, uh, what's that piece of paper? What? No, nothing. Oh, hey, come on, it's a note from your mom, right? Oh, maybe. Hey, what's it say? What's it say? Okay, okay, it says I love you. Oh. You make me so proud, okay? Are you satisfied? <laughs> oh, commercial <laughs> sign in five, four, three, two. Commercial <laughs> sign now. Servo, you don't have a mother. What the? <laughs> Oh, I thought oh, I told oh, you guys that oh, if you're gonna play school lunch, don't use real food. Yeah, and you know that you shouldn't be eating cheese. It blocks you up in the worst oh, way. But Joel, it wasn't real cheese. It was American cheese. I yeah. thought it'd be okay. Oh, oh, great. Now the evil overlords are calling. So, packing your little pearls with food additives, eh, Booby? Well, we'll start the invention exchange rolling with Frank. You know what the is? Would you stop clogging your colon with food and go and get today's invention? Yes, now? No problem. And wipe your hands. If I see a smudge, I will have you destroyed. Well, inchworm, I, I have to gloat. <laughs> We've been commissioned by Psychology Today to come up with a design for a new centerfold. Uh, thank you, Frank. And uh, Frank and I have developed a sort of racy Rorschach to appeal to the Hannibal Lecter set. Yep, feast your eyes on this. Say. Who's the new girl? Hubba, hubba. <laughs> and it even has uh, biographical information on the back. Look, turn on group therapy and big pecs. Uh, turn off smoking, codependence, fat, greasy Jungians who sweat. Well, take a look at this one, Frank. I think you'll be impressed. I know the staples ruin the effect. Mother. Mother! Mother! Oh, my God! Mother! Frank, she's mother. hot. My mother's a saint! Well, top that, sugar britches. Sugar britches? Uh, you know, sweet pants. Honey drawers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, anyway, this is my invention exchange. It's based on the idea that when people go camping, they really need to bring all their garbage out yep. of the forest and keep yeah. the planet clean and stuff like yeah. that. Uh -huh. Anyway, it's based on the old premise of the collapsing cup, and it carries a whole weekend's worth of filth. Check it out. See? Hey, that's cool. Remember, take only pictures and leave only footprints. Yeah, give a hoot. Yeah. I'm also working on a porta potty that works on this. Oh. <laughs> what do you think, sirs? You're going to need a collapsible porta potty after you ingest this week's cinematic bolus. It is called Gamma versus Gurion, and it is thoroughly indigestible. Serve it up, Frank. Open wide, Joel. Eat it, boy. Eat it. Oh, that's good lard. Yeah, see, this just. Holy oh, movie! Oh, oh. Let's go, camera! 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 Camera is really neat. Camera is filled with meat. 
We've been eating gamma raw. Shell teeth, eyes, flames, claws, breath, scales, fun. Dr. Forrester is kind of a jerk. And Frank is really dumb, too. We have to take part in these lame experiments. But do we complain? No. No. Yes. Huh? So we hike keep all over the place. And talk of a thousand wonderful days. Everybody now. Gamma is really sweet. He is filled with turtle, turtle meat. meat. Now we, we have commercial signs. Welcome to my world of amusement and childlike wonder. Hey. You think you got problems? Try going through life with a nose like a Makita Saber saw. <laughs> My subject's asleep. Let the magic begin. One, two, three. It's me. Hey, 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 what the? Whoa, 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 oh, Joel, you didn't tell me about this part. Oh, 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 And now my life's work, the resolution to the sawing a robot in half. Oh. Uh, Joel, I uh, got the Maharishi Yogi on line one. Uh, what do you want me to tell Could him? You just oh, you oh. wrecked the reveal. Oh. Hey, we got so more to sign up. Oh. Hi, we the Satellite of Love Wooster Group would like to present this week's pageant, once again based on uh, uh, movie character's weak resemblance to a Hollywood star. There we go. Thank you, Kemba. This week it's child star Richard Burton, who later went on to star as Hamlet at the Old Vic Theater. Yeah, and later in such great films as Bluebeard, Radon Rommel, and The Exorcist 2. I uh, will narrate and Crow will be playing. Crow Robot. What? Uh, Crow T. Robot. That's my stage name. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Crow T. Robot will be playing the part of Richard Burton and Thomas Servo will play Elizabeth Taylor and Lee Majors. I will be playing the role of the sleepy voice narrator. Richard Burton was born with a name that wasn't Richard Burton, but we can't remember what it was into a poor Welsh coal mining family in 1925. I'm Welsh, I'm poor. My name's not Richard Burton yet. Do you hear me? I'm Welsh and poor, and my name is not Richard Burton yet. Richard grew up some and got into acting in high school. And then he lived with this guy named Burton who gave him his name. He particularly liked the poetry of his drunk Welsh countryman, Dylan Thomas. Uh, Richard did a radio version of Thomas's famous adaptation of the Gamera song. Not for the proud man, apart from the raging moon I write. Gamera, Gamera, what dark despised dreams dwell in the sullen weighty bones neath your impenetrable shell. That was good, Crow. Ah, thanks. No, I was, that was really good. I mean, Joel, very moving. Joel, please. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, later, Richard Burton got famous, and they paid him a lot of money to do movies in Hollywood. Did some bad ones and some good ones, and then he met Elizabeth Taylor, and they fell in love, and she dumped Eddie Fisher, but he got over it and became a really famous chess player. Huh? Richard and Liz got what? super famous and became the Tom and Roseanne of their day. Tom Servo and Crow will now do a scene from their most famous collaboration, Who's Afraid of Gamera Turtle? <coughs> Arg! Who said that? Arg! I don't know, Martha. Oh, come on, George, you remember? Who said that? Arg! I don't remember. I said I do not remember, Martha. Oh, I remember. It was Gamera. He walked into the room, lit a cigarette, looked around, and said, Arg! If you say so, Martha. Oh, you laughed your ass off! That's enough, okay. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> All right, later Burton got back to his roots and trod the boards as King Arthur in the smash musical Gamera. His performance was nothing less than mesmerizing, even when he drank two bottles before the matinee. Here are some highlights. Gamera, Gamera, I know it sounds a bit bizarre, but with Gamera, that's how conditions are. I wonder what the king is drinking tonight. I wonder if the king will get stinking. Okay, right. Crow. That's I was totally off script. Did you? Right. Could you tell? I was way off. After the success oh. of Gamera, Burton's life hit a rough spot. Parts dried up, but he didn't. He was drinking more and acting less. A project called Mannequin was discussed, then dropped. Then, just when things were getting desperate, his agent called. They wanted him for a meaty role in the critically acclaimed television smash, The Fall Guy. 
A chance to work with Heather Thomas and Lee Majors? It was too good to be true. Burton's answer was a bleary but resounding yes. Here we recreate a scene from that historical television play. So, what do you say? You want to climb into my 4x4, drive really fast, help me chase down that scumbag who jumped bail? What do you say? I say, let's nail the sucker. Uh, Richard Burton passed away shortly after performing his magnum opus. Thus ends our pageant. We salute you. One, One of, of the, the good, good dead ones. ones. <laughs> Anyway, he got his start getting cigarettes for Agnes DeMille, if you can believe that. But anyway, back to my original story, which was that it seems that Oscar Hammerstein spent two weeks up at his Buck County farm writing the lyrics to Oh, What a Beautiful Morning. And he labored over it, and then he turns it over to Dick Rogers, who sits down and promptly, in 10 minutes, mind you, writes the melody. And I don't have to tell you two gentlemen that American musical theater was never quite the same thing. What a wonderful story. Uh, tell us that uh, story about Cole Porter again. Oh, oh please. Oh, should I? Yeah. Really? Okay, well. Cole Porter, in, uh, during his horse riding accident, while well, he was laying in the middle of the woods with his legs crushed, yelling for help, he decided to write A Long Last Love. Oh, no! That's a true story, but what a lot of people don't know is that the lyrics were altered for its Broadway opening, yes. And the uh, original lyrics went something like this. Very tender. God, I'm in so much pain. Somebody please help me. Somebody come and save me. What an enchanting anecdote. They don't write them like that anymore, do they? Certainly do not. How does the Gamera theme song stack up against songs from yesteryear? Oh, well, it's interesting that you asked that because the opening lyric of uh, the Gamera song has sort of a Rogers and Hart feel to it. Let me show you what I mean. Gamera. Gamera, Gamera is really neat, Gamera is filled with meat, we all love you Gamera. But then the second part is a little more fun, has sort of a George and Ira Gershwin feel to it. Shell teeth, eyes, claws, scales, breath, fun. It sort of sneaks up on you, boo it says. Gamera's enchantment still grows. He fills our hearts with love. Gamera's the latest thing. He fills our hearts with spring, spring, spring. Anytime you want some moonbeams, Gamera is the thing. Gamera is really neat. He is filled with turtle meat. We all love you. Kill him. Yeah. Better yet, I'll kill him. You push the button.
bum bum Hello, and welcome to Inside the Robot Mind. My guest today is the very wonderful, the very lovely, the very luxurious Tom Servo from Mystery Science Theater 3000. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mr. Servo. Hello, Tom. 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 Hello, Tom.
Uh, you know, Marie, Southern accent okay? Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, I, I got a big day coming up. Why don't you give me the Wyatt Earp six-gun wagon wheel skillet scramble galhundra with a side of dookie links and... Well, say, what's the soup today, sweet Marie, my little sock puppet, you? <laughs> <laughs> Why, Ben, you watch yourself, you little cider press, you. <laughs> I don't think you want the soup today. You see, Scabby was mixing up a batch of uranium-235 in the same pot as today's soup, which, by the way, is our California cornucopia vegetable jubilee. Well, that don't make no never mind to me. Bring me a bowl of that, my little corn fritter. <laughs> okay, but it's your funeral. Dun, dun, dun. What? Uh, uh, nothing, nothing. Just go oh. on. Okay. okay. Oh, this is a good part. This is a good part. Okay. Watch okay. Hey, Scabby, I need a Willy Wonka on a skullcap with a side of rat tails. Oh, and give me a bucket of slop. Scabby, Scabby, oh, no, no, dear Lord, no. And then it just goes on like that. Yeah, come on, read them all. Oh, okay. Oh, no, 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 oh, my heavens, no, no, oh, God, oh, poor G, oh, my dear heavens, no, 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 no. C come on, come on, read them all. There's six pages of no's here, Crow. Well, you think that's enough to convey the raw terror she must feel as a giant ball of California cornucopia vegetable jubilee slithers towards her on all fours? It's hellish maw wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. All Opening fours? On all soup on all fours? Of course. What do you think? Soup is a biped? Well, look, Crow, you know, although I thought that Sweet Marie was your most richly drawn female character yeah. yet, mm -hmm. I felt there were flaws in her motivation as she moved through the plot. Oh, you think so? Yeah, and, and, and what day was this, anyway? Uh, well, my backstory says Monday. Yeah, well, you know, it would never These two. Cold they cold can cold have cold more cold fun cold alone cold than cold anybody cold else cold I cold know. Cold Enjoy. Cold we are Spidor. Oh, this is going to be really cool. On the count of four. Let's wail. One, <laughs> two, three, four. <laughs> All right, let's rock this mother. Oh, ho, ho, Come Gypsy. On. This isn't some frivolous, stupid bubblegum music we're trying to play. This is an ambitious rock opera. Yeah, kind of like what Kiss would play, you know? Yes, yes. Joe, jo, jo, I, I got news for you. Kiss were never cool. Mm -mm. Well... Everybody back at Ashwa when in high school used to love kids. Oh, great. You spent your adolescence with a bunch of geeky losers, and now it's our cross to bear? Nobody calls Ashwa when Jaguars a bunch of geeky losers. Hey. Come on, Joel. We were thinking our rock opera would be more along the lines of 70s progressive rock bands like mm -hmm. Yes, Gentle Giant, King Crimson, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. <laughs> Oh, honey, take it easy. That's okay, honey. Don't ever mention Emerson, Lake, and Palmer around Gypsy. Okay. Take it easy. That's okay. Okay, let's wail, you guys. Spider! We are Spider! One, two, three, four! Oh! oh, oh, oh Kim, I give me rocket number nine! Uh, Hector Alonzo's going on. What's all that racket down there? Well, it's just us. We're getting ready to play our rock opera. You don't have a permit for electronic instruments. I'm sorry. Nobody said anything about that. Hey, who are you anyway, Pops? I'm from the planet Ziphalodian. We oh. provide maintenance and janitorial services for the universe. I'm the uh, custodian of the seventh galaxy. Wow, a custodian from the seventh galaxy who's cool. from the planet Ziphalodian? He's perfect for a rock opera. You oh. have got to be kidding me. A rock opera? Is it Femi like Kiss or is it boring and pretentious like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer? Oh, oh, oh no, 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 Gypsy! Oh, brain salad surgery! Hey, oh, don't blame me, I didn't do it. Don't worry, I'll beam some sawdust over to you. Just let me get it out of my locker, check my keys here. Oh, I gotta go. There's a pep rally on Trail Famagore. I gotta get a good seat. <laughs> Beat it quiet, for God's sake. Keep oh, it down. Great. Now we've gotta clean up Gypsy's mess. Jeez, those high school janitors are always so weird and creepy. Yeah, actually, but you know, we should chip in and buy him something for Christmas, you know? Yeah, actually, that stuff would go really good with our new Spidor yeah, stage whale, set. Whale, whale, whale. Let's whale. Spidor's our go. One, two, three, four. Oh, we got it. See, the big trick is to not get any on the edges. Hey, Joe, what are creeple people? Oh, creeple people are these really wacky, creepy people that use pencils and stuff to make their bodies, and then you bring oh. it to school. Oh. It's pretty neat. Oh, hi, everybody. I was just teaching the bots how to make creepy crawlers. I found my old set, and this batch is just about ready to smell. Crow, check it out. Mmm, <laughs> that's good goop. Here, I'll be the judge of that. Let's see, move over. <clears throat> 
Oh, it kind of smells like hot plastisol with traces of calcium zinc, the FDA approved stabilizer. Now, how's this different than, say, Incredible Edibles? Uh, well, Incredible Edibles were the ones you could eat, so, uh, I would probably say they were both non-toxic. Non-toxic? Non yeah, non-toxic was what they call things when, uh, they're toys, but you can eat them and it won't hurt you. There was Crayola crayons and plastic goop and Play-Doh and, uh, just about all of the breakfast cereals now that I think about it. But anyway, the real thing that was dangerous about this toy was the aluminum plates that would heat up into excess of 300 degrees. Well, didn't you little kids back on Earth get burnt? Yeah, I'll say we got burnt. We got burnt all the time. It was just part of what went with the territory when you got to make your own cool plastic toys. We had a saying when I grew up, learn with a creepy crawler maker, burn with a creepy crawler maker. Well, what happened? I mean, why can't kids today play with the thing maker or all the neat accessories here like the creepy crawlers or the fun flowers or the fright factory or the picadoles or the fright men or the mini dragons or the eeks? I'll tell you why, because some little kids wrecked it for everybody. They'd get burnt and go screaming upstairs to their oh. mammies. The moms would call the FDA, the FDA would call a manufacturer, and before you could say it's Mattel, it's swell, the great goop factories of Taiwan were shut down forever. You know, I was just reading something about that the other day. There were lots of really fun toys hauled off the market in oh, the 60s yeah. because kids were careless. I'll hmm. say the Susie Homemaker Oven yep. and the Whammo Air Blaster. Lawn darts. Lawn darts yep, and yep. creepy crawlers and the Verdi Bird, it goes on Back like that. Poor yep. dumb kids, they never even knew. Well, I don't know if we can really blame the kids, Crow. You see, I really think that this society is basically just still crawling out of the slime, or goop, as we should say. I think the real responsibility lies with the toy designer of tomorrow. How's that, Joel? Well, the toy designer of tomorrow's responsibility is to design action-packed, intensely interesting, and affordable toys that are safe, soft, and colorful. Good night. And may God bless. Okay, my little clackety-clack pals, you ready to do your homework? Oh, sister, 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 can I go first, please, please, sister, sister, sister. Oh, okay, Joel, 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 please, please, can I go first? Can I, I hear first? you, buddy. Can I go first? Any, any objections, Crow? Uh, not, not, nothing, nothing. Okay. Uh, go, oh, sure, uh, go, Servo, by all means, take your time. Yeah, yeah, give it a shot, Tom. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. My assignment was to trace the major themes apparent in the films of Helmer Bert I. Gordon. <clears throat> Gordon's films have a number of dominant themes. First, he tends to glue dinosaur spines on poor, unsuspecting iguanas and chameleons, as demonstrated here by the pert and plucky Gypsy. Gypsy? Say, yeah. no. Nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Very good. good. Job, yeah. Nice job. Thank you, Gypsy. Nice idea using the visual. Are you aid. listening to me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Another theme in Mr. Gordon's films is the scientist who creates something, lets it get out of control, and then won't have anything to do with his hideous perversion until it's too late. Gordon also enjoyed using veteran character actor Russ Bender and the lilting music of Albert Glasser. The end. Very good Thank job. You. And Thank you get you. a delicious fleshy ram mm. chip mm. and gypsy mm. for being his assistant. Mm. Okay, Crow, you ready? What? Yeah. Uh, yeah yes. Okay. Um, you want to give it a good. shot? You're uh, on the floor. Uh, uh, okay. Um, my topic was the autobiography of, um, of Bert I. Goran. Bert I. Gordon. Bert I. Gordon. What? Bert I. Gordon with a D. Gordon. <laughs> I said that. Um, okay. Um, uh, hey, shut up, Servo. Um, okay. Um, Bert I. Gordon was born September 24, 1922 in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Not surprisingly, Orson Welles was born in Kenosha only eight years before, which explains the stark similarities between their films. Well, I, huh? Take, for example, the Magnificent Ambersons and its stylistic carbon copy, The Attack of the Puppet People. And, of course, it's no secret that there was a giant spider in the first reel of Attack of the Citizen Kane, the original title of the film, which was shamelessly cut by the studio while Wells vacationed in Malta with his friend, guess who, Bert I. Gordon. <laughs> Compare Touch of Evil with Empire of the Ant. Uh -huh. Compare the trial to a Kafka as Peter Graves in Beginning Sad. of the End. Hey, compare compare, the Stark compare what? Tom what? Servo, who did his lesson, yeah. to Crow, who gets a black spot I on his forehead for not doing his homework and deconstructing homework. the director's guide and making the rest up. <laughs> Now, we got to read a letter here, okay? Oh, can I, can I, can I, can I? I can do it. No, I'll no, it. Tom's going to read it. Okay. Put this up on Still Store. All right. Good. Put it down okay. here. I can... Let's oh, give it a shot. This is cool. Dear MST 3000, my brother and I think your show is very funny. Thank you. We wish your show would last longer. 
Thank you. It's long enough. Oh, look at these pictures here. It says Crow. Sorry I drew you like mm -hmm. Big Bird. <laughs> Tom, sorry I drew you like Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> Joel, I'm sorry I drew you like Ernie. Oh, that's so okay. That's from Nick E. and Alex E. And as a P.S., don't you wish you had some women? Don't you wish we had some women? Mm -hmm. huh. What are those? Well, yeah. Sure. Don't okay. we all? Yeah, anyway. Uh, now it's time to read the address. I can do that. I'll read that. I can do that. And you know who's going to do it is Gypsy. Mm -hmm. Hey, all right, Gypsy. Yeah, you don't have to Come on. Are you kidding me? Put it on the Take screen. it home, Gypsy. Tough luck, bro. Send your letter to... Mm -hmm. Mystery. Mystery. Send your letter to... Mystery. Mystery. Science. Yay! Hey, good, good job, Gypsy. Job. Good job, yeah. girl. Oh, that was really good. What a bunch of kiss-ups. Oh, sorry, Clam Dog. You'll have to excuse me. Frank's eaten all the buttons off the cheese phone, including some of the parts that weren't edible. He's got enough salt and enzymes in him right now to kill a mule deer. Gary mule deer. Uh, Frank, do you think you can hit the console? I've prepared a little injection for you. Frank, you're not on the console! Oh, my God! Oh, jeez! I guess I'm going to need some sawdust now. Oh, God, five seconds to live. Must get personal finances in order. Joel, Joel, thank heavens you made it. Oh, what the heck was that thing we lost, Tom, buddy? Oh, I hate to think of him in there with that, that... Wait a minute, I'm blind, I'm blind, that thing cut me off. Oh. Something uh, is wrong uh, on uh, Saturn 3. Oh, yeah. oh, buddy. Oh, it looks like I got it, man. At least I found Joel. That's that a little right, penny way passed out in all the excitement. Keep oh. telling yourself that, Crow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what do you mean, Tom? You're crying. Crow! What? We're all together again. Crow! I was just with him. No, don't dare you dare do it. Joel. Don't you dare do it. Don't <laughs> it. Oh, God, he's dead. <laughs> Face. Face. Hey, you look great. <laughs> oh, we do have fun, don't we? Yes. Oh, what was that line again, Crow? Oh, uh, you mean, I'm blind, that thing cut me. <laughs> no, 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 that other one, that... Don't you do it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Don't you do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, just second the magic. Oh. Ever let me catch you fooling around like that up there? Well, if I was up there right now, I'd spank your hinder. Well, let's just rage on with the invention exchange, Frank. Tall and proud. Okay. My name is Bond. Frank Bond. Right, and I'm Ursula Andrus. I know. Do I have to do everything around here, Frank? Oh, sorry, boss. It's just that when you're a top secret agent with a license to kill like myself, you always find yourself in scuba gear. But not only that, there's that endless series of formal parties, dances, and dinners that you have to attend. I mean, it's really easy to fit a tuxedo under a wetsuit. But what about footwear? Show the product, Frank. Smile. Introducing the formal flipper. Step out of the ocean and into high society with the formal flipper. Bye, Bass. And what about the ladies? The ladies, uh, pan down, Jerry. Hello, Federal. Oh, could we just get on with your invention exchange, you blinking pinky ring? I want children. You know, Joel, every day, in every way, those guys are getting weirder and weirder. I know, I couldn't agree with you more. Anyway, my invention exchange today is based on the premise that kids just don't like to wear hats in the wintertime. You know, I mean, heads, match your hair down, headbands, make your hair all staticky, and earmuffs just plain look dorky. You know, I remember winter sledding down the back hill, over the creek, under the old bridge, past the Sullivan's big dog trouser, waving to Lois and Sabrina. Ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyway, you two. This is a new invention that will allow kids to look cool and stay warm and avoid all that pure mockery that we all know Say. can harm us well into adulthood. Check it out. They're earmuffs. They look like ears. See what I mean? Okay, oh, here, put them on. Let's me? see how they look. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Hey, I feel like Prince Charles. Yeah, <laughs> and they'll come in a rainbow of colors uh, eventually to match everybody's countenance. Okay, look. Oh, so suddenly I look like Jimmy J.J. J. Walker. Right. 
Yep, and please. they'll mm -hmm. also come in a lot of novelty styles too. Like for next year's big sci-fi Leviathan in um, in Anchorage, Alaska, I've invented these Vulcan earmuffs. Ah, See? Fascinating. Live long and prosper. Not ah. <laughs> Oh, so, Joel, we don't see you wearing any of these dopey earmuffs. Yeah, what's it oh, well, you guys, looks are deceiving. You see, not only am I president of Ear Club for Men, I'm also a customer. Wow. What do you think, sirs? Very nice, Cy Sperling. Tell him about the experiment this week, Frank. This week's experiment is called Jack, Mighty Jack. It's produced by Frank, Sandy Frank. Oh. Push the button, send him the movie, Frank. I gotta get out of these size nines. What? 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 Huh? What? Oh, what? what? We got movie size! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, uh, everybody, uh, you know what to do? Servo? Roger. Uh, Gypsy? Richard! Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, places, everybody, he's coming! <clears throat> Hey, hi, you guys. What you up to? Well, you know, we've been talking about how humans have a need for pets. Like in this film, the evil guy has a pet cat. Yeah, and uh, humans have a lot of programming and commercials directed specifically at pets, so... So we've come up with a little ad campaign based on this movie. Yeah, and we'd like you to be our test market. We'd like your feedback, you being human and all. Pretty much, right? Guys, huh? I got stuff to do. Okay, well, Jeez. I'd love to see what you guys got going. Which uh, okay, okay, give me a second. Uh, okay, here we go. Get uh, Camba, hit that music. New from the makers of Mighty Dog and Hungry Jack comes a taste combination that can't be beat. Introducing Mighty Jack. Hi, I'm Mighty Jack. I make my own gravy. Ha! Hey, hey Joel. Uh, Joel, give me a hand. Pour that water on me. There you go. There we go. Wee! Hoo, 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 hoo. Mighty Jack dog food is high in protein, low in sodium, pure beef, partially hydrogenated, great tasting feed made with a mature member of your family in mind. That's a, that's a mature dog, I mean. Mighty Jack has a taste dogs love and is completely free of perfumes or stabilizers. Strong enough for a manx, but made for a Rottweiler. Store in a cool, dry place and do not expose to living tissue or temperatures over 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now available in three delicious flavors, regular, mailman, and cat. I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse. I have just one message for all dogs. Bite me. Hey. Oh, I mean being eaten by a dog. Help me. Oh, Remember, Mighty Jack dog food and the Mighty Jack corporate symbol are in no way representational or meant to infer relationship to any similarity of any other corporate symbols, logos, or trademarks. Dog foods, dog treats, dog snacks, or persons living or dead. The end. What do you think? What do you think? Uh, do you I think we have very different views of uh, advertising. Let's what? see how the what? pros do it. What? Guys, hey guys, what's up? Hey, whoa, I knew you were going to do this to me. Would you get this silence thing off floor, my head? Silence, Meow. Thank you. There, there, Flopsy. You'd better tell me what we want to know. The lights in there are capable of blinding you. Oh, that doesn't bother me. I'll just keep my eyes shut. Oh, foiled again. Your boy, is he smart. Oh, you can say that. Would you knock it off? You're supposed to be a cat. Uh, meow. Thank you. You're sure. Okay. Hey, would you guys hurry up? It's hot in here. Joel, aren't you just the tiniest bit curious about those blinding lights? Lights. Don't you want to peek just a little bit? <laughs> no. Hey, like I said, he's smart. Oh, boy. Guess all of those swimsuit posters on the wall are going to go completely to waste, aren't they? And I guess you wouldn't even be interested in that rare Paul Clay painting on the wall, either. Oh, you guys <laughs> don't have a Paul Clay painting. Boy, is he smart. Yeah, the guy is smart. Aren't you supposed to be my cat? I, um, meow. Thank you. Sure, I'm Gee. sorry. Oh, I got an idea. Joel, I seem to have misplaced the Hope Diamond. <laughs> Would you look around in there for me? Oh, it's not in here. Yeah. Well, did you even look? No, I'm not going to. Oh, yes, he's smart. Is the word. Uh, plan B. Plan B. Plan B. Okay, Joel, I hate yeah. to get tough, but inside that box with you is a poison sandwich. Yeah. <clears throat> uh... I just won't eat it. Oh, foiled again. You completely lost that cat thing, haven't you? I though? admit it. I'm way off script. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Oh, guys, guys come on. What, what, uh, what, are you, what are you... It's so uncomfortable and oh, everything. Oh, has the great Joel Robinson decided the fun time is over now? Sheesh. Man, what's the matter? Well, say, Joel, don't say hi. Meow. You have got to be kidding me, I'm Crow. <laughs> hey, Crow, you want to go get some frozen yogurt or something? Hey! Ship, we're all gonna die! A uh, fireball! 
Joel, come on, you're not fooling anybody. That's an aquarium you put in front of Cambot that's causing this effect I here. I know, really? I know. I was just getting ready to do a big pitch to Hollywood. You know, we got tons of offers from interested executives wow. after uh, Crow read his piece in Reader's Theater yep. called Earth vs. Sue. Wow. Yep, uh, now I've got a development deal with Anson Williams uh, Enchantment Productions, and plus, I'm doing a rewrite on Next to Kin, too. Wow. Yeah, so I thought we could do the pitch underwater, you know, cool. like cash in on some of the excitement that's been generated from movies like The Deep and The Abyss and others. Oh, that's a great idea, yeah. Joel. As a matter of fact, I was just watching Mighty Jack, and I couldn't help but think this would make a great movie. Right, yeah, okay. I, I was thinking something like started off with a submarine, like... Uh, gray huh? lady down, gray lady down. That's I a, can't see him. They got a caterpillar really here, nice. sir. Really nice. Nice, Joel. That's nice. Oh, hey, hey, here great, comes Joel. No uh, one a man should be in a straitjacket. Yeah. No one's floating. Here come the animals. Two oh, by two. Whoa, whoa. What does Where Noah have to do with anything here, Joel? It's the arc of the story. Uh, that's oh, it. Gosh. That's it. Give me a Go tear his arm off. Hey, <laughs> wait a minute. What are you trying to do? Uh, I was going to tear your arm off. Oh, come on. Anyway, the really good thing is that Steven Spielberg is now doing a bunch of movies based on cartoon characters, you know, uh -huh. like the Flintstones and yep. Bloom County and... Uh, it just goes on like great. that. Yeah, what's he going to do next? Casper the Friendly Ghost? <laughs> oh, that would be ridiculous. You know, and I was thinking it'd be a great time to bring even more cartoon characters to the big screen. You know, like uh, Deputy Dog. That's true. And, uh, and Odie Colony. And Josie and the Pussycat. I can't stand to see him like this. No, I can't either. <laughs> hey, you guys, come back. I can be nutty, just like the rest of you, and do dumb puns and stuff like that. There's no reason why I can't. I'm, you know, I'm weird, and that results in creativity. Well, speaking of the nutty, here's a word from our friends at Shake a Pudding. Me climby buckos. The movie is over, the pain is past, and I just feel like singing a plot shanty. Be lively now, me bonnie rapes. <laughs> oh, slow the plot down, laddie, slow the plot down. Way, slow the plot down. We'll scuttle the story and run her around. We'll try so hard to slow the plot down. Okay, now who can tell me their favorite scene from the movie so far? Oh, sure. Tom, right. go ahead. There was the, uh, there was a, uh, um, uh, uh, I don't know. Oh, slow the plot down, Letty. Slow the plot down. Wait, slow the plot down. With German, Italian, and Japanese clowns. We'll try so hard. To slow the plot down. Okay, well, how, about you? how about you, Crow? You must be full to huh? bursting with some fond memories of today's movie. Come on, think hard. Uh, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, um, brother. Uh, gee, uh, geez, Joel, I'm trying to blank. Yeah, I, um, oh, oh, I remember uh, vaguely a guy locked locked in a room <laughs> with another guy and someone. Running. Oh, I'll make, I'll make you, you a movie, movie that's, that's long and immense. Way, hey, slow the plot down. Just give us a script that makes no friggin' sense. We'll try so hard to slow the plot down. Well, come on, you guys. I can remember, I, for one, in vivid detail, a frogman who, uh... Just who is, who's Mighty Jack, anyway? Oh, wow, it just hit me. I remember the scene where Queequeg sits motionless on the deck meditating for telling the death of the crew. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, and Scout sees Atticus shoot the mad dog in the street, and Alex right. goes to come. I remember, and then Patrick Swayze walks in and says, It's, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Come oh, on, guys. my brain hurts. Oh, Joel, oh. I'm so confused. It's really not that bad, you guys. I, for one, actually feel like I just got done listening to two hours of Lou Reed's Metal Machine music. Hey. You know, my brain feels clean as a whistle. And that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah that's it is. Let's take it off. Oh, okay. oh, slow, slow the plot down, down hey, Slow the plot down. Way, hey, slow the plot down. Just scuttle the story and run her aground. We'll try so hard to slow the plot down. <laughs> 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 what do you think, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Well, I think I'm going to have to adjust your air mixture again, Pirate Dog. Looks like it's getting a little thin up there. Push the button, Frank. Hardberg, me thought so cold, so vast. With mortal damp set overcast. Exalting still thy tankish breath, adrift dissolving. Bound for death. Isn't that right, Blind Jim? Oh, great, you've got arr, Frank locked up. Arr, He's croating arr, Melville. Arr, Go away. Nor still the slimy slug that sprawls along. Oh, shut up, Frank. Thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, thousand. Huh. Must well. be about two miles. Yep, yep, yep. Right over Centerville. Yep. Mm. I am so utterly bored out of my dome. Oh, yep, yep, there's nothing to do, pretty much. Yep, yep, yepper, pepper, doodly do. Rainy, rainer, rain, it's a raining on Jane, it's a plain bane, citizen cane, lum dee dum bang 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 bang. Oh, sorry. 30 seconds to commercial sign. Why don't you always play Hungry Hungry Hippos? You like that. Oh, we lost all the marbles. Yeah, hey, Magic Voice, I don't suppose you know where our mousetrap game is, do you? I didn't play with it last. No, the pieces are missing anyway. Why don't you play a nice game of Monopoly? Too long. How about your Hot Wheels set? Busted. Play a nice game of Racco. Boring. Well, then, why don't we read a book? Oh, Jag, oh, we're done. No way. Well, I don't know what you're going to do then. It's commercial sign in five seconds. Hey, um, maybe we could uh, play some poker. Poker? Yeah, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Poker? What's poker? Poker. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, the game is Gray Lady up and down the river, spit in the ocean, bullets, deuces, and one-eyed jacks are wild. Ah, it's to you, Tommy. Mm, you know, I love the way Felix makes these sandwiches with the crust off. They're really delicious. What is with the sandwiches? Are oh. you in or out? Okay, I'm in, I'm in. Ooh. Okay. Gypsy? Mm-hmm. Gypsy, just tell him what you want to do and keep your poker face. <laughs> Well, okay, let's see what to do, what to do. Oh, I fold. I fold too. Oh, Gypsy, you wrecked it. You had a great hand. Oh, now the unholy oppressors are calling. I think you better fold your little card party, Murray the Cop, and make with this week's invention exchange. Right away, El Duce. Anyway, our invention this week is something we all came up with together, and Crow's going to set the stage. Okay, um, so you're sitting around on, say, Tuesday night. And uh, you suddenly realize that the quart of apple juice you just downed was actually a bottle of janitor in a drum. <laughs> and you're going to need to induce vomiting right now. Right. But you've had it up to here with the same old warm saltwater epic hack. Right. So we all got together and wrote this book, the children's wonder book of rainy day epic hacks. Yeah. Okay. Here's mine. Okay. Uh, chocolate milk. All right. I'm okay. cool. And then there pour that goes. over into pickle juice. Oh. Okay. And then pickle oh. juice goes in there like that. Oh. All right. That's <laughs> That'll do it. Oh, what are we doing? Come right okay. up. Okay. Okay. Mine. Mine. Okay, take those circus peanuts okay. there, add a quart of warm strawberry quick, mm-hmm. and a punch in the stomach. All That'll right. do the trick. Okay, well, here's mine. Lucky Charms ah. covered with cherry NyQuil. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, yes. Yes. oh that's a good epic hack. Oh, how mm. about blue cheese? Blue cheese on a steak. With oh. a steak garnish. Blue like cheese that. on steak. anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, here's something I came up with. How about a Snickers bar mm. with honey mustard? Oh, 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 that it. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> what do you think, sirs? Well, hey, I'm having the blue cheese coke Slurpee. Frank, no! Well, what's an epic hack anyway? Just get this week's invention exchange, Frank. Okay, Steve. This week's invention exchange is going to blow your little mind, Warthog. It's the culmination of my life's work. It's the essence of evil, and it's a good friend. Out, 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 out. I'm doing the invention exchange this week. I don't think so, Roy. It's my idea. I do the invention exchange. I spent all night working on that bad boy. I'm doing the invention exchange this week. Take the train. You just about had it, smart boy. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah. I'm gonna cut you, man. I'm gonna cut you, that's right. 
Yeah? That's your bad, man. Yeah? You want a piece of me? Yeah, come on, I come do, on. I you do, want a piece I of do. me? Come on. I'm going to cut you a second smile, Daddy. Oh, come yeah. on. Come on. I don't think so. Come on, come come on, on Jackson. Come, come on. on. Come on, come sweet cakes. Bring it on through. You're going to cut me? No, you're not going to cut me. What in the Sam Scratch is going on down there? I don't know, but I don't like it. Not one bit. Send in the movie, Frank! No way. No way. I'm looking at a dead man. A dead man! Send in the movie! I'm not gonna send him the movie! Send in the movie! I'm not sending him the movie! Your movie this week, Joel, is Teenage Kid Man with Robert Watts. Send in the movie! I'm not gonna send him the movie! I'm not gonna send him! I'm not gonna... Drink it. Oh, we got movie time! Hello again, folks. This is your announcer, Tom Ted Husing. Today we bring you another adventure from the Satellite of Love Reptile Institute. Wait, here comes Joel Robinson, the Satellite of Love's resident Tarzan, defender of animal justice, followed by his faithful seminal stand-up guide, Emo Crow. I was just wondering... It's a pretty good impersonation, but too bad the seminal guide doesn't have any lines, as this is pretty much a voiceover. The morning mail brings a letter from PETA. Go out and catch the slimiest of all creatures, the Great White Ross. Here's the shed over here. Here. You go that way, I'll go this way. And there he is. Oh, no! Whoa, watch out, Joel. That little guy is as helpless as a baby bear cub, but he can take a few fingers off or give you a nasty bruise. <laughs> oh, it doesn't hurt the little fella, but boy, is it fun. Whoa, oh, here comes Emo, and he's got the right idea. And sometimes you have to be prepared to smoke them out. My boyfriend always comes prepared. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Ah, oh, no, you never said anything about using an open flame in this sketch. Oh! And into oh! the bag he goes. Oh! No, not the bag. You know I hate the bag. Oh! Once Ross is in the bag, it's hammer time. This isn't really important, but after a long day in the woods, it's quite a rush. Oh, no! Hello, Mr. Rattler's here to keep Ross company. Not it's a long ride home Rattler, in the bottom of a canoe, please. and we don't want Ross to get please, lonely. Not the giant Rattler. I can't do that. He hates me. We want to camp together. And oh. once back at camp, Ross's quarters are ready. Now we can't take it there. Let's get out. Oh, now Ross the can relax in relative oh. comfort in the safety of captivity. Oh. We leave you with this question. If you enjoyed catching trouble in any way, there's something wrong with you. Any questions? Hey, do you guys love having fun? Yeah, whatever. Nah. Do you guys like being with others? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, do you like technology? Is somebody yeah. talking in here? Well, I've invented this uh, artist's rendering for to teach you the history of technology. Oh, no! no. Joel, you have got Wait to a be... minute, something's happening in Deep 13! Uh, I'm going to kill you! Well, you're going to have to kill me first! I mean, go! <laughs> <laughs> you want it? Yeah. You want it? Here it is. <laughs> well, come and get it. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm taking hair, Frank. Hey, how about them twins, huh? Oh, I think they're doing rather well. Yeah, they're kind of good pitching. Well, the pitching's kind of tough, but I think they're gonna have to try to get high. Keep up! Look, it's funny. Beetle Bailey. Yeah, the carpet's got a red butt. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello, Booby. Just a little management labor dispute. Nothing to... And it all finally culminated in the technology's greatest achievement, the Flying Nun. Oh, we got movies on! Wake up, you clowns! Coming forth to carry me home. And you know what's really a downer in this movie, guys? Ooh. 
What's that clown in the mid-calf fur shift and the Smith Brothers beard carrying on about how everything is so evil? Ooh. Yeah, boy, if I was a teenage caveman, I'd find an accident to happen to that guy in pronto. <laughs> yeah, well, judging by the shape of his skull, I'd imagine he's a veteran of quite a few accidents. That's oh, good one, Jack. <laughs> you know, that character is a good example that arch conservatism existed even in prehistory. Um, what was that character's name again? Alan, I think. Right, Alan. He represented people's need to accept what they have and fear things that they didn't have, you know, whereas the Robert Vaughn character, do you remember his name? I'm pretty sure it was uh, Travis. Right. <laughs> Travis represented people's need to take risks to make their world better. Now, uh, um, this uh, position's getting a little claustrophobic for me. Uh, okay. Do you mind if I stretch out no over problem. here? No <clears> problem. <throat> Anyway, the pendulum of human development has swung back and forth between safety and risk since time and memoriam. Mm. You know, I bet, you know what, you can look at any invention or idea in our reality and there was some brave soul behind it pushing for people to accept it. Everything? Anything? Sure, yeah, give me an example of anything in our reality mm. and I'll give you an argument mm. people gave against it. Well, uh, what about books? Yeah, Everybody books. knows books are good for you. Well, you might think that, but when the printing press was invented in the 1500s, a lot of rich people and people in government were afraid that revolution would come when the poor learned how to read. Well, they were right about that. Well, yeah. But how about when Dylan went electric? Mm. Well, a lot of hippies felt that it was the end of folk music. Mm. Heavy. What about uh, when they invented pizza with pineapple, olives, Canadian bacon, and anchovies? Oh, well, that's Ooh. evil. And it's a great epicac. Huh. And we've got commercial signs. Mm. Swing low, swing low, low sweet cherry. I, I am the last survivor of a movie-watching experiment. Me too! Oh, oh yeah, him too. Um, oh, whether through fortune or design, we are the only survivors. The awesome power of Roger Corman was unleashed upon the satellite and scared everybody. He was brought upon us by scientists mad in shape and purpose. Aye, and aye. the fact that I am dead does not prevent me from tying up a few loose ends. Me too, you keep forgetting about me. Oh, yeah, him too. I'm character. Uh, we, aye, I, have aye. protected by our Trumpy radiation aye. suits, waited to contact. Hey, hi, guys. What's up? Oh, you guys, come I, I, on. What he you was the young one who began to wonder. I'm starting to wonder about these two. I, he was unfettered by a long list of taboos, except that he refused to wear silly hats. I, listen, are you guys supposed to be dead? You know, I could see your lips move. Um, I, we refused to add lib and give in to his demands and smell his feet, which were like bad meat or good cheese. Now, come on, I, you guys. Quit your clown, and I'm supposed to read the letter, okay? Okay. Hey, Come on. You took great pleasure in reading letters. I, where, now, I, where is it? It's letter, supposed to be here. Letter, in your... It's in the radiation suits. <laughs> oh, jeez. Come on. Tickle the old ones. Yuck. Sorry it's about the slime, young one. Letter. It's covered Read with this. slime and this matted mo monkey hair, uh, fake monkey uh, hair that you made these suits out of. It comes okay. with the territory, okay. young one. Okay. Okay, well, let's put this. What's left? Uh, let's put aye. this on still store cam bot. Aye, aye. Got that? Aye. Okay. Well, this is a pretty neat one. Before it got slimed, it it's from uh, Bruce Barber, and it says, "Verify ye hence, and testify ye furthermore that your show has a large and loyal following among the professional stuntmen here in L.A." Nothing brings home to us exactly how far the stunt business has come as watching the action on some of the turkeys you have graced us with. I try never to miss a show. The wife, who the thinks wife? I'm sick, tapes them for me when I'm on location. Please Aye. keep up the good, bad work. Bruce Barber. Aye. Pretty neat, huh? Aye. Now, you guys are going to have to clean all this up, you know. Aye. Again, no. what the devil? Yeah. Yeah. We will not clean it up. Just be quiet. we got to get out of here. What do you think, sirs? Mmm, that is good. Oh, I'm glad I brought the orange cappuccino. Wait a minute, I brought the orange cappuccino. <laughs> oh, hello, booby. Frank and I are just patching things up with a little cup of kindness. You know, it's the quiet moments that are the most precious moments. Mm. Why don't you push the button, Frank? I'm going to slip this tape of Dad in with Jack Lemon. I think we could both use a good cry, don't you? I'll make some popcorn. Mm. <laughs> Where's the soup? 
super party here on the satellite of love. Me and my robots are having a kind of orbiting root beer kegger. Oh, and, 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 uh, you guys, uh, looks like the keg's fried. Bummer! Oh, wow, this is far from industrial, man. Bogus. Listen, you guys, there's a lot you can do even when the keg has run out. Now, uh, we got, like, pin the flames on Gamera, and we got this Gamera pinata. There's just a lot of stuff you can do. Everybody quiet. I just, I just want to say, say that Joel Robinson is one fine human being. being. Commercial, Commercial sign now. Enough for you. Mm -hmm. Like that one time and I was like, what? Huh? Crow, lighten what? up. It's what could be my parents. Oh, sorry, dude. Machine. Didn't mean to keep going. Cut it out up there. The satellite of love is not a party machine. I don't know what you folks are doing up there, but if I were you, <laughs> I'd take the pizza off the ceiling. <laughs> well, Nia Peebles, our invention exchange this week is a new consumer product. Frank? Hi. My name is TV's Frank, and I am a Stoogeaholic. Hi, TV's Frank. You know, ever since I was a little kid, I was always a big Three Stooges fan, in all their various incarnations, except for Curly Joe Doridi. You know, he lacks subtlety. But, you know, I could never emulate their exquisite fight choreography. Until now, that is. That's right. That's why we've invented these, the Three Stooges gun. They come in both offensive and defensive. Hey, spinach chin! No, mo, nyuck, 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 whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, how I loathe you. Sightingly, whoop, whoop. Joe, 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 Joe! <laughs> Oh, sorry. Sorry, sirs. Oh, well, my invention this week is kind of based on uh, something I invented during the party. You know how I took Tom uh, Servo and turned him into a root beer pony keg here? <laughs> I thought I could do the same kind of thing with Crow, the robot. Yeah. I've actually... Crow, would you come over here, please? I'm not coming out. Crow, come on. Oh, Shut up. Man. Exciting. I'm delicious. What oh, a delicious I feel so ridiculous. I figured I could take Crow, TV's Crow, the lovable, wise, cracking robot, and turn them into a delicious shish kebab. You know, robots, after all, are made out of metal. They can withstand great heat. Earlier today, I baked a duplicate crow at 500 degrees. Oh, you look Let great. What is that dirty thing? Oh, it just looks so delicious. And oh. he'll end up looking just like this. Oh, when he's done. boy, if food could talk, I wonder what this delicious dish would say. Bite me! What do you think, sirs? Brace yourself, Jeff Smith. I've been waiting all week for the sadistic pleasure I'm going to get when I tell you that the experiment this week... It's Gamera versus Zegra. We know already. That's why we're having this party. It's our last Gamera movie. How did you find out? Who ruined my surprise? Frank told us. Frank! Don't... This may be your last camera film, but there's no guarantee you're going to survive it. Party's over, Frank. Oh, no, we got to move inside. Let's get out of here. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. This model is going to teach me how Gamera works? Yep. It's going to teach me how he shoots flames out and flies around? Yep. It's going to teach me how he breathes underwater? For, For sure. sure. It's going to teach me how he did gymnastics? Just, Just open, open the, the shell, doofus. Ta-da! Welcome to Gamera, the biggest, friendliest super turtle there ever was. Wow, you guys made this yourself? That's mm -hmm. pretty great. Our tour starts here at the monster's head, down the grand spiral staircase, which leads to the galley where Gamera keeps all his favorite refreshments and cheesy comestibles. Oh, 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 oh. Just a technical question when... Uh, uh, Gamera brings his head in. Uh -huh. What happens to this big uh, cast iron spiral stairway? Oh, that's a special spring steel stairway. It collapses when Gamera pulls his head in. Resuming our tour, stay with the group, Joe. Okay. Below the galley is Kenny's room for when he sleeps over. It's filled with mementos of all the terrific adventures that Gamera and Kenny have had over the years. He also has one of those special little refrigerators filled with ice cold Snickers, Milky Way, and Three Musketeers bars. Oh, well, what's this room down here? Oh, that's apartment 4B where the lonely cat. Batman lives. Below that is the boiler room filled with highly schooled robots or thinking machines that each do the work of ten men and each make over $100 or credits a day. Wow. 
What's this over here, though? Oh, that's for your men. Oh. And uh, those little costumes are for when Kitty has half the day off from school. He can come over to Gamera and dress up. There's a rap Patrol hat, an official Packer uniform with a helmet, and a word of old Federation wrestling belt, and just about a jillion other costumes as well, as each as important as the other ones I mentioned, and worth over $100. Hey. Wow, what about this? It looks kind of like some catacombs or something. Oh, this is the plan I came up with. I took the liberty of converting Gamera's intestines into a super cool wine cellar and makeup counter. Wow. So after Kitty's in bed, Gamera can have a lovely, wow. mature woman friend over for some laughs and some love. Well, what's this down here? His pooper, or his anus. That's the correct medical oh. word. Uh, <laughs> Joel, uh, it's just a dimensional model of Gamera. You should really just relax. Yeah. What about On our left, you'll notice Gamera's game room. Oh, he's got a jukebox with classic rock 45s, a vintage Madame LaRue pinball game that he's converted so you don't have to use a quarter. Oh, and just a really lot of other great stuff, too, that you'd really love to have, and Jesus lives there. Wow, what about this? Oh, that's the room that allows him to breathe underwater, shoot flames, and do gymnastics. But whatever you do, don't open that door, Joel. No, 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 no. please, no. Mr. Joel, don't open that door. Don't oh, throw me in the crap, so what could possibly be behind this door? Uh, his his guts! Well, you know, spirits can get kind of dim up here on the satellite of love after what amounts to watching the same movie like six times in your life. So I came up with a little art therapy for the robots so they could maybe feel a little bit better. Okay, you guys. Hey, 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 hey. Do you remember the assignment? Oh, yeah. Okay, make a diorama in a shoebox based on one of the Gamera movies and tell a little bit about it. Okay, who's first? Um, mm -hmm. Tom? Do you want to go first? Idea. Okay, oh, here's good. your box. Okay, mine I chose from Gamera vs. Baragon. Okay. Okay, be hey, careful. Can you bring that in, Camba? Come be on. Be careful with that. It's not dry yet. Okay, do you uh, want to tell, tell us about it? <laughs> okay, here we see the mighty Baragon, his huge hulking mass towering over downtown Tokyo. His terror-inducing face locked forever in a hideous death mask. Ooh, razor-sharp fangs drip deadly venom and could cut the strongest hemp rope like it was cotton floss. There is no escape from his battering ram tongue as he strips up the denizens of Japan like some horrific nightmare. Roaming cross between an anteater and the devil dog himself. Chained forever in serpent to the beast master. Demonic farmer of the underworld. Loki, the unspoken one. Bills of uh, Tom, Tom, of the Tom, buddy, Tom, Tom, buddy, lighten up. Oh, you like done. the way I used Lego for buildings there? Oh, yeah, that's that good. And it looks like you also uh, renewed your subscription to the Stephen, Big, uh, Stephen King Book Club. Okay. How do Who's he next? know? Oh, 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 me, me, me. Oh, 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 Okay, oh, oh, Crow, oh, oh, we'll do you next. Oh. Okay, here's yours. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, all right, my favorite scene in. and the one that I have rendered in the exciting Plato form is the monster Gaos. Oh, cool. Uh, Gaos yeah. is very big and everyone runs away with a flat head. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, with a flat head that shoots laser beams shown here simulated with pipe cleaners, Gaos terrorizes the people of Japan. Mm -hmm. Green gas shoots out from his armpits and they killed him by keeping him out until the sun come up and he died. Hey, is it okay he used pipe cleaners? You use Lego. Oh, well, I use stupid uh, pipe cleaners. You guys, listen, you both you kind of went outside the perimeters of the, uh, the assignment, but, uh, you know, I think it turned out good. You showed your own individual See? creativity. Okay, now Gypsy's next. Okay, you ready? Okay, let's see. Let's put yours up. Okay, bring it in, Cambot. Are you ready to tell us about it, Gypsy? Okay, Richard Bazaar of the Flying Sword with David Pettison and the guy who played the chief. Oh, that's great. You did a really good job. That's nice. Okay, well, I want to show you my favorite scene of the whole Series of Gamera. The surprise is a grab chips? No. What is it? What is it? Is it, it a puppy? In. No, it's not a puppy. <gasps> it's all of us together, a family. Oh, oh no! We oh, got oh, it! No. Oh, no. It's a pony! Good. Hey, it's a good thing I converted Tom Servo into this pony keg. Now we're going to have enough delicious dad's root beer for the game tomorrow. Yeah, you know it. Oh, oh, I see. That reminds me. Uh, Tom, you're yep. supposed to have your picks in before the game start. Oh. You can't turn them in Monday morning and try to say you went 14 and 1 on Sunday. Oh, yeah, well, look who's talking. I mean, I can't believe you picked the Vikings again. They almost never win on natural grass. Now, the Packers back in 68. Now, there was a team. Uh, yeah, you know? yeah. But for Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers, they would be another day. Right, hey, well, okay. Come hey. on, now Fuzzy Thurston was a saint. Can I pour you one, buddy? Yeah, sure, pour oh, me one. Yeah, hey, yeah. tilt that back, tilt that back. Hey, 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 come on, where'd you learn how to pour? <laughs> <laughs> you know what they Kinda say, guys, quick. you don't buy root beer, you rent it. Quick, give me rugged number nine, Bronto. <laughs> wow, it's 
Kenny and Helen from the movie. It looks like they're riding on the back of camera. What a rush. Man, this is a party. Hey, how are you two doing? I'm feeling really good. Well, we're feeling really good too, Kenny. This is quite a surprise. You know, there's one thing I've always wanted to ask you. How come you little kids are always the ones with all the answers, hmm? Camera is good. Camera is friend of children. What? We fill up on fish. Well, yeah, but what if... It's fun. I'm feeling really good. Well, Joe, this is embarrassing. Are these more child actors gone bad? Yeah, what's the problem, you two? Aren't you both around 30 by now? Aren't you a little old to be hanging around Gamera? <laughs> Gamera is my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Daddy, I want a Coke. Gamera's dancing go-go. Well, geez, we better get back to our party or something. <laughs> yes. uh, unless anybody's got something no, they no, want to no, say. No, no. We love you, corn job. I'm feeling really good. Ah, uh, corn job. That must be you, Joel. And speaking of corn, back after this. All right, we finished the experiment, everybody, and we feel like singing. Hot patootie. Boy, for boy. Three-fisted hot butter Bob. And yeah. each one of us has yeah. decided to do our version of the Gamera theme song in a separate style. I've elected to do mine in the version of that famous Rastafarian chart buster, Ika Mouse. <laughs> oh, the camera, but ding, and ding, 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 bang, get camera, ding, and ding, and ding, and ding, ding. Oh, bro, the camera is really neat. Ding, and ding, um, the camera is full of meat, ding, 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 ding. Uh, thank you, Joel. I'll say that was really, really neat. Let's hear it for Joel. Now then, I've chosen a little hipper, that is to say, hepper groove to lay down in. Campa, make it cool for me. Ah. Night bleeds out into the Tokyo streets and Gamera shakes his tail at a Ginzo bistro with eyes like baby moons. He lights up a skyscraper like a Chesterfield and strolls, singing, Gamera, Gamera. You're a nickel, your baby, you're full of meat, Bubba, do you don't bow? You bought as neat as a cheap seat in the midnight peep show where all the old hey, men are hey, Tom. Oh, sorry. Crow, take it. Bustin' moves on monsters and he fights for good. He's gotta be about the biggest turtle in the hood. I said Gamera. Tempo. He's really neat. I'm talking Gamera. He's... Oh, oh really? He needs full of meat and just about don't walk behind him because when he squats in the street, oh, hey, he's really hey, up Hey, come on, what? Crow. What? You know, being with you guys, I feel like Dave Seville with yeah. the chipmunks or something. Hey, Gypsy, you ready? No! Come on. Would you come here, you? Come on. I think hers is going to be self-evident once she starts. Okay. Go ahead. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. Like you reversed. Okay, and we've decided then to do a really nice version all together. <clears throat> Camelot is really I think so. It's pretty sweet, huh? I don't think so, Milly Vanilli. One, two, three, four! Never, 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 Welcome to the Satellite Love. I'm Joel Robinson. These are my robots. I want you to consider 
the lowly waffle. Uh, Joel, it's lunchtime, buddy. You know, I'd rather have a manwich or a baloney sandwich. Oh, Ooh. nonsense, Tom. Anytime's the right time for waffles. Uh, Joel, I think the butter slipped off your stack of waffles, buddy. Uh, are mm -hmm. you feeling okay? Sure. Commercial, Commercial sign in 15 seconds. seconds. What, what are you, you making, making there, partner? partner? I'm making waffles and save room magic voice. I made plenty. I'll say. Consider yeah. the waffle as a fine and suitable alternative to stuffing our potatoes. Yeah. Because after all, what are waffles but batter? And what's batter but chopped up grain? You know, there's tons of stuff you can do with waffles. You know, take some peanut butter and syrup, make a waffle sandwich, or wrap the hot dog in a waffle and garnish with ketchup. There's tons you can do, or maybe commercial you can cut five, some Swiss four, cheese. Three, three, and you can two, melt it over the commercial sign now. Beans are always good. Well, I like to put chili on mine for a real south-of-the-border treat. No. And if you're really into it, no. take some waffle batter, mix it with milk, and you've no. got a waffle shake. But don't tell the kids it's good for them. Or a delicious spinach waffle with Joel, tangy ricotta cheese. Joel, the mad scientists are calling, please. I've got plenty for them, too. But I'll get it. Well, Aunt Jemima, this time you've really stepped off the deep end. Frank... Now, do you shred the Swiss cheese or just slice it really thin? Frank, this time I'm really going to hurt you. I understand. Why don't you go and get this week's invention exchange, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You've been very kind to me. Frank, you have no clue. Well, Aunt Jemima, our invention exchange this week has to do with meat, Frank. Well, you know, recently I've become a vegetarian, and it worked, it's worked out great, really. Uh, you know, the other day my colon looked up at me and said, Frank, thank you. I said, no, thank you. But now what am I going to do with all the meat I have stored in freezers? I figured, hey, why not bring the meat back to life? That's right. That's why we've invented the meat reanimator. Hook it up, Frank. Clear. It's alive! Alive! My corn-fed Minnesota chicken is alive! You know, I thought this was a good idea, but this is one weird mamma jamma. What do you think, Garrick Utley? Chicken waffles? Oh, you're weird. Which results in creativity. Which mm. results in my latest invention exchange. It's a very literal interpretation of the old waffle iron. Mm -hmm. Let's say you love traditional waffles, mm. but you like the classic simplistic styling of the old pancake. Mm -hmm. No problem. Just douse it with a little Mrs. Butterworth spray <laughs> starch, like that. Okay? Mm. Cover it with a cloth to avoid burns mm -hmm. and iron. Hey. And... Gee, it turns an ordinary waffle into a flat waffle. And cleanup's a breeze. What do you think, sirs? Ancient Chinese secret, huh? Hmm? Dear God, what have I done? What the heck is going on up there? Uh, hey, Frank, will these work on waffles? Uh, yeah, I think so. Well, Joel, today's experiment is a little piece of slime from Roger Corman called Viking Women in the Sea Serpent. But first... A little lesson in home economics. Here's a waffle for you, scarecrow. Okay. Uh, take it easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold it up. What I've done was reprogram the robots to love uh, waffles as much as I do. And can you see? And what we're going to do is name some important new uses for waffles during this segment. Okay, who's got one? Uh, uh, easy to read waffles with enlarged squares for the flavor impaired. Okay. Oh, that's good. Take it easy. Can I eat them now? Buckwheat buck waffles make an excellent hammy for cleaning your car. Good. Chester Scholl's waffle pan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, now, careful. These are just for demonstration. It would be uh, too bad if the robots got too into it. Oh, well, I've always been a breakfast man myself. Uh, you know me. Crow, we should really be working on the assignment. Yes. But look, oh. these look so good. What a taste teaser. Oh, oh you I think this coming into my mind. Please put a waffle in Gypsy's hand. Take it oh, easy you now. You. It would be too bad if uh, you uh, robots were uh, unable to complete your task because you were uh, too uh, in love with this big, juicy uh, stack of yummy nummies. Oh, crow, Crow, get a grip. Gypsy, don't you see what he's trying to do? Snap out of it. Come on. Remember the waffle ideas. Waffle dress shields. Waffle desk organizers. Come on, work the steps with me. Limit squares, waffle fall into block. Wally cocks in the secret square. Waffles like sweet first. You are... Oh, oh, oh.
John, I tried, buddy. That's okay, Tom. Can you just give me one? Okay, acoustic tiles. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, here comes Tom Zero. How about a uh, Greek waffle called a falafel? Waffles. Oh, we got movie stars! Oh, boy, am I full. I ate too much. I'm beginning to think the world would be a better place without waffles. No, waffles? Uh, who are you? Why, I'm Willie the Waffle, the wonderful, whimsical, wise-cracking waffle. <laughs> Can I ask you one question? Uh, sure. Who the hell are you to decide who lives and who dies? Did you know that the nation's brunch industry employs over 500,000 people, most of them named Chad? Hi, welcome to JoJo Waffle Berries. Our waffle special today is Gamey Force Waffle with Jack Sauce. We also have... Sorry, Chad, we have to lay you off. No waffles. Oh, Little League gross. Baseball would also be impossible without waffles. <clears throat> Mom, Little League practice is in an hour. Can I have some waffles? Sorry, son. No waffles. <laughs> Nice read there, Joel. That was really... Uh, most oh. importantly, do you think communism in the Soviet Union would ever have been dismantled if it weren't for waffles? Come on, what a... Hey, hey, the coup is a success. All we do now is all know Boris Yeltsin and the crowd in Red Square are eating waffles. We'll never crush them now. That's right. The Russian people, maple syrup stain on Gorbachev's forehead spells one thing. Freedom. <laughs> Oh, come on, you guys. Please, I was just being ironic. You guys love waffles so much. Here, have some of mine. I got plenty. Uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of full. I'm not really into waffles. Come on, Tom. We got a party to go to. Ooh, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Join waffles, us, everybody. Waffles, come on, Kimba. Give me triple berry. W is for the many ways that you serve. A is for the admiration you deserve. And F is for the flavor that is second to none. L is for how light you are, you melt in my mouth. And E is for A. Baby, put them all together with a how do you do? Lovely waffles we love. Turn me up another, please. Waffles we love. Top five waffles, runny cheese. Waffles we love. Waffles we love. Wash me down with Aunt Jemima. Waffles we love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's face it, sticky fingers. Waffles are nothing more than a vehicle for butter and syrup. <laughs> what? They Just are not. Hey, waters. you watch your mouth around right? waffles. Ah, I got you. <laughs> Now, Frank, I want you to set this up so they get a high-voltage shock every time someone says waffle. <laughs> what? Has someone been saying waffles a lot? <laughs> exactly what I mean. Okay, I'm up to speed so far. Your point is that Big Bird cannot be considered a puppet because of his or her... Uh, it's size. Right, right. And it's size, and don't forget the feet. Once a puppet has feet, it ceases being uh, a puppet and starts being a costume. Well, what about Topo Gigio? He was a puppet with feet. Oh, give me a break. If you want to get technical, Lamb Chop had feet, too. Topo Gigio was an Italian black art rod puppet. Come on, Crow, that's a subcategory. Oh, look who's arguing semantics now. Well, Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. Looks like we've stumbled upon the robot's weekly ontological discussion about the nature of puppets. And the symbiotic relationship to man. Right, and their symbiotic relationship to man. Let's watch the fireworks. See? All right, if you're so smart, what would you call H.R. Puffin stuff? Well, that's a costume. Remember the puppet paradigm. Feet plus inarticulated mouth means costume. What about Yoda? Well, Yoda was a humanly articulated floating armature creature used in combination with radio contorted servos and air bladders. What about puppet or costume, Tom? Come All on. All right, you got me. I don't know. See, I rest my case. Okay, here's one for you. What okay. would you call Senior Wences, the ventriloquist who built his career out of talking to his hand? I'd call that a cry for help. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you two are ready, let's begin. Here's a quick pop quiz on the many varied celebrity puppets in show business past and present. And I want you to define the genius of each of these characters I list. 
We'll begin with some characters from television. Cambot, keep score and watch the clock. Ready? Let's begin. Rolf the dog. Crow. Uh, puppet. Puppet. Yeah, could you be more specific? Tom Servo. Muppet. Right, exactly. Okay, next. Meow, meow, kitty. Crow. Uh, puppet. Uh, what kind of puppet? Uh, hand. Yes, and? Uh, lame hand puppet. Yes, yes, very good. Okay, next. That. Kukla. Oh, boy. This is tough. Kukla. Uh, Kukla or Ollie, I'll take either one. Oh, 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 I know Crow. that one. Uh, hard shell head, soft cloth body, hand puppet with sock sleeve coverlet. Very good. I thought you were out of the running for that one. Now these next are going to get a little bit harder. Okay, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Spitting image. Oh, oh, outrageous and wickedly funny foam and latex puppet. Okay, correct. DC Follies. Uh, shameless Sid and Marty Croft ripoff. Very good. Uh, oh, the mads are cold. Ooh. Hello, Button. Let's slam straight away into this week's invention exchange. Big noses. Uh, that's right, uh, the super schnoz. El grande posotros. What? Big noses. Uh, right, right. Uh, Durante, eat your heart out. Big honkers. Coming at ya. In 3D. Do I smell pie in the oven? Uh, not in this building. Say, doctor, sports scent tonight? Well, what's the point of the big noses anyway? Well, they're just really big, you know? Just think of the stuff you could do with them. Very useful. Now I can brown nose myself. Wow, you and I are kind of on the same wavelength. I thought of my invention exchange as being this big head. Who's that guy with the big head? Hey, Joe, can you big help me with my head. algebra? Oh, sure, head. no problem. It's big a snap with my new with big, big head. head. Well, say, Joel, do people make fun of you now that you have a big head? Oh, sure, people are naturally curious. But then I explain to them that I've got a really big head. Big head. No uh, Joel, are you in any pain? No, just a really big head. Oh. Well, I guess we can say that you got a big head there, huh? Yeah, you can. Big is all outdoors. It's real big, sirs. Yeah. What do you think? I knew a man in Chicago once that had a big head. Uh, no, it was nowhere near that big. Oh, doctor, I don't mean to stick my nose into your business. <laughs> <laughs> but shouldn't we really be getting to the movie? <laughs> uh, right you are, my long-nosed companion. Joel, your experiment this week is going to be like biting down on a double-edged razor blade. It's called Fugitive Alien 2, and it's every bit as stanky as part one. Send him the movie, Frank. Servo's dead! He's dying! It must have been that movie! Oh, man! We're losing him! A robot watches a bad film. It renders him unconscious. Next, on Emergency 911. Crow, you gotta stop oh, out of oh, Zabner oh, and help oh, me! Oh, it means the life of our friend Tom Servo! But I must finish Tech Wars of Venusia, must direct Star Trek Nine: The Search for Spock's Intelligence. Hooker's a good cop. Oh, he's a good cop. Oh, oh, you oh. listen to me and you listen good. I need you to snap out of Shander. I need you here now. I'm trying to fly back to the oh, I'm sorry, Joe. I don't know. I know, man. I know. Oh. But we got to get our little buddy out of the bone orchard, okay? Listen, I need you to run along and get the defibrillator. And I'm going to try to get our brother Tommy out of the Badlands. Okay, all right. Come all right. on, man. Come on back. All right. We're all pulling for you, buddy. <laughs> hey, hey, Joel, is the defibrillator the thing that looks like a vacuum cleaner or a thing that looks like the battery charger? It's a thing that looks like the battery charger. Now, would you get it together, man, and get out here? It means Tom Servo's life. All right, all right, all right. Here uh, okay, uh, hold up, buddy. He's coming. Come on, old Tom. Come on back, buddy. Clear. Clear. <laughs> Nothing. Oh. Clear. Clear. He's coming back! He's coming back! Come on, Tommy! Oh, 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 oh. Sean Dunson up to the plate now. Beautiful day here at Wrigley Field. Boy, let me tell you, perfect for an ice cold Budweiser. Oh, and you know Lincoln carpeting at that. Oh, 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 oh. Joel, Crow, what the heck happened to me? It's okay, buddy. You're among the living now. Oh, that was weird. I was walking down a long hallway, and at the end of it, there was a bright light. And a kind man with a beard reaching his hand out to me, beckoning me. And he looked at me as I got closer, and he said, Hey, buddy, can you spare some change? I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> oh, everything's a joke to you. 
That's great. We got commercial sign. We should have let you die. God, life. New from the Star Force line of action figures, it's Captain Joe, the boozy, brawling, bloated Bacchus III commander from the beloved Fugitive Alien series. Dizzy Gillespie, Cheek, Soul Temperley. Yes, he swaggers, he staggers, and he even talks. Um, the fellow would do a lot worse than throwing with a lot of Bacchus III. Set him up, Barkeep. Last and treble bar, not included. Yes, with your Captain Joe action figure, you'll be in a constant state of excitement while he's in a state of denial. Uh, I only drink on the weekend. I can drink. Existential void, we're prohibited. Sure, he's got a problem, but you don't have to watch him deteriorate. After all, you spent $9.95 for him. Tax and license, not included. You can have hours of fun as you organize a crisis intervention for Captain Joe. Captain Joe, I am not going to sit here and watch you deteriorate. Captain Joe, when I, Ken and I had you over to eat, you got drunk on cooking sherry and made a pass at me and threw a ball over the Malibu dream house. Captain Joe, dude, I loved you, but I'm not going to sit here and watch you cowabungle your life. And don't forget, kids, if Captain Joe refuses to deal with the issues, you can always try, try to, to kill him with a forklift. Twelve step, workbook optional, product not included in some boxes. Joe Namath, netted slingshot brief, sold separately. Yeah, All right, I'm feeling really good. This is the song starting off our medley, our favorite fugitive alien song. Don't try to kill us with a forklift, it won't take very long. Relax and sing along. Thank you. Thank you. You know, Tommy, a movie like Fugitive Alien can make you cry. And it can make you cry. Ah, but the thing I treasure most, and I'm speaking from the heart here, this mm -hmm. is totally off script, mm -hmm. is the music. Oh, this is so true, Mon Crow. Songs of love and adventure, and if I may, whimsy, no? Huh? <laughs> but you know, my favorite was the heartrending ballad in which the wistful Tammy pledges her love to Ken. It goes a little something like this. <clears throat> I love Ken, he is my sweet friend, and I love him. I love him. Ken, he is my sweet friend, and I love him. I'm so him. blue, cause I don't think Ken loves me. I'm so blue, cause I don't think Ken loves me. I'm all messed up inside, I might have to off I'm him. I'm all messed up inside, I might have to off I'll him. frame Rocky and get away scot-free. I'll frame Rocky. Rocky and get away scot I love Ken, he is my sweet friend, and I Fair love him. Shaka, Fair Shaka, I'm so blue, cause I don't think blue. Ken loves me. Sonia Martina, Sonia Martina, I'm all messed up inside, I might have to I saw three ships him. come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw I'll three frame ships come Rocky sailing in and get Away, Scott Free. I love Ken. I love Ken. All right, this band is marvelous, oh, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Cambod yeah. Brown and his band renowned. Oh, Give yeah. it up All for right. them. Yeah. Smoke it. Yeah. One, two, three. It's got a real cool feel. Huh. Yeah. Oh. Flying high with a Star Wolf. Oh. Ha! Oh. We're firing up the ship. Oh. And we're hitting the town okay, okay. with Groovy Ken and Tammy, yeah. swinging Rocky and Joe, oh, yeah. Wild Man. and those two other guys who we don't really know. Forget them. Lay down the boogie and head for the stars, man. Thanks, Joe. Oh, that come. was fun. But if I could get a little serious for a moment, well, I was wondering where we'd be without our boys and girls in shiny red plushes. It makes me proud to know that they're out there somewhere. Look in your dear place of misty dead, fighting for you and me, Captain Joe in the game. When they pass by, still to the boat goodbye, step to the next with die, to turn the blue. That's a really good chip. Did you want to do one with me? Oh. You want to do one with me? Let's all do it. We, we are going to find Sandy Frank. We just want to ask him why. We want to stick it to Sandy Frank and sit on his chest and gob on his face and make him cry. Yeah! Let's take it home. I'm feeling really good.
good. Feels so good, it shows. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, and that's our song. We hope that you enjoy it. And if you thought that it was stupid and dry, come on and kill us with a forklift. All we want to do with love from us to you is sing the Lesbian song. Let's see here, uh, Brewster's Millions, uh, Brian's Song. Oh, no, no, I couldn't handle Brian's Song again, Crow. When I saw that, I was dewy-eyed for a week. Oh, it didn't affect me that way at all. Well, you know, I had some other things going on in my life at the hey, time, guys, and I'd rather... What are you fun. doing? Oh, oh we're right. just looking through Leonard Moulton's movie guide, uh, thinking of shooting the Mads a memo, uh, hoping that they'd welcome some input on the experiment selection. Yeah, you know, they don't have to all be as bad as the one we saw today. <laughs> and maybe all our interests can be served, gang. It can be a win-win situation. I don't know about that. That, uh, the Mads seem to be pretty territorial about yeah. stuff like that. One thing you have to admit at the end of this movie that the uh, evil villain they had was uh, actually pretty evil, you know? Oh, you mean the one with the heavy rouge? Yeah, and the face that was tipped in a huge vat of whiteout. <laughs> yeah, that guy. <laughs> I know what you mean, Joel. He scared me so much, I almost started watching the movie. Yeah, well, he was kind of like uh, somebody's idea of everything evil all rolled into one, you know? Well, you got a point there, Joel. Kind of brought together the terrifying aspects of Nazis and mimes. And Marsha Mason. <laughs> oh, ah. or Marilyn Quayle. Oh, there you oh, go. Oh. Well, listen, if you guys wanted to, how would you make your ultimate evil person? Who would it be made up of? Mm, let's see. I'd combine the Wolfman and the Mothra and the bad Lee Marvin from Cat Balloon. Oh, Woo. yeah, that's great. Uh, I'd take Tom T. Hall, uh, add Roy Clark, and a little Donna Fargo. Oh, the possibilities. Richard Nixon, Richard III, and Keith Richards. You know, but according to the Fellowship of the White Boar, Richard III was actually a fine yeah, man you know, and a good I sovereign. I don't even really think of Ke Keith Richards as that evil. Oh, know. but he's so scary. Oh. Richard Basar, Richard Basar, Richard Basar. Uh, but Gypsy, you uh, you like Richard Basar. It's nice, girl. <laughs> how about uh, Howie Mandel, uh -huh. uh, David Brenner, and Gallagher? Yeah, or Ooh. David Brenner, Andy Rooney, David Brenner, and a ferret. Oh, oh yeah. That one stung. Originally, anyway. I hate Mondays. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Anyway, I think we need something kind of uplifting, so I brought along these letters here. All right. Uh, this first one, let's put that on still store cam. Uh, this huh. first one comes from an Eddie Hogan. Of New Jersey, he writes, Hello, my name is Eddie, and I would like to join your information club. As you can tell, I'm not very good at good, I, I do not have very good writing, and I'm oh, already sorry. 13. Uh oh, that's too bad. It's over. Yeah. I hate school, homework, teachers, and cheesy movies. Good, well, good attitude, Eddie. Good. I'm a big fan, and I think you're all funny, even Gypsy. I watch your show on Saturdays. I would watch them Monday through Friday, but they're on at 10 a.m. and I'm in school falling asleep. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's nice. let's get another that, one. That, that was really uplifting, Joel. Yeah. I gotta yeah. tell you. This one seems happier. Let's put this one up on Still oh, Story. Eddie, you might want to nice. get into breakfast. Nice drawing. Uh, cool. uh, anyway, well, this one has Tom Servo saying. What are we, cowboys? I'd like to shoot that intro. And then Gypsy's <laughs> oh, there like saying, me. Richard Basehart, Ram Chips, huh? Yep, that's Ooh. her. And then Crow saying, shut up, I can't take any more. Get on with it already, jeez. Yeah, and then it's got up. me saying, it well, it can also double as a can opener. And then it's got the mad saying, file this, Frank. And then Frank's saying, I will. I will file this. I will file it. That's really a nice rendition of Frank, too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. That's pretty good. Yeah, those people weren't even at all, were they? You know, I came yeah. up with another one. Coffee, ice cream, paper cuts, and Dan Haggerty! Oh, ah! yeah. Wow, you're just getting weird in that results in creativity. What do you think, sirs? Well, Martin Boober, I hardly think you're qualified to be considering the nature of evil. <laughs> Push the button, Frank. Hey, I like Tom T. Hall. Oh, Frank, think evil. I love baby duck oh frank and you're just embarrassing ducks. me now baby cookie 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 baby baby no <laughs> oh.
Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. These are my bloods, Tom Servo and Crow. Yo. And we word. decided to take the prefixes, root words, and suffixes of Mex-American food, add some new food types, mix them all up, and do what Madison Avenue does and find a whole new way to love the same old crap. Yeah, like the pundits say, invent a new kind of Mexican junk food and the world will make a run for your border. Right, check this <laughs> one out, okay? Oh, Oh, look, Ooh. spicy, peachy, battered chunga. Oh, that would be a spicy, lightly battered peach and a delicious, chewy chunga. What the hell is a chunga? Hey, well, come you know, on, it's leave him alone. He's yeah. just getting into it. Try Sorry. this one, Crow. Oh, uh, chickeny Gatorade Arita. <laughs> Crispy, dead chicken, mm. Gatorade marinade, all wrapped in a tasty, toasty taquerito pita. Ooh. Mm. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, look, Bel mm -hmm. Grande, cheesy. Did we use cheesy yet? Uh, it, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, there it okay, is. Okay, okay, beefy, blue steak, uh -oh. taco. Oh, good, we're on a roll. Bel Roco, Poco, Loco, Rococo. Hey, I'm running out of room. That's okay, keep flowing with a taco. <laughs> oh, it's Coco Moco, good. Oh, hey. Oh, lay off. Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Oh, well, here's seconds. my favorite right oh, here. Check this out. Okay. Beefy, mm -hmm. peanut buster, uh -huh. Belgrande. Oh, you get a Mr. Misty Meaner for that beater. All right. Uh. All right. Uh. Good night. Uh. <laughs>
We are compelled to look on the Mr. Moniker as merely a whimsical, contrived characterization in the spirit of Peter Pan, played convincingly by the late Murray Martin and the late Kathy Rigby and the late Sandy Duck. Get to the, the point, Mr. Bur Robot. The point, sir, is breasts. Uh -huh. Yes, Mr. B. Natural had breasts. A decidedly unnatural thing for a man to have, don't you think, Mr. Servo? Uh -huh. One one takes into account the short jacket, the shiny leotard, the wide hips, unless one is wildly confused, as my colleague seems to be, one concludes, naturally, that Mr. B. Natural is indeed a wonderful, sprightly, albeit annoying, woman. Thank you, Mr. T-Robot. Your response, Mr. Servo. <coughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Utley. Um, uh, ignoring the hermetic contumely held to me by my less than erudite confrere, uh, um, no doubt places a thin veil before an attributious temperament. Uh, Mr. Servo, uh, I'm warning you, no William F. Buckley impersonations under threat of a point reduction. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Mr. Be Natural, what a guy. Yes, Mr. Be Natural is a decidedly modern man. Ignoring the constrictions placed upon him by modern society, Mr. Be Natural dresses as he does, just as he sees fit. If this means dressing in a shimmeringly attired in a powder blue note spangled jacket and climbing through the windows of young troubled middle schoolers to play clarinet with them till the wee hours, waking them the next day to whisper in their tender ears, I say more power to him. Mr. Cyril, you're evading the question. If by this, sir, you mean that Mr. Be Natural is a man, I challenge you to come up with any condemning evidence to the contrary. They named him Mr. and I, for one, have faith that they know what they were doing. You might as well just ask me to prove that a fish is a fish. Gentlemen, it just is. As for these phantom breasts Mr. Robot claims to have seen, I say fooey car fluey. Perhaps he's been in space too long. Gentlemen, Mr. Be Natural is just that. Here's wishing we could all be a little bit more like him. I yield the floor. Mr. T. Boat, you have 20 minutes to rebut. Mr. Servo, you have got to be kidding me. Let's assume for the moment that Mr. Be Natural is a man. My heavens, what a confusing message to send to little kids. Already there's the painful feeling of isolation, the horrible scarring acne, and Mr. Servo here would have us place a cross-dressing man with a clarinet slap dab in their bedrooms. Why not men in little peep Bo Peep costumes with stinky cigars explaining the facts of life to our unsuspecting daughters? I, for one, Mr. Not Servo, like... your rebuttal. Yes, yes, why not, Mr. Crow? I don't think we should stop there. Let's break down all the barriers. Hairy men in Spartan costumes holding big sails on shady boulevards. Naked jockstrap wrestling. Big uh, gentlemen, I have commercial sign. I'm sorry. Who's that guy with the big head? Big head. Big head. Who's that guy with the big, big head? Big head. Big head. Big head. Big, big head. head. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Okay, yeah, that was pretty cool. good, but let's try it again, and let's try to stay in the same key and begin at the same time, okay? All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. A one, a two, a one, two... Well, let's try it again. Okay. Mm -hmm. A one, a two, a one, two. Crow, would you cut that out? I'm not doing anything. Uh, Joel, it's not us. It sounds like it's coming from outside the ship. Oh, oh my goodness. Hey, hey, Cambot, give me rocket number nine quick. I want to see an exterior of the ship. Oh, oh, there you are. I, uh, I heard music. Uh, say, you, uh, weren't talking about me, were you? Oh, uh, get your head. Oh, hi, hi, glad good to see you again. How you been, buddy? <laughs> yeah, uh, did you ever find out about that whole share rib thing? <laughs> hey, uh, Crow, come on, take it easy. Mr. Man Manning doesn't have time for your little shenanigans. Hey, you know what? We were just watching an experiment about you, Glenn. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. I walked all the way over from the other side of the planet. You know, I've been picking up uh, transmissions of your experiments since I saw you last time. I had a whole head full of goofy dental work. You know, I'm a little torqued off about this whole cheesy sequel thing. Yeah, we were all wondering why you weren't in this one. That's what I'm going on about. You know, I create this role, do this work in the first film. Everybody loves my work. Excuse me. And then, you know, everything's going great. Bert and I are good friends, and then the studio's gonna do a sequel. I figure it's a done deal, basically, right? I mean, I'm the perfect man for the job. But then, the phone stops ringing. People I thought were my friends don't even look me in the eye anymore. And then, and it, uh, I, they pulled a Roger Moore on me, is what they did. I thought I was gonna be in the film, and then, and then nothing, and I... I'm sorry, I, it's show business. I could, I could go on for hours, but I, I didn't come here to bore. I, I'm sorry. Well, why did you come here, big guy? Oh, it was because uh, I had something... Uh, I forgot it. I don't have any pockets. It's kind of 
Hydrogen. Whoa. Oh. Getting kind of a weird signal there. It's coming, probably coming off your satellite dish. It's, uh, it's Golden Girls. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hang around outside here if you don't mind. I kind of have a thing for B. Arthur. I, ooh. I'll just hang and wait. Oh! 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 I am James Ungentine Kitla, and I predict your future. These are the events that will change and illuminate your daily life, except you aren't there yet. Future date, 1998. Kitla predicts personal helicopters mean freedom of travel for everyone. Future date, 2105. Kitla predicts richly fulfilled future Famulites will enjoy a dinner of shrimp paste underwater in aqua domes. How? Why? They'll travel to work and play in personal two-man subs, thanks to the miracle acrylic dome. All right. Let's work it now. Future date 2213. Kitler predicts Alan Alda revealed as Antichrist, and you are there. Plus these extras. Pope becomes grandmother. Earl Schreib unable to paint any car for 1995. And the average American will consume 15 times their weight in snow. Wow, take me to the bridge. Future date 2525. Kitler predicts if man is still alive, if woman can survive, they will find. A stamp made in the image of Martha Ray. Cradle ports put you in touch with your world. Refreshing peppermint soap proves unsurpassed for 18 million uses. All mild, all one. Dilute for baby, bath, beach, body, shampoo, sauna, and Chinese Essene burial ritual. Dilute, dilute, okay, all one. Miracle of universe, impossible below pH three. Absolute clean, apply Vaseline oil, butter, or cream. Insert teaspoon, juicy lemon pulp. Oh, gotta go. Has anyone seen him? No, God damn There he is! Oh, Tally Ho! Oh, oh boy, I gotta admit, guys. Oh, a movie that bad. Yep, that was bad. Bad city, Arizona. Bad O-Rama. I think it made me kind of drowsy. Bad to the b-b-b-bone. Born to be bad. Bad, bad, bad. Born under a bad sign. Been bad so damn long. Yeah, trap piece. Mm. Taste mm. anything? Mm. Uh, well, I, I, I think I've tasted something like that somewhere. It tastes kind of like um, uh, Fritos or a tuna fish. <laughs> yeah, I made it with my little tone permanent. Oh. Joe, what? Oh! Give me a Tom Cyril, you try some. Um, uh, oh. mm, hey, that one has a tunnel of drugs. Yeah, phenobarbital, mm. enough to knock you out for about mm. eight hours. Mm. Oh, come on, you guys. I'm just kidding. We got to read a letter. Yeah, but Joel, okay. it's always funny until someone gets killed. Yeah, particularly. That one hit hard. Ouch. Anyway, this one is uh, a letter. Let's put that on Still Store Cambot. And it says, greetings from the Colorado State Prison. Say. Hey. A few of us guys here watch your show. Great. Chris is laughing, so please keep up the good work. Right. Your show makes during time a little bit easier. Lo your loyal fans, Anthony, Dave, and Jack. Ooh, and, great. Uh, That's cool. Uh, come on. on. I mean that. Right. Uh, free your mind, my brothers. Uh, anyway, and sisters. Over to you, Glenn. Okay. Uh, how does this work? Uh, put this up on Still Store, Cambot, or Rocket Number Nine, I guess it would be. And this one says Dear Joel, Tom, Servo, Crow, and Gypsy. I like Crow because he talks a lot. I've heard he does. No wonder he has a big, long mouth. And I like Gypsy because she has a purple mouth. But the guy I like the most is Joel. He sleeps during the movies. Who can blame him? And I think Tom Servo is cute. And there's that little picture there. This is from Deborah M. Oh, that's a cute kid. You know, I used to have little fans like this before my career was cut short. Hey, Glenn, thanks for the help. Anytime, friend, I'll be right here if you need me. Sure, thanks, and good luck. Just give me a holler. I uh, I won't be far. You know, mi casa es su casa. What a sweet guy. Yeah, what do you think, sirs? Well, Tom Thumb, I think I'll be at the bakery. And as for you, these Thorazine waffles should get your day off to a heavily medicated start. I had jello today. Just start running, Frank. <laughs> Gypsy, uh, 
I can't hold this position forever. I'm cramping. Hurry up. All right, next whoa, time Gypsy whoa. does the special effects and I'll direct. Quiet on the set. In this scene, Crow, you're a yeah. little girl and you climbed up on a stack of boxes yeah. containing highly flammable pajamas. Yeah. Okay, action. Make them hot. Fire up. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I've allowed the bots to tape a spontaneous funny home video for America's goofiest home videos. So here's to risking your life in the interest of some national TV exposure. Let's go. Hey, where's Magic Voice? Ah, uh, she walked off the set. She's sulking in her trailer. Quiet! Stand character, crew. Oh, okay. You're a three-year-old girl now in a box of flammable pajamas. Start acting like it. Oh. And it was a fire, Tom! Fire in the hole! Oh. Oh. I, I changed my mind! Oh. Oh. Nope, it's you all right, Crow. <laughs> really? Oh, okay. okay, let's watch the tape, see how it turned out, okay? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, that, that, that you're right. Is that's pretty funny. funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Now, uh, how are you feeling about your arm? It's all gnarled. I can make you a new one if you like. No, I, I, I like it all gnarled like that. It looks real tough. Tough. Oh, looks okay, tough. well, uh, <laughs> the meds are calling. <laughs> Ah, uh, it does my heart good to see Crow burn beyond all recognition. <laughs> oh, Frank, uh, it's time to reveal this week's invention exchange. Oh, accept the pain, Frank. You've heard the expression, that's a hard pill to swallow. Well, our invention exchange this week is just that, some hard pills to swallow. <laughs> you see this pill right here? That should be easy to swallow, shouldn't it, Frank? Yes, it should be easy, except for the three-pronged fish hook attached to it. Uh, this pill, I'm not gonna kid you, this is very difficult to swallow. It's a not-so-tiny time pill, complete with a living gerbil. Terry, no. <laughs> Oh, Terry, yes. If you can keep it down, you have a pet that knows you inside and out. Uh, turn, Frank, and cough. If you have trouble keeping one pill down, try our pill pill necklace of picric acid, 105 capsules on a string, keep your gag reflex active till the cows come home. The longer it takes to swallow, the harder it gets. Yes, and the children, the children Not love the children. vitamin shapes, like, shaped like cartoons, whimsical shapes, whimsical shapes, and wouldn't it be hard on all those Flintstone kids if their favorite cartoon vitamin came, turn Frank. Life size. Hmm? Hmm? Balls in your court, Joel. <laughs> well, that is dark, sirs. Well, anyway, we've gotten together and come up with this celebrity home appliances like this. The Emilio Esta Pez. <laughs> Just lift his head and out comes real Pez. Hey, mm. tastes like real chalk. Like mm. I said, real Pez. <laughs> hey, check it out. Here's Tom Servo modeling the Jimmy J.J. Walker. Keeps me walking, standing upright, turns an ordinary stroll in dynamite! Hey, Ooh, go on the Sullivan <laughs> Show and get canned with this, your own Jackie Mason jar. Who's lifting my top? A Gentile would do it differently. He's lifting my top, it would be the thrill of his life. A Jewish man could lift the top and say, oh, hey, I'm a Jewish, I'm canning tomatoes, I don't understand it, I got a Mason jar. And oh, finally, huh? massage your friend with this. The Charlie Callis Massager. What do you think, sirs? I think you die, Joe. <laughs> well, your experiment this week is going to be hard to keep down. It's called The Unearthly, and it stars John Carradine and Tor Johnson, plus two stinky shorts. Frank, shut up! Enjoy! This is a story of a robot named Crow. Can you guess what Crow is thinking? Crow is thinking hard, or as hard as he can think anyway, on how the satellite got so darn clean. It wasn't clean this morning. Think hard now, Crow. Think really hard, you poor dope. Scan that scrap heap you call a brain and try to find some piteous shred of hey, thought or something. Hey, knock some... it off. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> ah, yes, there it is. Who does these things when we're too lazy, too bloated on dinners of rich food and generous portions of our own gargantuan ego? Who debugs the massive computer control center because our own enfeebled brains can barely add fractions? Who provides the warm, inviting water in which you bathe your filthy, oil-stained carcass? 
who goes on mind-bendingly dangerous missions outside in the cold, black void of unforgiving space, while you sit inside, cozy as Alistair Cook, sipping cocoa and watching Tiny Tunes. Pinch yourself hard, Mr. Robot, you deserve it. You think you're all sunshine and goodness, but you're nothing but dirt between the toes of an evil troll, that's right, who periodically changes the plutonium rods in the nuclear reactor deep in the bowels of the ship, while you feast on gooey handfuls of fiddle faddle and play hopscotch and marbles, and it's spring and the little goat foot hey, the now whistle just star. a dog blasted minute here. What are you trying laying it all on me for? You're the laziest robot I've ever seen. Oh, I see. It's me now, is it? Too painful to look into that deep, dark, truthful mirror, eh? You make me sick. I thought you looked sick, but it's always hard to tell with you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, j- <coughs> Oh, I, 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 I gotta go clean my room. I'm gonna go clean your room, too. It's gonna help me clean my room. The unearthly. Man, they should call it the unacting. <laughs> You're right, TV's wisecracking crow. But you know, at least one of the cast members is a decent actor who's done some good work in the past. Exactly, John Carradine. That's why I've prepared this artist rendering of his life and times in the film. Come on, John Carradine did a lot of stuff. He worked with John Ford in Stagecoach. He was in Drums Along the Mock. He was the preacher in The Grapes of Wrath. Come on. Joel, you're missing a point. We're not talking about John Carradine. We're talking about Tor Johnson. That's Lord right, Johnson. and using some advanced technology called the Video Toaster, we've put together a little presentation that we like to call the Many Faces of Tor Johnson. <laughs> Kambach, give us a nice reveal there. Yeah. Uh, in The Unearthly Alone, Tor Johnson runs the gamut of emotion from anger to tenderness to bemusement and back to heartbreak. There's heartbreak. Yeah. But you know, the Tor Johnson canon previous to The Unearthly displays the same versatility that was the hallmark of his acting career. Why, here he is in the title role of the acclaimed film version of King Lear. And here he is in both as both Felix and Oscar in the film version of The Odd Couple. But perfa- perhaps Tor's greatest tour de force was playing the multiple roles in the TV remake of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Oh, whoa, whoa, he's never been in a John Ford movie. Well, as a matter of fact, Joel, he had one of the starring roles in John Ford's She Tore a Yellow Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I was sorry I even doubted you guys. Never apologize, mister. It's a sign of weakness. <laughs> we got you guys oh, we got oh, What in the... Oh, you guys. We're zany. Which results in creativity. Yeah, we thought we could shake off our own cabin fever by playing a little game. Yeah, but uh, most of our games are missing their pieces. So we combined them to yeah. make our own game based on this week's movie. Want to help us play a game? Sure, what can I do? Well, we're all set up. You can read the directions. Yeah. Oh, these? Right okay. The, yeah, that's, that's, all right. Yeah. Oh, I can tell you guys put these... It's kind of an amalgam of a bunch of different yeah, instructions. They're, they're mm-hmm. fun. Easy. Okay, gotcha. Equipment. A uh, game board showing the many rooms of John Carradine's unearthly mansion. Did that. that looks good. Yeah, hold on. Okay, each player chooses a colored token or marker. Oh, 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 I'm the shoe. I'm always the shoe. Dibs okay. on the shoe. I'm the iron. I got the iron. I don't want the pig this time. Okay, you're the iron. Yep, yep, yep. And the iron. I'll be what playing my Captain Kirk King my from my Franklin Mint Collection chess set. Oh, over I forgot there. about that one. Okay, what's PC next? Okay, oh, firsties. We roll for firsties. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. right. Each player rolls the dice in the... Tor Johnson pop o yeah. After the okay, first player has been uh, selected, but before you remove his pituitary gland, the player to his or her left loses one turn and then proceeds to go. go. Right, so we can so start. let's go. We so can roll out. And into then it. Yeah. Let's go right each into it. player starts out with a billion dollars and half a dozen hotels, but immediately loses them when they dump Havana for Marla. Marla. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 so let's go, so, let's go, let's roll the dice. Let's go, right in there. The player Pop-o-matic. landing Pop-o-matic. on a plot stopper square must go back to the beginning of the movie yeah. or play the organ for five minutes. All players must uh-huh. stay within the boundaries of the house. Players mm-hmm. going outside the house or in any way suggesting another location put the film over budget and must forfeit one turn and pay the player to his or her right. The f- sum not equal to the net points made on the back, back end of the deal. Right. Okay, okay. We know so that. Spin, okay, let's roll, roll. Uh, Here we now, go. Pop a man, play, no, hold on. Oh. Players caught on the stairway lose one turn. Uh-huh. Players caught in a meaningless two shot with John Carradine lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Yeah. Okay. Players who lose one turn. Lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Okay, okay let's go. Yeah, we're we're gonna gonna lose 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 Wait a second. Players who oh, lose the breakfast me. argument with the Palooka advance to the woman's bedroom. Uh-huh. Palooka's making advances on the woman. Lose, lose one, one turn. turn. Thank okay. you, Joel. You know, we wrote these rules, so we know yeah. them. We can just okay. get to them as a go. Let's go. Just, right. okay. go. Okay. Hold, on. Hold, hold on. Dialogue on. cards. Oh, Players landing on the dialogue box must draw one card. Players must then read a passage of 
dialogue. Yeah, but you don't need we'll to do that because we'll yeah. we come around to the dialogue cards. Okay. Okay. We'll land on that square oh, and then. Oh my right. God. Okay, hold on. Here it is. Okay. Dialogue. Woo. Here we go. As John Carradine. Let's see okay. here. I'm glad to hear you're willing to help. You're a clever young man. I've decided you can be of assistance to me. Pretty good charity. Man, yeah. I'm real handy to have around, especially if you need someone to bandage okay. a gunshot wound. John Carradine. Okay, game uh, time. That's Joel, not exactly Joel. what I had in Joel, mind. I said play. last night that we'd have hey, a little hey, talk. Hey, Joel, the, the commercial man, sign light is flashing. Let's out, just listen. play the John game. Carradine. What could be so wrong with just I've all? I've dedicated just my leave. life to a project that most Please, scientists Mister, can have we considered back? beyond the realm of possibility. Believe me, it's not impossible to the true scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Holy buckets, what a cock and bull hoodoo picture show that was, eh, fellas? Yeah, <laughs> boy, those old mossbacks. Give me the Jim Jam, something awful. Yeah, I'd give that honk up to Nixie, but hey, we're really footing it on the lingo. Yeah, huh? yeah we can ship peg away with a petless French, eh, pal yeah, of mine? Yeah, we're going <laughs> hi-hat in a big way, fellas, Woo. huh? Hot, Whoa. sweet, and filthy. Yeah, yeah. okay. Woo. Now zip it, you mutton heads. Ah. We got a bug letter to sling, okay? Man, ain't that shit. Yeah, Woo. let's put it boosted cam out, okay? Who? Okay. Okay, oh. here we go. Ah, says, it says what's it here, what's it says here, Dear Joel and the bot. Hey, hey that's, that's me! Right. <laughs> button it, okay, button it, you gums. Okay, it says here, I have a couple of questions about Tom Soivo. Yeah. Foist, why can't we see through Tom's head when you guys are watching the movie, oh, even well. though his head is transparent? Huh. Hmm. Well, what, what? And second, how can Tom even watch the movie when he doesn't have any peepers? Well, what, don't what? that beat the Dutch. What, what, yeah, what, what, yeah, what, what? I think old Laughing Boy's pulling a fast yeah. one on us, is hey, what I think. what gives? I ain't no bad pill. Honest, fellas, you've been done up brown. Ah, cut with the baby act. Come so, on, Clyde. This mug was gonna give us the boost, huh? No, I'm gonna no, cut up videos with his old no, pallies. No, Why, no. I oughta. Hey, Crow, routine 27. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 we're just pulling your pants, Gumpy. Take it easy. Yeah, boy, oh boy, we really had you by the fat end, pal. Oh, you <laughs> Samson! Hey, hey, foot it, boys. His nibs is calling on the other line. So what's it to you, Einstein? Hmm? Look, you bombastic biscuit boy. Any more of this faux dead-end kid's patois, and I'll teach you the real meaning of Lexa. Or... Hey, boss, this is good grub. That Padre, he's not a half bad egg. You know, I could really get into eating grub like this if I could be a junior G-man. Frank, why must you always go on with your little... Hey, boss, do your Leo Gorsi. No, I'm not going to do my... No, I'm not going to do my... Do your Leo Gorsi, come no, on. No, Frank, come on. Frank, come once on. again, I'm going to have to, to kill you. <laughs> you want to run that by me one more time? You'll run that by you one more time. Uh, yeah, you know, kill us. Boost, ice, whack, scrag, douse, stifle, 86, uh, slip to Roscoe, chill, dust, yank, toss a little kickshaw, Roger. Yeah, it's Harry Connick's mm. girlfriend. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, look over here. More Christmas catalogs. L.L. Mm. Bean, Neiman mm. Marcus, Monkey Wards, Fisher Nuts, Edmund Scientific. Oh, Uncle Bob's Produce Ranch. Uh, for the traditional Yuletide cabbage. Right you are. <laughs> yeah. And for the elite little ones, the magical world of F.A.O. Schwartz. Parents, remember, kids always know best, so get them whatever they want. Look, a $900 taffeta octopus outfit. Thanks, Dad. Oh, and look over here. A golf ball polager, only 400 bucks at the sharper image. Glad tidings, glad tidings. You know, Crow, when I see these catalogs and their enchanting, suitable for framing covers, I'm reminded of the true joy of a New England Christmas. A gentle snow, all of us snuggled into a blanket as we race home to our cozy hearth and warm fire in our furry little Surrey. Hey, in fact, there it is. What? Uh, only $5,900 from Neiman Marcus. What? A furry little Surrey. Oh, <laughs> let me see. Wow. You know, Tommy, that. when I see these catalogs, all I can see are 800,000 acres of decimated old growth forest. Oh, Crow, is that really the Christmas spirit? Commercial sign in 15 seconds. Hey, you guys, what are you doing? Oh, just looking at catalogs, dreaming. Hmm. Oh, have you guys thought about what you want for Christmas? Yeah, meet me. I want a Ted Williams signature inflatable bathtub pillow. Oh, Gypsy. I want a pony. Hmm. Oh, Gypsy, we don't have room on please, this ship for please. a pony. <laughs> no, can't do it. What about you, Crow? I want to decide who lives and who dies. Huh? Oh, I don't know. Commercial, Commercial sign in five, so. four, three, two. Commercial sign now. We'll be right back. You're next. Beat nose. Hey. Frank, it's time to reveal this week's invention exchange. And boy, is it ever gonna sting. Mm. Sting is right. 
The holiday season is here, the boss is on vacation, and we've gone crazy! Now, I know from experience that nothing chafes a kid's hinder more than his request for a neat toy maligned into a safe and practical gift. Enter the Wish Squisher. Yeah, what you do is you take a really cool toy that any kid would dig, like these uh, video cassette cartridge games. You take it, stick it through the Wish Squisher, and it comes Voila. out as annoying and practical as any gift from Aunt Vida. Check it out. Underoos that won't fit for two years. And what kid wouldn't love is a gift? More money than he or she will ever deserve. But then, suddenly, it starts to get weird. The rules change. You start to feel kind of bad. Yes. Voila. What was once the bright promise for the future becomes your four-year-old sister's raisin collection. And nothing, and I mean nothing, is more fun than racing slot cars, just like this one around the Christmas tree. But no! <laughs> what was once your first draft grade A choice from your parents as a gift becomes... Socks. Socks, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, what was once crummy, speedball, black and green, rayon encrusted, uncomfortable socks becomes... Run it through again, Frank. Okay, running it through. Wish squisher. Yep, it becomes a gift certificate for a stationery store. Joel? You know, Joel, I was wondering, do you think if they sent that really crummy gift through the machine again, it might turn into something neat? Hush, boy. You'll anger the overlords. Hello, sirs. Our invention exchange this week is based on our Yuletide musings about what would be on the island of misfit toys based on Rankin Bass's production of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Who Check ever it. heard of a Charlie in the box? Exactly. Check it out. Here's a new contribution. Uh, buttery sweet poster dolls. Ooh. Yeah. Or mm. play Patrick Swayze's Roadhouse board game. Don't Become a highly paid Tai Chi wielding, philosophically alert bouncer like Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Shake the dice. Get in a potentially dangerous situation and use the catchphrase cards to lash out at your opponents with sayings like, It's my way or the highway. Hurts, don't it? And you're my new Saturday night thing. Yeah. Or you can have absolutely no fun whatsoever with this easy bake foundry. The light bulb powered blast furnace turns inexpensive big iron you find around the house into high grade steel that's ready for market. Okay, and uh, what do you have for us, Gypsy? <coughs> what? Oh, come on, open come your on. mouth. Come on. <coughs> oh, 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 my oh, God. Oh, yeah, it got hairball. Oh, 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 no, oh, it's oh, not. It's oh, Gypsy's oh, contribution to the new island of misfit toys, Mr. Mesh Potato Head. Oh, puke. Ugh. What do you think, sirs? Ours was better. Ooh. And now a deep 13 holiday presentation. Piazzadora in Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Shield your eyes, Frank. Thank you. Oh, oh my God, 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 God. God. You know, I think it's kind of uh, hot to be wearing these scarves. In oh, here. Yeah. well, the scarves are must. You can't go caroling without a scarf. Catch your death. Man, you were like one of those kids I remember in uh, high school that used to sell the most candy bars for the marching band. Yeah, you know? and you yeah. president of the swing yeah, choir, too. Definitely. Uh, thanks, Joe Robinson. Thanks, Tom Servo. <laughs> what a kiss up this guy. Uh, okay, now, if you'll all look at your sheet music, uh, we can rehearse my new song. You wrote a Christmas song? Hey, there's no tradition like a new tradition. <laughs> Wait a minute, let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas? Uh, yeah, yeah, based on my favorite movie, Roadhouse. Come on, what the heck does Patrick Swayze have to do with Christmas? Hey, you keep Christmas in your way and let me keep it in mine, okay? <sighs> Uh, come on, sir. It seems like a nice enough sentiment. We can give it a shot. Come on. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Twelve eight time. Uh, uh -huh. Key of A flat major. Oh, uh, Cambot, shoot him the tune. Uh, okay. You'll just have to stay with me, everybody. Okay. Uh, your parts are written out. Let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas by Crow T Robot. <clears throat> Paul, let's have a Patrick Swayze, Swayze Christmas. Christmas. Right. <clears throat> Hit it, Cambot. Oh, oh, I start. I yeah. get it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay. Pick it up. Fire. <clears throat> Open up your heart and let the Patrick Swayze Christmas in. We'll gather at the roadhouse with our next of kin. And Santa can be our regular Saturday night thing. We'll decorate a bar stool and gather round and sing. Let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas this year. 
or we'll tear your throat out and kick oh, you man. in the ear. Oh, hold it, hold it, a cam, but stop it. Uh, Crow, Jeez. I don't know if I think this is an appropriate sentiment anymore <laughs> for Christmas. Hey, what, like a good action sequence don't belong at Christmas? Well, no, it's just that I've never heard of an action sequence in A Christmas Carol before. Well, yeah. well then, grab hold of your socks and read on, Joe Robinson. Okay, okay. pick it up from measure 20, Kamba. <clears throat> Lovely intro, though. Very tasteful. Thank you. I like that. It's my way or the highway this Christmas at my bar. I'll have to smash your kneecaps if you bastards touch my car. I got the word that Santa has been stealing from the till. I think that that right jolly old elf better make out his will. Oh, let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas one and all. And this can be the haziest. How long before it becomes a standard? I think you gotta come with me. Come on. Ah! We'll be right back. Save a leg for me. <laughs> Man, this Santa Claus Conquers the Martians is really depressing. It yeah. makes it really feel like Christmas. Ho, ho, no. Ho. Uh, yeah, I feel jolly just like old St. Nick. Ho, 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 ho. Uh, Ricky, get me a scotch. I'm suffering Christmas depression. Uh, hey, you guys. Joel, Joel, couldn't we see a more cheerful movie, like maybe The Sorrow and the Pity? Oh, uh, well, I got that all covered, you guys. I, uh, I... Uh, trick Frank into sending up a bunch of movies up here, wow. and it's something we can watch after the experiment. Let's Great. see, we got uh, Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Oh, wow. are you sure that's not the fish who saved Pittsburgh? Yes, my little Huckleberry friend. We oh, also nice. got Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Oh, no. Jim Backus lives. <laughs> and uh, Frosty the Snowman. Frosty the Snowman! Jackie Vernon did not die in vain! All right, we've got uh, Rankin Bass's uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. All right, fertilized diet to the Hey, 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 hey. Uh, he's not dead. Oh, sorry, bro. Yeah, and then we've got uh, a Charlie Brown Christmas. Oh, boy, I love that one. Especially uh, the part where they eat all those Dolly Madison cakes. Mm, you know, yeah. uh, cuckoo, zingers, Fuzzies, Oh, wait a second. Uh, wait, a, wait a minute. Th those were the commercials. Oh. It, actually, without the Dolly Madison commercials, the entire show is about nine minutes long. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, we got a oh, few others here. We've got uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Wow, really great. Yeah, I love that one. Boy. Yeah, oh, well, don't don't get too excited. It's the lame uh, Marlo Thomas version uh, here. We shame also on got you, uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Yeah, right, uh, right, no, right. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's the uh, David Hartman one. Oh, oh, God, shame on you. Well, we got a few others here, though. That's kind of going to the bottom of the bag here. Kind of some low budget ones. Cool. The Christmas that totally ruled. It's uh, oh. about a curmudgeonly old man that learns the true meaning of Christmas. Fresh idea. The Christmas that wasn't that bad, which is about a curmudgeonly old woman who learns the true meaning of Christmas. Say. And then there's the Christmas that really kicked ass, which is about a curmudgeonly old man oh. and a curmudgeonly old woman that learns the true meaning oh, of well, Christmas. That Okay, everybody got their Christmas essays ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, yeah, let's go. who wants to go first? Oh, 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 You want to go first? Oh, 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 you want to go first, buddy? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Christmas Oratory, oh, wait, um, a Christmas Editorial by Crow T. Robot. <clears throat> Don't you just get on with that for crying out. Sorry, I was with... <clears throat> All right, uh, okay. Uh, Christmas editorial by Crotee Robot. Uh, I know I already said that. Um, okay, what's the big deal with Santa's elves anyway? What happens to all those dumb wooden um, trains and horses and cars? No ever kid gets them. Um, these are the kind of toys Grandma drags out at Christmas to decorate the house, which smells like her feet no matter how much essence of Yuletide light bulb ring oil she uses. Uh, mm -hmm. But I digress. Um, uh, uh, no, these are the real misfit toys. They end up in Marshall Fields window displays and FAO Schwartz catalogs or in overpriced little gift shops in Vermont and Door County, Wisconsin. <clears throat> my message is for the elves. <clears throat> 
gentlemen, what is the problem? Why don't we ever see you in front of a circuit board loading microchips into a Sega Vision with your little wooden hammers? Elf labor short? The good people of Macau are eager to take your prototypes and turn them into 100,000 knockoffs. Elves and Santa take an example from the Keeblers. Now there are some fairies who know how to market. In closing, uh, step out of the legend days, fellas, and join the century of the Pacific. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah. The end. Good yeah. job, Carl. Uh, OK, uh, who's next, Tom? Uh, my turn. Okay. OK. Thank you, Mr. Doe. <clears throat> Okay, my essay is entitled A Child's Christmas in Space. Uh, let me set the mood here. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. There. Ah. It's quiet in the cold of our own little orbit, starless and Bible black. And as I look down on the big blue bean we would call home, I think it's so near, yet... Oh, I wish on that star, and I hope that in a little snow-covered house with a warm hearth and a loving family, maybe some kid is looking up tonight and wishing upon us. Oh! <gasps> And how I hope sweet Santa will fly by tonight Cause if he does I'm gonna reach right out and hug that big guy Oh for the sound of hooves against the steel hull of the ship Oh to see the rosy face of Santa in the portal offering me a coke and a smile Of course his face would be rosy cause it's a vacuum out there I mean Santa's heart would explode But he won't feel it cause his capillaries in his brain would pop like little Tom? firecrackers Due to the blood boiling away in his face like a pudding in a copper Oh the humanity Zero. Oh his jolly old belly would start bubbling like a roasted Tom? marshmallow Eyes Whoa. closing and popping up And the reindeer oh the reindeer Take it easy, <laughs> Santa's gonna be okay, buddy. You sure? Yeah, give him a little credit, okay? Oh, what a relief. All right, now it's my Kill turn. Me. I want to do my reading on uh, Christmas past. Long, long past? past? Well, uh, um, yeah, long America's past, oh. you know. Okay, I'm talking about the 70s Christmas office party. Back when a fully stocked bar was considered standard office furniture and office parties were like something out of a Playboy cartoon. Huh. Why the desks would be overflowing with every kind of hard liquor, why there were gallons of scotch, bourbon, vodka, gin, not to mention Galliano, Amaretto, Midori, Rife, German crockpot gin, you name it, and sexism was blatant. Boy, oh boy, you'd find salesmen groping secretaries in the mailroom. Keys would be exchanged. And although this was Christmas, Jesus was nowhere to be seen. Jeez, Joel, you thought I was bad. Yeah, yeah. are we really this cynical about Christmas? Well, yeah. well, maybe Gypsy has a Christmas word for everybody. Hey. <laughs> well... Merry Christmas, everybody. We got commercial sign up here. Angels we have heard are high. <laughs> Softly <laughs> sipping old champagne. <laughs> oh. We're going to do our stockings, and then it's time for bed, okay? Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right, here we Who's go. First? Stock All right, to me. this first one's for Gypsy. Oh. And look oh. at what we got in there. Oh. Check out oh. I don't know. I just knew. Okay, oh, now you know. here's okay. Sir, thank you, go, Gypsy, Jeff. and here's Tom's. Oh, right. I'll send you that out here. Wow! Hey. Yeah. Wow. Well, he got a lot of stuff in his stocking. Yeah, yeah he did. Isn't that great, Crow? Yeah, wow. really great. Okay, and here's thank you, Santa. Here's Crow's. Wow! Oh, wow! Well. Hi. <laughs> What'd you get, Crow? What'd you get? Um. Well, uh, my stocking's got a breathable cotton panel. Say. Oh well. And okay. then this, oh, you That's guys. That's real. Uh, oh, hey, oh, found it. Joel, open it. Where did you find this? Oh, Gypsy found it in the laundry chute. Oh, okay. Oh, it. Okay, I okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it, oh, we got a letter here, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Great surprise, Let's put huh? that up on Still Store Cambot. Good. Okay. Dear Crow, Tom Servo, and Gypsy. Yay! Greetings and pleasantries from the great N.W. As the Christmas season begins, familiar thoughts and feelings abound. 
the slight chill in the air, which you can almost see reflecting on years past. Family togetherness gains more import on one's list of priorities, and society begins to once again plug into retail commercialism and capitalism in search of the perfect Yuletide gifts. Your creation is the only TV program I watch or used to watch. My husband here and I are experiencing a physical separation now as I'm in the Coast Guard stationed in Seattle. MST3K brings us closer somehow in this... Is this too schlocky? I can, I can spout out sophomoric drivel like nobody's beeswax. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you, MST3K, for making us laugh at love again. Graciously yours, Jennifer Jacobs. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Jennifer. Merry yeah. Christmas, sirs. Frank, I, I can't wait. I want you to open your gift now. Great idea, Pete. As a matter of fact, uh, I picked you up a little something myself. Uh, for me? Oh, you, you shouldn't have. Oh, it Frank. was nothing, really. Oh, Frank, no, it's the thought that counts. I, I know that you think that I'm probably just a cold-hearted jerk without an ounce of self-respect for myself or anyone else, but on the other hand... Merry Christmas, Dr. Forrester. Merry Christmas, Frank. Oh, Frank, what a lovely watch band. This must have set you back a pretty penny. Well, actually, I uh, didn't have any money, so I took the liberty of hawking your Rolex and... <laughs> You to pay for that. I popped <laughs> my Rolex. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the thought that counts. Open your gift. Oh, boy, I bet it's a book. I bet it's a book. Yes, it is a book, Frank. It's, it's called Final Exit. I've been stealing your plasma at night, so I didn't have to spend any of my own money. <laughs> oh, Henry. Well, until next time, Bumpus. God bless us, everyone. Ow. I like the way you melted the bumpers for a fact. Oh, yeah. What's that there, then? Well, uh, that's a 440 with twin four barrels and cherry bombs, popped up with hooker headers, thrush pipes, glass packs, delivering 600 horsepower with 1,300 foot-pounds of torque at the axles. <laughs> Plays rubber in every gear. Yep. I include it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great, Gypsy. Mm -hmm. Commercial sign in 15, 15 seconds, seconds, and I need it this time. time. Jeep. Oh, well, don't say hi, Jeep. Jeep. Well, it's great that you guys have a hobby. Yeah, we were sort of tracing the development of the American muscle car and its symbiotic relationship to the feelings of isolation and disillusionment of post-war adolescence. You know, the almost mythic leather-clad loner and the hot rod with the secret and the soul in torment. You know, his spirit lives on, Joel, finding its deepest meaning in the songs of Morrissey and Bruce Springsteen, the Turtles. Yeah, I mean, if not for the limitations of space, we ourselves might be riding through the mansions of glory in our suicide machines or jammed together on the highway with broken heroes on a last chance power drive. Hey, well, I guess we would then. Wrap yeah. your hands across my velvet rims uh -oh. and strap your <laughs> hands across my engines. All right, who taught her that? Which one of you? Uh, uh, five, five, four, four, three, two, commercial sign now. Now look, Gypsy, you don't have velvet rims, all right? And I don't want anybody strapping anyone's hands across anyone's engines, okay, capiche? Okay. Uh, evil hell spawn are calling, so behave. Come in, Joel, my little space guy, my little uh, man who's trapped up there, my little person who we control in a funny kind of way. Why don't you hit the sack, Frank? I'll take over from here, okay? Thanks, Dad. Well, Joel, we're gonna swing right into this week's invention exchange. Frank? You know, when you've been hospitalized as frequently as I have, the same old hospital food gets to be a real drag, particularly the flavorless swill that they pump intravenously into your arms as you drift in and out of consciousness. That's why I've invented these new tasty boil-in-the-bag intravenous dinners. Who says a coma can't be delicious? That's right, no more glycopyrrolate, administered drably at 0.8 milligrams per liter of Ringer's lactate. This is hearty Irish stew with cubed lab. And this is a delightful uh, poulon vin rouge that we have here. Ooh. 
Is that tine I'm tasting? 60 parts per million, Frank. Uh, here's uh, cauliflower, and uh, would you like to see our dessert cart? <laughs> Should I? Well, we have uh, Palomira figs in a port sauce that's very tasty, or uh, almond cake with apricot coulis. It's really decadent. <laughs> okay, you talked me into it, but please, small portions. <laughs> what do you think, Joel? I don't. Whoa, good one. Good <laughs> one, oh, yeah. Anyway, thanks. Um, our invention exchange this week, sirs, are based on the old classic pop-up books we had when we were kids. But now that I've grown up, uh, my tastes have changed, and I like a more sophisticated fare. So we all got together and came up with some pop-up books for some adult titles, like uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Great Expectations. Ooh, oh, look at that. that. Isn't that yeah, sweet? Yeah. 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 cake with That's rats lovely. on it. Oh, uh, there's the pop-up version of Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. Oh, this okay. is one of my favorites. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. That's the end of the book. And for that touch of despair, there's always Albert Camus' classic, The Plague. Ah, yeah. ooh, that's yeah. how that goes. And, and I made a special one, a pop-up version of William Burroughs' Naked Lunch. Oh, no, 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 I, no, no. I don't think uh, we okay. should. That wouldn't be right. No. Sirs. <laughs> Joel, I was just fluffing Frank's pillow. Uh, well, your your movie today is is really bad. Uh, it's called Master Ninja uh, One, I think. Enjoy. Push the button, Frank. Oh, right. I'll get it. Hey, little circuit guy, what are you working on? You kind of left the theater in a hurry, you know. Yeah, what's the hoodoo, Skitter? Uh, hey, uh, dim the lights, guys. I got something to show you. Uh, Cambot, uh, play some of that appropriately tension-filled incidental music. What? It, what's this all about? We can't talk here. Crow, aren't you being just a bit overdramatic? Well, sure. Uh, but I've stumbled upon a plot that once exposed will blow the lid off the entertainment industry. Did either of you two stop to consider for a moment why Timothy Van Patten is in this stupid film? Uh, Patrick Swayze was busy? Good guess, but I thought of that. Right. No, we're dealing with something even more terrifying than the Swayze conundrum. I'm talking about a plot more insidious. Gentlemen, I present for your consideration, assist, the Van Patten Project. Swayze. Sitting atop the Van Patten corporate structure, Dick Van Patten, or should I say Don Dick Van Vito Patten Corleone. <gasps> His evil plan to place an annoyingly bad actor, preferably one of his own hellish drop, in every B-grade made-for-TV and low-budget film in Hollywood. Oh, uh, that would be all of them. <laughs> <clears throat> his plan is quite simple. He begins his career with the Lunt, scatting about in legitimate theater. Then he snatches a plum roll in the television sitcom Mama. The popular show runs until 56. Then, mysteriously, no dick. <sighs> Fade to the 70s, decade of shame. Dick explodes across the television screen with shows like the new Dick Van Dyke show and The Partners, When Things Were Rotten, and Eight Is Enough, a show that launched the criminal career of many a young hack talent. Uh-huh. Now, Timothy Van Patten comes forth to do his evil in the white shadow, the master. Then James Van Patten gets a small role in the short-lived Western, the Chisholms. And then what happens to him? I don't know. And then there's Vincent. Vincent, who is truly abysmal in Apple's way and three for the road, then became the bionic boy. At least he could smell the bacon frying and had a good sense to become a tenant player. The parallels with the Godfather are inescapable. It's sad when it happens to somebody you know, isn't it? Uh, Enter Joyce Van Patten. Yes, Joyce, sister of Dick, the real power behind the Van Patten Empire. Joyce, like Caligula's grandmother, plotting and planning in the background a string of failures in her wake. The Don Rickles Show, the Mary Tyler Moore Hour, the good guys, her with Habo, Herb Elman, and Bob Denver. Show I actually kind of liked, except uh, for the third season when Rufus got rid of the taxi and helped out more in the diner. You know, because um, then it really kind of started. Crow, Crow, would you please get to your point? Uh, I don't have one. That's great. Okay. Come on, you're coming with me. That's Whoa! Ah! Uh, we'll be right back after this. Yes, yes. Found myself in Japan after the war. Boy, talk about tranquil. Whoo! <laughs> Let me tell you. But anyway, I got to know some ninjas. Hey, they're great guys, and they're thick as flies over there. Well, one thing led to another, and... Yeah! I found my 
Oh! Yo, rinse for rested accidental ruser. Me and my scary theme music will follow you and your plaza cataros will do the end of the earth. Hi. And then I will. Ah, uh, <laughs> I kill you? Uh, uh, kill you yeah. Cheap, cheap yeah. Japanese accent. As you, can tell, yeah. as you can tell by my theme music that I'm a typical American. You want to see the way we leave a bar? <laughs> <laughs> The power of my music is the you weakness of my music. Oh, you, with your coming oriental accent. There's nothing like a good old-fashioned left hook. Oh, I keep up. Hey, how cool are you guys? Hey, hey, Chipsy, what are you supposed to be? Gigi. Don't you want to be Demi Moore? It's Don't even think about it, Frank. Send him the movie. Time. Oh, 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 we got oh, moving oh, on. Let's cut it out. Oh, All right, ready, guys? Yo. I'm Joel Robinson. And I'm Tom Servo. And I'm TD's wise cracking crow. And who can forget this lovable gag? It's my classic self-defense device for farmers. Numb clucks. Oh, <laughs> now that's a special memory, eh? Right. <laughs> now, in the spirit of today's movie, Master Ninja, we've come up with a whole gaggle of lovable chuck ideas. You see, we've taken the classic Japanese nunchaku, or the bastardized American nunchuck, and spun Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, after all, what is a nunchuck but two things on a chain? Yeah, right. Really. So, for instance, a clumsy ninja would use these Thumb chucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, also known as dumb chucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Oh, and uh, for Dominican ninjas who are dressed in black anyway, we offer nunchucks. <laughs> yeah. Benedict's I got all up. the dominoes. Uh, Sorry, ladies. Ooh. But you know, uh, for meat lovers, they're going to flip over these classic ground chucks. <sighs> yeah, woohoo. <laughs> all right, heat them up, eat them up, then summon the earl up with these up. Oh. <laughs> hey, it's drinking man? Fun. Junior at St. Cloud State? Hey, knock your friends on their sorry butts with a trendy Captain Morgan spiced rum chuck. I keep Ooh, up. Blow <laughs> the man <laughs> down. Say, Crow, and speaking of butts, there's no better segue into my own butt chucks. <laughs> hey, that's on, that's a that little bit rich. A little too oh, that's far. Lighten up, you guys. Yeah. It's just a couple of rubber gag butts. Jeez. Well, you know what? It's so easy. Why don't you write some Chuck ideas at home, as long as it's done tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, in <laughs> fact, uh, why don't you? Hey, mail your Chuck ideas to Chuck's Care of Mystery Science Theater 3000 Information Club, P.O. Box 5325, Hopkins, Minnesota, 55343. Three. You'll be glad you did. Yeah. Maybe we'll read them on the air. Yeah, we're even going to help you get started here. For instance, you might call these Lammy Soft Weapons of Vengeance Chuck, Chuck Warries! <laughs> we'll be back in two minutes and two. <laughs> You know, Joel, going into this experiment, several things were a given. One, it had a Van Patten in a prominent role. Two, it was made for TV. Three, it had a Van Patten in a prominent role. But I had no idea it would be this bad! Yeah, really. I mean, if you look at some of the other 13-episode action shows from that era, like yeah. Manimal, uh, yeah. Misfits of Science, Super Train... Oh, I like that one! It was pretty good. Uh, Tales of the Gold Monkey. They oh, were sir. all insipid, yet clearly superior to this piece of junk! Well, guys, <gasps> take it easy. The best way to beat those made-for-TV blues is to start your own funk fusion TV action band, okay? So, Crow, Sorry. I want you to start out on the drums. Come on. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Hey, hey, get me! I'm a LA studio musician. <laughs> Come on. Let me throw in a little wall. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Master Ninja theme song. Okay, now. Put that up on Still Star, will ya? Master Ninja theme song. Okay. We, the officers of the battleship Missouri, wish to congratulate you on the quality programming you are injecting in the Master Ninja theme song. Fiber optic veins of our nation. While in the Persian Gulf during Operation Desert Storm, we often felt as you must. Master Ninja theme song. Trapped in a steel box with little or no contact with the outside world, yet engaged in important and dangerous work. Master Ninja theme song. Oh, as comrades, we salute you. We spend many off our duty hours enjoying your show to help repay you for the pleasure given. 
given us Master Ninja theme song. We would like to do something for you. Some of us are engineering by profession and would like to offer our assistance in designing, manufacturing, service arms. Master Ninja theme song, your torso. Let us know if you want any special features such as death lasers or detachable radio control fingers. We eagerly await your plot. Master Ninja theme song. What do you think, sir? Oh, oh, oh. oh. Very nice, Joel. Uh, downright funky. <laughs> Isn't that right, Doctor? I had jello today. <laughs> I'll push the button. having the rock and rap party afterwards. Yeah, all right. Woo, 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 woo. Good yeah, idea. Yeah. All right, and then when you're done with him, Tom, it's time for my back rub, and then we sona. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you a back rub right as soon as I'm done with Crow here. Ah, uh, no, I'll give you both back rub when Tommy's done with me. Okay. I'm going to put on Bette Midler so we can dance. Yeah. Oh, great idea. Hey, and then we can all go down to the piano bar at Nye's and sing shows to the Rosarios are calling you guys. Well, Weenie Buns, I think we've really outdone ourselves this time. Not only have we found a movie that'll make your toes curl, but your shoes and socks as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought the composting toilet had backed up. As it turns out, it's this week's experiment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joel. <sighs> but first, let's have at that invention exchange, hmm? Ah... Uh... Um, I'll be right back. Uh, hi. Yeah. Well, should we show them ours? Oh, yeah, uh, good plan. Um, uh, hey, sirs, uh, we have our own invention this time. Uh, Cambot, uh, move it in here. Right here in my invention. hand, Cambot. See you see it? See? You see, it's a new long-distance telephone transducer that operates at 7 ohms in a nominal temperature range of 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's a mark, uh, marked improvement over the old configuration that often required over 25 seconds to connect transcontinental signals and uh, does so at half the cost. And it's completely solid state. Mm -hmm. You see, the chip sees a telephone signal as a series of ones and zeros. Hey which you guys, are the I found it. Here's the invention exchange. It's called the Big Head. Uh, Joel, we, uh, we did the Big Head already. Really? Yep, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, well, let's uh, press on, Dingleberry. Our ex Hey, who's that guy with the big head? Cork it, Larry. Our experiment this week is in honor of your horribly stinky film. Now, we all remember and love the antics of comedian Joe Besser on the old Abbott and Costello show. Well, we can relive those moments with my new stinky bomb. Yes, now you can turn any friend into that lovable buffoon who was a lisping man-child long before it became fashionable. I think it would go something like this. Oh, 
elegant, isn't it? No, yes. I'll harm you. <laughs> well, Joel, it's time for me to send you your own stink bomb. Yeah, oh, this well, film makes the unearthly look like Citizen oh, Kane. I'll give you such a pinch. Oh, it's called the Castle of Fu Manchu. <laughs> Take a tall oh. drink of gray water, Joel. It'll help you get in the mood. Send him the film. Oh, what a final one. What a final one. Ow. Oh. oh, I'll harm you. So are you oh, oh, it's on, on my it's on. <laughs> Oh, uh, are we on? <clears throat> The Miss Saigon Syndrome, an editorial by Crow T. Robot. Dear Miss, Sir or Madam, I can no longer sit idly by on my little robot haunches and watch Caucasian actors being continually cast in non-Caucasian roles. Christopher Lee's portrayal of Fu Manchu is a crystalline example of the phenomena I have tried titled Bad actors, bad decisions. <laughs> Sorry. This insidious tradition of casting has formed a psychological backdrop in which we play out the insignificant comings and goings of our daily lives. Let me, Crow T. Robot, pull back the curtain to reveal the lie on which your life is based. Signpost number one on your road to discovery. George Pals enchanting the seven faces of Dr. Lau. Would it shock you to know that all seven faces were played by the white musical theater actor Tony Randall? Wake up, people. That's seven examples right there. Now you're saying to yourself, please, Mr. Robot, carrier of the gleaming sword of truth, don't spoil the shining obelisk of Sunday afternoon enjoyment, Charlie Chan. Sorry, it's my job. Charlie Chan is a sweet named Warner Olin. Crow, stop now. You're woozy. No, the truth is a runaway train. Who's that playing an Asian in the tea house of the August moon? It's your precious method actor, Marlon Brando. Here's a bonus. The Indian chief on F Troop was a great D actor, Frank Dakoa. Uh, dare I go on? <laughs> What's the <up>, point? <laughs> Crow, buddy, control yourself. You're getting off track. The kids out there love your acerbic editorials and stick it to the man. You can't let them down. Oh, but it hurts too much. Back up, Crow. Get out there and do it for the kids. Come on, the whole kid wants us. Okay. Uh, anyway, where was I? So, in conclusion, Cameron McIntosh, bite me. Oh, wait. Oh, there are so many examples I should give. What about Joy Bishop in Sergeant's Three? Hey, wait a minute. I like Joey Bishop in that movie. He's in a category by himself. He's always good, no matter what role he plays. Regis Philbin had no right to walk off his show the way he did. How could he do that? Why, why, why? No, why? no, no, no. Joel, help us. Look at what you've done to my little friends. Are you guys happy now? Come on, it's okay, buddy. Don't you even Our data is showing deep, deep pain all around. Well, it looks like we could expect to get a Nobel Prize for evil. Frank. <laughs> Better send him a commercial. Our sergeant at arms, Joel. This is Black Shriner Leader Tom. Come in, boys, and cut the comedy. I'm in trouble here. Over. Ah, uh, yeah, Shriner Leader Tom. This is Red Shriner Joel at your back door with Neon Peon Crow and Toe. What's your 20? What's my 20? Sweet sons of Norway, man. My magic carpet's malfunctioned, and I'm stuck in front of the Robert Hall store on the main street. On top of that, I've run out of Jolly Rancher candy, and the kids are starting to look ugly. Uh, over. Ah, uh, eights to you, good buddy. This is the Neon Peon. I'm in your rocking chair. Hold tight, Shriner Leader Joel and I are about to do a flyover. Hurry up, man. I'm running out of heart candy. Condition red. Send in the clowns. So, oh, what's a you so? <laughs> oh, man, Joel. He, he's totally off script. There's nothing that says anything about solving like a broken man. Yeah, you're right. Let's see. It says here, Tom says, tie information, man. Those kids are all over me. Arg. It just says arg. It doesn't say anything about sobbing pitifully. I can't do it, guys. I just can't do it. I can't go through another sketch loosely. 
loosely based on some vague reference of the movie. There were only a few guys with fences in this movie, and suddenly were the Zahara Shriners riding flying carpets on Maxwell Street days. Oh, why? Oh, why? Get me out of here. I don't understand. How is the sketch any different than anything else we do during a movie? Well, uh, uh, Crow, it's not the sketch. It's this movie. Look at him. He's just a broken You're telling man. me there are absolutely no psychological footholds in this film. It's like trying to climb El Capitan. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. Why? Why? Yeah, better to you than me. Oh, Crow, come on. Look at what you've done to him. Do you see what you've done to this guy? Come on. You see, Frank, it feels good to be with the winners, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Hey, let's order out. Mongolian? I was thinking more along the lines of one of those delightful stuffed pesto pizzas from Eduardo's. Hmm, you fly, I'll buy. Solid, Jackson. <laughs> oh, bite me, it's fun. Thank you, Frankie. Now, Jolie, you and your scaredy bots sup great deep drafts of the second half of this stink burger called the Castle of Fu Manchu. Ain't that a man? Wow. <laughs> that one really stung. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a tough stung. one, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Boy, I'd hate to meet this movie in a dark alley some night, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure, whatever. Dark hey, alley um, Tom, you what? got a little... Uh, don't, you... no, don't. No, really, you don't, got a little... No, just stop it, okay? Just stop it! Uh, I don't see this is terrible. Why are we stuck with pain? Uh, no, the pain is terrible. <laughs> Joe, what's the deal with Fu Manchu anyways? It's not like he's really evil. He's just dull. He's like some twisted the bureaucrat and silk jam. Uh, 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 I'm really glad you brought that up, uh, Crow, because I happen to have some artists. Oh, right no, 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 a little levity, okay? Oh, Let's, this is the story of Fu Manchu, okay? Fu care. Manchu was born Carl Ivan Chu in Schenectady, have, oh, New York terrible. in 1916. His parents, David Wayne and Patricia Ann David Chu, Wayne, owned no. the Superior Skate and Blade Company, Skate. a thriving ice skate and cutlery business cutlery. in 1931. Yeah, <laughs> Young Carl's father became very ill and they sold the business and died? moved the family to died? Appleton, Wisconsin. Oh, a no, move no, that no. broke his heart. Oh. Broke my heart too. <laughs> Yeah, it gets better, though. It gets better. Okay. Now, okay. A short year later, ignoring the pleas of his heartbroken family, he moved by himself to New York City, the Big Apple, his dream to make it on Broadway, the Great White Way. He, no, he began his career as most young hopefuls do, running cigarettes for Agnes DeMille. Agnes DeMille! Right. This kept him busy for 12 hours a day and nearly broke his spirit. It was on one of his many trips to the store for a carton of Campbell's that he hit upon Campbell's? what was to become his famous stage name. Yeah. The story goes that a panhandler asked him for a nickel to a nickel. get some food, man. No, well, no. Carl liked that, and that's all it took. His name was Fu Manchu. Oh, no. oh, okay. Terrible. After a brief stint running sandwiches for Fatty Arbuckle, he got a job Fatty. sweeping the streets in a clown out. Not a clown out. Yeah. No, no, okay. Clown. Yeah, no, clowns are fun. Okay. The idea caught, and soon Fu Manchu was managing over a dozen clowns clown street sweepers. He was now in a position to return to his first love, dinner theater. Okay, here we go. His first role was as the lovable Benny in Let's Drink a Toast to Crazy Legs, a short-lived off-Broadway musical starring Danny Thomas and Charles Nelson. Oh, <laughs> Way to go, Doc. Yes. Well, we finally got you on the run, eh, booby? Uh, Frank, there's some pie in the kitchen. Uh, why don't you go slice us up a couple of nice big slabs of French silk, huh? And uh, don't skim. Yes, sir! As for you, Macaulay Culkin, get back into that theater. Uh, after this message, of course. Okay, well, I guess it's time to read a letter. Oh, uh, sure, go ahead. Like anyone cares. Okay. This letter is to Joel, Servo, Huzzah, and Crow. I keep. Uh, Cambot, you want to put... Oh, what's the use? <laughs> 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 Why don't 
Well, we've got him on the run now, Frank. <laughs> I knew you could do it, Dr. F. Here's to the evil of Fu Manchu. No, to the evil of Fu Man, you. Frank, you're the only man in my organization that'll talk to me that way. Put yourself down for a honey glazed ham and a box of steaks. Well, actually, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> Nonsense! This is a time to celebrate. Put yourself down for two honey-glazed hams. Well, Jolie, you and your cyberpunk should be ready to admit defeat right about now. You haven't won, Dr. Forrester. You've lost. And I feel sorry for you. You're nothing but a sad little man in a hole in the ground that can only feel power by hurting others. Well, we've won because we've survived. And we've survived because, well, we're Robinsons, roughly. And that's what Robinsons do is survive basically and well you know what if you think it's so easy you should give it a try once yeah you should try to watch a movie sometime you're beginning to sound like a hallmark card tell you what maybe it's the catawba going to my head but uh, i'll beat you at my own experiment heck we come up with funnier lines than you guys do <laughs> yeah how hard could it be i mean you know in school i was something of a class clown absolutely let's get the you know at arby's when i worked there i was so funny my nickname was zeppo let's just get this stuff set up frank all right i should warn you joel i used to be with the toastmasters i'm uh, Somewhat of a wry wit myself. Ready when you are, CF. Ah, right. Uh, roll them, Frank. Huh, look at that building. <laughs> it's big. There's a, oh. It's huge. Here <laughs> comes a car that you could say something about. It's so old. It's an old car. Yeah, look at, oh, and get a load of this lady. She's gonna get out of that car. Haikiba. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, well, I <laughs> said it first, because you could make comments about these things that are happening. Look at her place. shoes. Oh, get a load of uh, those things. I'm sure. I'm I'm walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm walking down the hallway. <laughs> oh, she's, oh. Um, uh, what a dickweed. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, uh, bite me. <laughs> oh, uh, there is some things yeah. that are really, that you could yeah. make some comments about. You certainly could. You could really, oh, and she's turning around. Uh, she, maybe we ought to turn it off. off. <laughs> turn it off. Um, <laughs> well, until next time, crazy Guggenheim. You know, we could have made funny comments, but the movie wasn't that good. Frank! Gotcha! gotcha. <laughs> 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 Now I'm going to have to put your head in a wood vise. Oh, already got it started. Hey, hi everybody. Welcome to the Satellite of Love. I'm Joel Robinson. This is my improv group. Anyone for more fruitcake? We're from Chicago. And we do improv, which is known as instant theater we make we make up our own play right before your living breathing eyes okay now That's i need awesome. a volunteer suggestion from the audience uh, uh you're you're alone aren't you what uh some kind of love connection screw up over there <laughs> anyway i'm just kidding um now could you just give a suggestion for a place where tom and crow could meet uh, yeah Cream of wheat. Cream of wheat, okay. Uh, I can see that, that. okay. Get that now, so many times. I need a suggestion for something that uh, Tom and Crow could do so together brilliant. that would be appropriate to do in front of the Pope or your mother, okay? So please keep... Yeah. Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel, okay. You're at yeah. Cream of Wheat and you're about to do Peter Gabriel. Okay, now one last thing. I need a uh, name of a celebrity, okay? Yeah. Anger. Anger, okay. You're uh, at oh, wait, Cream wait, wait, of Wheat oh, with Peter Gabriel, okay, okay. and uh, Anger walks in. Okay, go. <clears throat> uh, hi, Peter Gabriel. Hello. Want some Cream of Wheat? No, I don't want Cream of Wheat. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think that was the worst improv I've ever seen. You should have gone to your wear. You negated me. No, I didn't. Don't. Ah. <sighs>
What I was trying to do was become a potato on stage, and you didn't let me be that potato. Now, you see, I didn't get that. I thought you were a hedgehog. No, you didn't yes and each other, and exactly. you forgot to go back well, to your where oh, when you were doing that hedgehog yeah, thing. Exactly. I wasn't a hedgehog. I was clearly a potato. <laughs> I was asking to be fried in hot oil. What kind of a hedgehog would be fried in hot oil? Just cool if the uh, bad boys in the basement are calling. Now we're going to do a structure called Man in the Street. Certainly is warm today, Frank. It's cold. You know what they say about Chicago. Say, is that Millie Vanilli? Frank! I am not Spock. Frank, go get strapped into this week's invention exchange. Okay, Dudley. Well, Joel, I'm going to come right out and say it. I really like buffet dining, although it can be a dream come true. Sometimes it's quite tiring. That's why we've invented the new conveyor belt buffet. Swiss steak, Frank? Oui, oui, monsieur. How about some southern baked ham? I've always depended on the kindness of caterers. Juice? Mmm. -hmm. What about mashed potatoes? Mashed enchantment. And for those of you who like truly really fast food, some, you've never seen food some, this fast no, I'll just, before. I'll just have some, and then I'll take a little, and then I'll, with the, and, ah! Well, Joel, not only have we invented the world's fastest buffet, we've invented a Lucy sketch. Back to you, Desi Lou. Yes, your grouchiness is, sir. This week we've got a green experiment that's based on those New Age pioneer friends over in Biosphere 2. And it uses a power source that's available in just about any home in the USA, and that is the gerbil. Or a smallish hamster, either one. Right, exactly. And uh, what this is is a totally self-contained, self-perpetuating biosphere environment for the gerbil of the not-so-distant future. I like to call the gerbil sphere, too. Okay, you want to take it part way there, Tom? Sure thing, Joel. Now, the central element in our holistic environment is the common running wheel. As our furry pioneering friend turns the wheel, the log, here, is propelled through the wood lathe, resulting in, of course, the wood chips down below that you see, right. which encourages the gerbil or hamster to... Uh, Poop. Right, and <laughs> that fertilizes the... Uh, the field of alfalfa, right. which we see here, the sprouts growing at just the proper rate to keep the gerbil nourished, but not obese. Dr. Crow? Uh, yes. Uh, now, every three years, we will rotate in some soybeans. Uh, we didn't do that originally and accidentally destroyed all the topsoil. Oops. <laughs> and, uh, of course, another minor problem with our perfect system is that the CO2 released by the alfalfa can at times combine with certain undesignated elements causing an <laughs> uncontrolled thunderstorm in the upper reaches of the perfect but, system. But we have installed the air cleaner up here uh, that we believe will rectify the CO2 condition, uh, which we must remind you is only sporadic and which we do not believe interferes in any significant way with the wholeness or perfection of our system no, here. No. You know what? There's Covering so much uh, torque out. involved with this uh, this little running wheel. I, uh -oh. I I have a feeling we're going to need a gerbil that's at least 20 pounds. So to uh, 23. Yeah, our people are working on it. Uh, yeah. We have a I think it may be a motor. <laughs> Seems like kind of a gym. Well, we're going to do a structure called Yes And. Oh, Frank, I'm going to jab this ice pick into your eye. Yes, and that will cause pain, and I make a comment on contemporary mores. <laughs> good, good, be in the moment. Okay. Well, which Jolie, uh, your experiment this week is kind of like a spastic road picture. It stars Lee Van Cleef and Timothy Van Patten, and it's called Master Ninja 2. Yes, and it's really bad. <laughs> Hit the button, Frank. Well, you improv that whole thing, didn't you? That was really instant theater. I love it. Oh, no, he's dead. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Well, since today's movie features Timothy Van Patten's rock and custom van, so predominantly in the movie, we thought it'd be fun for the robots to get some pens and pencils and make their versions of their favorite 70s machines, okay? So, this one's Gypsy. You want to tell everybody about it? This is mine. It has a barrel of fudge to the bottom of the sea. Hey, Joe, looks like a lunchbox you used to have. Okay, you want to show the inside, too? And on the inside are 150 Richard Basehart ventriloquist dummies stacked like cordwood. 
Shades of Jamie Gum. Jeepers. <laughs> okay, well, this one looks like yours, Tommy. Yeah, yeah, that's my, my, my text. Well, the exterior of my van would be based on the work of fantasy illustrator Frank Frazetta, custom painted at Fantastic Studios in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and insured for over $1,200. Then the interior, show them the interior. It's really cool. It'd be painted just like the Sistine Chapel inside, only it'd be real dirty, you know. Plus, it'd have a water bed and a fireplace slash bar and an in-dash lotion dispenser. And if I dented it up, I'd spend six weeks in the shop class or at Harv's Speed Shop. That's what we used to call it when I was there. And we'd just sand it and put Bondo on it. And I wouldn't go to any of the classes. And at lunch, Clem and I would get in, a, get in the van and leave campus, go downtown and have a beer at the Shire. Yeah, it would be really cool. <laughs> okay, and this next one's... Uh... Crows? Uh, well, my van would have an ergonomically designed desk and chair, plus a shelf for all my reference material, and my computer, and a good, reliable reading lamp, and I'd pack an extra pair of glasses and some sensible shoes, and a cooler full of ice-cold Coke, Diet Coke, and ice-cold mineral water. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what about the uh, exterior there? Uh, I'd have a Ed, Big Daddy, Don Roth, do a mural of me with my eyes popping out, Ooh. pulling my tongue dragging, and big old Ooh. gnarl hand, and a giant stick shift, putting it in the six on the side of my machine. Machine would read like it was written in blood. The van died. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. We've got oh. commercials. Oh. Hey, hold it steady there, Gyps. Come on. Now, I want you to remember that no babister ever wob a war by dibbing for its comedy. He won it by making the other poor dumb babister dib for its comedy. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. It's all wrong. Timothy Van Patten is not the type for a gerbil. It's a hamster. Well, whatever. He shouldn't be going around with a crusaded or any small Slavic origin rodent. It doesn't fit the profile. Ah, you're loony. Well, for your information, Boris, there are plenty of perfect examples of detectives and other crime-fighting types whose pets were perfectly suited to them. Beretta's cockatoo, Sonny Crockett had a crocodile, Columbo's basset hound, BJ had the bear. Turner had hooch. Right, good. McLeod had his horse. They all make sense. Oh, come on. Who went and made you the expert? Well, uh, well actually, I did. I wrote a subroutine into his database allowing him to pair fictional detectives <laughs> with pets. Oh, it? gee, what a useful bit of programming. Hey. Well, it's something to do. I mean, uh, why don't you uh, do it for us with today's mumbling hero, well, you know? Well, I'd suggest a mandrill for Timothy. A mandrill? What yeah. about Magnum P.I.? Oh, let's see, something tropical. A sea turtle. How about Jim Rockford? Praying mantis. T.J. Hooker? Oh, he'd have a creature with the head of Adrian's mad and the body of a spider monkey. Uh, the Avengers. For Emma Peel, a newt for John Steed. Let's see, a spitting cobra or a duck. Coma? Cockatoo, same as Beretta. Next? Uh, Bad Masterson. Penguin. All of your 19th century Western detectives would have penguins, but there may be a couple puffins thrown in, so be sure to ask me about each one. Okay. What about, uh, Starsky and Hutch? Paul Michael Glazer of Vicuna, David Soul, a bat. Uh, Matlock. He raises mealworms for Money. The same. Sea cow. Miss Marple. Weasel. Mod Squad. Puppy, lizard, bird. Uh, Charles Darwin. Oh, Char no, he wasn't what? a detective. Well, no. so he tracked stuff down, didn't he? It's okay, Joel, it's okay. Crawl, Professor Darwin would have a howler monkey that would eventually evolve into his wisecracking partner, Blake. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Charles Darwin wasn't fictional. Oh. Just toss you two. We got commercials. So let's go. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. You know, today's experiment was packed with more Timothy Van Patten scenes than ever, and yet, I feel so empty. Yeah, usually when I watch two back-to-back -back episodes of a failed mid-80s action show repackaged and presented as a feature-length movie, I expect more. Well, you gotta admit, the experiments have been pretty rugged lately, but oh. uh, let's let bygones be bygones and has-beens be has-beens. <laughs> Have some fun with this neat uh, Lee Van Cleef foam core dress-up doll. Wow, you see, look cool. at Lee's already dressed for action in his Joe Namath netted slingshot briefs. Oh there. my God, Joel! For heaven's sake, put some clothes on him. You know, see? with that gut, wouldn't a Charles Durning underoos be far more appropriate? Well, no. <laughs> check it out. See what happens when you put the ninja costume on. How uh, 
What a slimming effect it has on the car. Wow. Ooh, uh, isn't that no. neat? Hey, could you put a pirate costume on him? What? Lee Van Cleef didn't wear a pirate outfit in this or any other film. I know, it's just a fantasy I've always had. Anyway, it's uh, time to read a letter. Uh, oh, let's put that hey. up on Still Store there, Cam. Uh, this one comes from Sue Schroeder of Rochester, New York. And Hi, Sue. Sue writes, I can certainly sympathize with being forced to watch bad movies because I am a film studies grad student. Most of the movies that I have to watch, though, are 10 hours long and have subtitles. Ooh, Actually, when I was still finger. taking classes, I didn't even get to see movies. All I did was read Freud and dumb French people like, uh, what's that word? Derrida. Derrida. Foucault. Pardon. I hated it. Well, I almost have my degree, so it will all be over soon. Huh. P.S. I wanted to draw a picture for you all. But I have to get back to writing my thesis. Also, will you three say what your favorite movies of all time are? That's a good mm. one. Oh, for think? me, it's easy. Big Foss and Little Halsey. Mm. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kafka's The Castle. I thought it was Zardoz. I'd have to say uh, Colossus, The Forbin Project. Huh. Uh, what do you think, sirs? Oh, The Forbin Project, one of my favorite films. The, the thing I like most Doctor, about Doctor, that... can I just say something? Uh, can I just get serious? I have something very important, which... I really feel has to be said. Well, Frank, you do look serious. Um, by all means, the floor is yours. Thank you, Doctor. You know, one thing in today's experiment caused great pain to yours truly, TV's Frank. It was the appearance of Monty Markham in the second episode. I mean, the later half of today's movie. Monty Markham was the star of my favorite television series when I was just a young man living in my mother's basement. I'm talking, of course, of... The Second Hundred Years, which, as you all remember, was the crazy, wild show about him being trapped in suspended animation for a hundred years, coming back, trying to fit into contemporary society. <laughs> I liked it. The Second Hundred Years was truly vintage Markham, and I want everyone out there right now to write to ABC and say, please, please, Mr. ABC executive, bring back the second hundred years starring Monty Markham. Please do it for the laughter, for the love, for the boys. Well, Frank, that was very touching. I'm sure the second hundred year issue was on everyone's mind. Shall I crush your skull or do you want to do it? Oh, I think you ought to. Very well. <clears throat> Well, in the immortal words of Monty Markham, here come to judge. Ah, uh, that was Pigneat Markham. Ah!